At House of Vida Bonica and Spa for today, as you can see, it's very intense. You can see now it's cooling off, and this is December period. So, your instant body wash, your white instant body wash, it's very, very effective. Just for 30 k instance and out of your body can spark as you can see What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. I know you've seen this video of this Nigerian woman getting this quote unquote instant whitening body wash at a spa, and I just decided to do a really quick reaction to this video and also give my opinion and also select a few comments on social media twitter and instagram and then you know let you guys go through it and also um just you know talk about this video in general so here is this woman service the first thing that struck me is that she's in a bath with some sort of chemical the second thing is that it was actually being administered by a fellow nigerian woman now before we get to the bath asking to come up and you know I explained to him hey we're playing a replay but if you want to chop it up with Mike we can do our own special stream come on come on come on I'll give you the time of day I will share my platform with you and let you get whatever you got to get off your chest so um we have a man here um I, I guess his username is the African rattle um is there like maybe a shorter name you want us to to call you by or I'm Kevin just use can use Kevin Kevin. Okay, Kevin. Um, and, and Kevin, um, 
give me a little introduction to yourself. Um, that stream that you were watching, that replay, was that the first broadcast you've ever seen of mine, or have you been watching Mike TV for a while? No, I've been seeing uh, I've been seeing notifications. You've been appearing on my timeline, and you clearly have a stick up your butt about Africans. So I needed to address you because uh, I I see you speaking to some West Africans because West Africans are the ones who tend to leave Africa a lot. And a lot of them are not very articulate. They can't defend themselves. So Hold on. Um, them easily. You're breaking up a little bit. What were you saying about West Africans? Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's just, it's not as clear as it should be. It's a bit muffled. Um, before you were saying I was bullying West Africans, you were saying something else about them. Um, what was it about West Africans? Uh, it's, it's mostly them that tend to leave the continent a lot. Oh, you're saying most of the Africans that flee come from the west side of the continent. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see, I see. And then you you were saying something about the West Africans call in to speak to Mike a lot, and you don't think that they are, are able to defend themselves or something, right? Yeah, they, they, okay. Their, their arguments are weak. They don't seem to be able to articulate themselves very well. So I kind of oh, thought okay. I would pick up to, to them. A bit. So you think that out of all the Africans that I spoke to, you'll be the one who can properly give me a, a good challenge? No, it's not about it's not about a challenge or anything. It's just setting something straight and being blunt about it. Interesting, interesting. Well, before um, we get into exactly what you want to set straight, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Kevin. Um, what what country are you currently in, and what country are you from originally? I'm in Kenya, born and raised. So you currently I'm live Kenya. in Kenya? Yes. Okay, interesting. And and you've lived in Kenya all your life? Yes, I've, I've moved around a lot because I'm a businessman, but in terms of just selling, but but I've never left Kenya as in permanently. I've always been okay. in Kenya. Okay. And, um, and again, I'm going to give you the floor to uh, bring up whatever you want to set the record straight on. But just to to give us an introduction to yourself in the shortest amount of time possible, we typically ask a couple questions of an African to kind of pick their brain. Uh, first question, what's your general sentiment towards Black Americans? Mm, I, never really, I never really paid attention to them much apart from the media stuff that I saw. But then with social media now, that's, that's big. So people get to know each other. This, the world is smaller. So you get to pick a lot of things and the general sentiment basically is that you guys think we don't like you or something, which is weird. But my sentiment is like, you guys are narcissistic because America is a narcissist country. Americans generally are narcissists. So you kind of get caught up in that web because you're Americans also. But you guys like to act like you're not, like you're the victims, but you're, you're just Americans, just like the white ones. Okay, hold on. I'm a, I'm a little bit confused. Um, on the one hand, you said you don't really ever think of Black Americans. Then you went on to say you think we're narcissistic and we think we're victims. Uh, I said I never used to think about you guys at all because all I saw was the media stuff, like the music and stuff like that. But with social media now that everything is coming up, like people are, it's, the world is coming smaller. So I get to see some conversations happen between Africans and black Americans. And the way I think about you is you're just Americans. You're just Americans in black skin. You're narcissist. You think about everything is supposed to be about yourselves. And, but you play the victim at the same time. So it's kind of weird. Okay, so you're saying that you only knew of us by way of media, and through the advent of social media, you've seen some interactions between us and Africans, and social media tells you that we're narcissistic victims. That's just how I see it. Okay, and, and then before social media, when you were just seeing regular media about Black Americans, what was your sentiment towards us? Was it positive or negative? Mm. It was also because, okay, uh, okay. The, the, I, di I didn't like the music because I thought it was garbage, to be honest. Uh, it was just trashy. But also there were, but there were some good shows that portrayed you in a good light. Uh, I used to watch 
there were some sitcoms that were nice. So, so it was like 50, 50, it wasn't like, there was no, I wasn't skewed in any side. When you say the, the music was trashy, um, there's many genres of music that foundational black Americans have created. Are you talking about a specific genre of our music? Or are you talking about our music as a whole? The biggest, the biggest one is hip hop, which is the one people know of. So my generation, so I'm talking about hip hop. So you think hip hop in general is trashy or that hip hop has some trashy elements? Well, the ones I saw, the ones I grew, grew up seeing is what uh, it was. It was just trash. It was just gangsters and whores and that stuff, stuff that people here don't want to see, pastors want to ban and parents don't want to see. It was just trashy. Okay. I see. I see. So you see our um, our media, and for the most part, you think it's trashy. You see us on social media. You think we're narcissistic uh, victims. Um, someone in the audience wants to know how old are you? Uh, Thirty one. Okay, 31, for sure, for sure. Um, well, you have the floor. Uh, let us know. Um, you know, what you want to quote unquote, set the record straight about. Um, I think it is interesting though, that, you know, you were on another one of my broadcasts and you admit that I'm in your algorithm, um, I'm in your notifications, which means that this type of content is something that you frequently watch. So for someone who claims to not really care about black Americans, you sure do watch a lot of black American content for one reason or another, right? Uh, I, I, think, I don't think you're listening. I don't think you're comprehending, I said, Yes, I do listen to, there's a channel I, I follow because I follow these conversations about like Jubilee. Jubilee is a channel where I see conversations like this. So your channel popped up where I saw some thumbnails. You're talking about Africans in a very derogatory way. Look at even this thumbnail you put here. I don't look like this guy. You're trying to pro portray me as an angry African. I'm pretty sure I'm more does, light skin than you. Does You're that man look angry? Yeah, he looks sad and like he's has he hasn't had food for 15 years. Well, the old damn, you, hey, you're being much harsher on the image th than I thought it was. I mean, I just looked up a generic photo of a Kenyan man and that's what popped up. So you're saying that you're a Kenyan man who's more light skinned than me. H how's that happen? Are you like half Dutch or half French? Uh, you see, uh, there is it cake uh, soap? African is it bleach or? Africa, see, this is your ignorance showing. Africa is like the black factory. Sir, Every... that's not my ignorant showing. It is a historical fact that Africans across the continent use bleach and cake soap to lighten up their pigmentation because they're so insecure of their black skin. So for you to be a Kenyan man born and raised claiming to have fairer skin than I, and I have European DNA in me, then God damn it, um, is this a natural lighter complexion or have you been rubbing on a hell of a lot of bleach, sir? I've never seen a light skin at Kenyan, so I'm honestly just curious. Well, you need to travel, bro. That's that's all I can say. I can't I can't get that so, to your ignorance. So you're telling me you're lighter than me naturally with no bleach. I'm not saying I'm lighter than you. I'm saying no, 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 clearly, no, no. You clearly you, you cannot comprehend. You clearly said that you are lighter than me. Everybody heard it. You said you're probably lighter than me. If that's a photo of me to the left, and you're saying you're lighter than me, and you're a Kenyan man born and raised, I'm just confused by that, sir. I'm just confused. So again, um, is your mother Kenyan? Yes, I'm a Kenyan. And, through and, and, through. and your father's Kenyan. Yes. And are you and are you darker than me or are you lighter than me? I'm probably the same shade as you in this picture. If this is oh, you, oh my the gosh, line. good lord. We got a lion ass Africans on the line. First, he's probably lighter than me. Uh now he is the same shade as me. Sir, if you've been bleaching, just say so. I wonder if you know that I know he's lying right now. <laughs> oh, you got the new Mojella? <laughs> that's what's up, that's what's up. I see. That's your BMW? Mm, that's nice. That's your girl? Golly. Okay, I see you. But um, oh I just want to know one thing. Mm. Oh you ready? God. Why the fuck you lying?
And of course, it's the African going to colorism. It's the African going to complexion. It's the African claiming that we're narcissistic victims and, and our culture is trash. But he omits, he retracts from the record that you Kenyans have a real strange issue with bleaching your skin. They say beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. But today, beauty is no longer a choice for the beholder to make. Women have now taken matters into their own hands with a perception that men are more inclined to lighter women. More and more, women are opting for fairer, glowy and lighter skin. Yeah. According to Dr. Benani Rua, a dermatologist at the Avane Dermatology Center, there is a difference between bleaching and skin lightening. I see the bleaching uh, is a term that a lot of ladies, they want to have a fairer skin, a clearer skin. But then they find themselves dealing with darker areas in the body. The lightening of the skin, it can be a medical process. We use a lot of technique, we use a laser, the ionization, we use creams, we use supplements, we use injections. And this is to promote uh, the skin to be lighter from within. To appease the society, family, friends, and most importantly, oneself, more women are going to every length to ensure their skin is lightened no matter the cost. Many opt for products sold in the black market without a thought to the side. So y'all go into the black market to get bleached, to lighten your skin up in the hopes of looking like me, but I digress. Effect. Thickness of the skin, uh, the hyperpigmentation, which are darker spots everywhere in the body, darker than the normal color of, of the skin. The skin goes up to sometimes the skin is burned because, because it's the product. And as I told, it's very difficult to say. This All right, guys, he's cammed up. Go ahead and let him know, chat. Is he lighter than me or is he darker than me? Since first he claimed he was lighter, then he claimed he's the same. Go ahead and let him know, chat. Let him know. I can't be non-biased since we're talking about my complexion after all. Yes, the hairline says it all. We're not going to roast him about his hairline. Stick, stick on tablet, guys. The color of his skin. Yes, he's brown. Definitely brown. Yes. Hey, hey. What it was is he was just insecure as fuck that I used this image for the Kenyan man. He said, I'm not that dark. Hold on. He said, I'm like half a shade lighter. He said, I'm about half a shade lighter. Yeah, y'all. Yeah, y'all. He's brown. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that ain't it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sir. Um, the chat says that I am lighter than you. Not that it's a competition, but God damn it, you made it one. You came up here and made it a competition. Who's lighter than the other? God damn it. Y'all got some internalized inferiority. But um, Kevin, can you let us know uh, what you wrote in the private chat? I said. I said, OK. You're trying to veer away from the topic. Sir, 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 sir. Just repeat verbatim what you said in the private chat. It's not hard. What did I say? I said a lot of things. I said I don't have all night. What's up with the thumbnail? God damn it. What's the, what's the last thing you wrote in the private? Come on now. Come on. You're 31 hey, years clown. old. Hey, clown. Stick to the topic. That's what I said. You, you said to me, you said to me, coincidentally, when I was playing the video about how Kenyans have an issue bleaching, you say in the private chat, hey, clown, stick to the topic, but you're the one who brought up skin complexion, were you not? That was a... Were you the one that brought up skin tone? Were you the yes, one that I brought did. up skin tone? Oh, topic. okay, 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 okay. So you brought up skin complexion, and when I started roasting y'all Africans for bleaching, you said, oh, hey, clown, stick to the topic. Yeah, nice way to try to deflect. But, sir, let's not get caught in the weeds. We know, although you may be a shade lighter than the man on the right of, of the thumbnail, you're still a, a, a darker African. I'm, I'm sorry, sir, I'm lighter than you. I'm not sure if you're going to go to bed crying at night, but that's neither here nor there. You said you came here to set the record straight. So what misconceptions do you think us Black Americans have about Africans? Uh, I think, I think you, you guys have a weird way of thinking that immigrants forget africans immigrants in general immigrants don't need your permission or don't need your say so they don't we don't need to answer questions from you about why we are about why we come to america like you're at the bottom of that society why do we need to talk to you about why we left it's like i, am, I invite you to my house hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on, hold on. 
you're a Kenyan that lives in Kenya. You have not fled Africa, probably because you're too broke to do so, but you're up here crying foul at the fact that when we do speak to Africans that flee the continent, we like to ask them why they, they left their homeland. So you're up here upset because we're curious as to why you fled Africa. And you're saying that they don't have to answer us. Uh, we're at the bottom of American society. If they don't have to answer us, then why are they in our spaces answering that question when we pose it? If they don't have to answer to us, why are they in our live streams just like you are right now? Um, let us know, Kevin. First of all, Kevin's not even your real name. I'll ask you what your second name is, but you probably won't tell us. But Kevin, let us know what time is it right now in Kenya? It's it's almost uh, midnight. It's almost midnight in Kenya, and you're up here on Mike TV show griping about Black Americans while simultaneously saying you don't care about us and you don't owe us any answers. Make it make sense. All right. So I understand you're insecure because we ask you why you guys fled. We don't have to touch on that. You're too broke to flee. So I'm not going to ask you that question. What other gripe do you have with us other than being insecure with the fact that we ask you why you leave Africa? Not just leave Africa, but y'all go to whoever just colonized you. That's where y'all go. Y'all go to France. Y'all go to Europe, somewhere in the UK. And the best and the brightest of you who got it going on flee over here to America to become Uber drivers. So when you talk about being at the bottom of society and yada, 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 y'all are over here in New York City living in fucking basements on bunk beds and furniture stores. What are you talking about, Playboy? What are you talking about? Y'all are flying to South America, walking through South America to get through the Mexico-US border. You're fleeing here in mass. <laughs> Yes, when shady ass looking Africans, when adult age, military age males come to our country with no women, no children, just themselves, we want to ask, what the fuck you doing here, Playboy? What the fuck you doing here? Who's the last one? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's right here. That's what I'm telling you. Hold on, bro. He just said, hold on. I'm sorry, sir. It's natural for anybody to ask why someone travels from so far and so wide to come to their country. It's, it's a very common question. So other than you being insecure that we ask that, what other issues do you have with us Black Americans? Okay, I don't think you're trying to have a conversation. I think you're trying to roast. That's why you're not letting me talk and you keep playing random stupid videos instead of letting me talk. So I you may think they're random stupid videos. I think that it's very important that I show the videographic evidence of you guys fleeing into our country in mass. Get out of your feelings. You interrupted my schedule today. You interrupted my last broadcast, bitching and whining in my chat. Give me the link. Give me the link. I want to talk to Mike so bad. Give me the link so you will speak when it is your turn. Now it is your turn, and you're going to tell us what other issues you have with Black Americans. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, this fleeing thing, you are the first people to flee. So I don't know what you talk about, but with this fleeing nonsense, I'm a Native American, so I don't know how I fled to my ancestral homeland. I don't know how that works. And if you're referring to the 4% of African slaves that went to North America during the transatlantic slave trade, they didn't flee. Mush mouth, grimy bush babies like yourself sold them to the white man. So who exactly fled, sir? Who fled? Yeah, let me finish. Uh, yeah, you fled because what's the first thing a Black American does when they make, they, when they make money? They, they, do you stay in your neighborhoods or do you run to Whitey to live in there? You're a Kenyan man theorizing over what successful black Americans do once they reach certain levels of success. 
You're a Kenyan man at midnight ruminating over what neighborhoods Black Americans move to, but you claim you don't care about us, and you claim y'all don't flee, and he just fled, y'all. He just ran off the stage because he knows this looks real, real strange. He opened up saying he don't give a damn about us, but he's up at midnight theorizing over where we move and, and where we stay. I bring up the clips about them skin bleaching. He got issues with that. We bring up the clips about them fleeing through the Mexico-US border. He got issues with that. So guess what? The Bush baby couldn't handle the smoke. So like all Bush babies do, he fled, y'all. He fled. Hasta luego, Bush baby. We'll see you next time. Booyaka, booyaka. Run, run, run. Booyaka, booyaka. Run to you niggas. Booyaka, booyaka. Boom, 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 boom. Booyaka, booyaka. Run to you niggas. Booyaka, booyaka. Run, run, run. Booyaka, booyaka. Run to you niggas. Booyaka, booyaka. Boom, 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 boom. Government. The government, it's 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 the if there's any other Africans out there that want to call in and let us know uh, what we get wrong about you Africans. I mean, guys, it was it was very interesting how he really didn't have anything to say about what we get wrong about Africans. He was really just up here to spout a bunch of xenophobic vitriol against black Americans. He doesn't care about us, but... You know our culture's trash, and and we're um, we're victims, and we're and we're narcissists. Um, and Africans don't flee when when they run away from Africa and go to Europe for quote unquote better opportunities. They don't flee. Really, the the fleers are our ancestors who came by way of the transatlantic. Oh, listen to this fuck shit, y'all. Listen to these mush mouth bush babies. He's gonna really tell us the people that got captured. By Africans like him, are the real people that fled? Well, well, then why are you up here calling to a fleer, sir? Why are you so upset with us? Why do you have so much contempt if we're just if we're just some fleers that are narcissistic and and failures? Then then why are you up here at twelve in the morning trying to play the who's more light skinned game? God damn it, y'all! This was a class act. This was a case study in how insecure and colonized these Africans are. He, Y'all just witnessed an African come up here and try to challenge me over who has the lighter skin. Those people are sick. Those people are sick. And Kelvin, you are banned from my chat. You cannot type another message in my chat. Click the link and call in. And you know what? I was interrupting you a little bit. Yes, I was, sir. It was very hard to hear you try to say that our ancestors who were enslaved were fleers. It was very hard to hear you say that. But you know what? If you click the link and call back in, I'll, I'll try to be as fair as possible. What I'll do is I'll put a timer up on the screen and I'll give you two minutes to speak uninterrupted, Kelvin. I'll give you two minutes to speak uninterrupted and then I'll get two minutes to speak uninterrupted and we'll do it that way since you feel that I've given you the short end of the stick. Since you feel that I've done you wrong somehow, we'll go ahead and play that game. So if you really are a man of your word, and if you really do want to have a discussion and you were just upset that Mike was interjecting, then you'll click the link and you'll call back in and you'll get your two minutes uninterrupted. That I can promise you. Good Lord, I'm so fair towards these Africans. You, you know they don't deserve it, but I'm just so fair, y'all. I'm just so fair like that. We got Kelvin backstage. You know what, Kelvin, um, before we give you your two minutes uninterrupted, can you tell us what is your second name? It just feels really weird calling a, a Kenyan man Kelvin. My second name? Yes. The, the same way I appear in the chat, that's my name. So, like, your parents actually named you Kelvin, K-E-L-V-I-N. Yes, the same way they named you, whatever they named you. 
I mean, my name's Michael. That's not that crazy being that I'm an American, but the fact that your name is Kelvin and you're a Kenyan man, are there a lot of Kenyans named Kelvin? Yeah, it's a Christian country. So yeah, there's a lot of people with Christian names, so-called Christian names. Oh, okay, okay. Well, give me just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and get that timer um, queued up so you can get your two minutes uninterrupted. Oh, Lord, I'm sure you can say a whole lot of things in two minutes. You guys are in for a treat. Um, here we go. Let's go ahead and share the screen. All right. You can go in three, two, one. Go for it. First of all, uh, what I was trying to say is I'm not here to judge. Uh, I was I was just trying to stick up to West Africans because Kenyans we don't we don't really leave Kenya that much because Kenya is a bit built up, it's not, unlike Nigeria and other West African countries. So we never leave that much. You never hear so much about Kenyan immigrants. But to your point, which you are trying to say, I was trying to say we don't need to this idea that you guys think. We're supposed to check with you when we come to America. We don't like it's if my, if my cousin come, my cousin came to America. He got a scholarship from a white university. It wasn't you. You didn't create the infrastructure. So why am I talking to you about it? I don't need to talk to an American, to a black American. You're not creating you are at the bottom of that society. And I say this respectfully. But so why do you feel like we need to check with you? And we need to talk to you. Why, why are you trying to gatekeep something that you don't own? That's my first point. That's how I'm defending the West Africans who are there and they are unable to defend themselves when they're being attacked. Number two, the fleeing thing. You, what, what did you guys do immediately after Jim Crow? You fled. You fled black businesses. You fled, uh, you fe you fled black areas. You, fled, you even fled from your black woman to go be with a white woman. So what is this fleeing business? And what's the first thing you do when you make money? Do you stay in the hood or do you go live with white people? So you're the last person to talk, to tell anybody that they fled because you would know something about fleeing because that's what all you do. You always flee. You flee from everything black and go to everything white. So never ever tell an African about fleeing because you would know something about that. You feel me, homeboy? So go ahead. No, I, I, I don't feel you, Bush baby. I don't feel you at all. Let's go ahead and start the timer and let's see how badly I can obliterate this Bush baby in two minutes or less. Okay, here we go. Your first point that you try to make is that who are we that you guys have to check in with us? It's not that you have to check in with us. It's that coincidentally, you guys are all up in our spaces, all up in our Twitter spaces, all up in our live streams, talking a bunch of fuck shit and bullshit African superiority when we all know you're fleeing from a shithole. So it's not like we're standing guard at the border saying, hey, African, check in with Black Daddy. When you come into our spaces and talk a whole bunch of fuck shit, we say, hold on. Why are you here? Why aren't you in Africa? So that's your first point you fucked up on. Second, you talk about us being at the bottom of society. Sir, Kenyans are at the bottom of society. What are you talking about? You guys have a 36% poverty rate. Your country is owned by Africans, ran by Africans, governed by Africans, and you still have such a high poverty rate, and you got the nerve to tell us that we're at the bottom? Sir, even if we were at the bottom of American society, that's like being in the 1% of the fucking Kenyan. Do you understand what you're saying, sir? The most successful Kenyan is poorer than the poorest black American. Do you understand that dynamic? You guys do not have it going on, not by a long shot. Sir, earlier, you probably didn't flee. It was probably your Wi-Fi because you're probably calling in from a fucking shanty town. This is the environment that you Kenyans live in and you got the nerve to call in at midnight bitching and complaining about a foundational black American. 
Sir, what shantytown village are you calling in from right now? Sir, do you how, know how many of your grandparents we sponsored as pen pals? Sir, do you know how much Red Cross rice fed you as a child? Sir, you are barking up the wrong fucking tree and you gonna learn the hard way. Your third point of contention, again, is that we fled, which means you're just simply not acknowledging the foundational Black Americans that are aboriginal to North America. Meanwhile, you're born and raised in Kenya. Kenya still looks like this shithole right here. And you have the nerve to call in to us, claiming that we're at the bottom of society. The poorest Black American living in a project is still better off than the average Kenyan. And that's my time. Now, before you respond, let's go ahead and check in with the chat, and then we'll queue up another two minutes and let you go. Let's see what our live audience is saying. Ladies and gentlemen, I was not even planning on going live today. If you appreciate the content, if you want this live stream to continue, go ahead and throw five on it. Hit the cash app. Hit the PayPal. I am your humble servant, after all. Uh, Desmond says this guy is a joke. Um, J9 says Chinese are in power in Africa with the Arabs, whites, and Indians. Yeah. Yeah. Nick says, we still live in America and all of my neighbors are black and well off. Yeah. Black says, this guy learned black history from a white supremacy school. Yep. Facts. Facts. Failed athlete says, the Bush baby's out of his mind. Uh-huh. J9 says, um, Kenyan in a village talking about Jim Crow. We don't care or no care. Exactly. Why is a man calling in from a third world country talking about Jim Crow and shit? I mean, they're fascinated with us, guys. They're absolutely fascinated. Biggest slum in Africa. Yes, it's located in Kenya. Yep, that's facts. Ralph from Denver says Kenyans can't move to white neighborhoods because those are surrounded by walls and have armed security to keep them out in their own country. Yeah, that's that's too much truth for the Kenyan man. That's too much truth. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Chinese are impregnating Kenyan women. Yeah, yeah. Y'all is getting taken over by the goddamn Chinese, and you got the nerve to call in griping about us. Oh yeah. The the women in the caviar. You know who we are. Cause we're all over the world. The the women in the caviar. All right, well, we'll go ahead and queue up your next two minute segment. Here we go. All right, Kelvin, you have the floor. The law of black Americans with all these chats, but okay, let's continue. But uh the point you're making about Kenya being a poor country. Okay, cool. We are a poor country, but I do well for myself. I'm part of the 1% in Kenya, so I'm fine. I don't live in Ashanti. I live very well, so I'm very happy with myself. And when you bring up, and when, and when we challenge you, you guys always bring up the poverty in Africa. But we're talking about America. We're talking about that. You're complaining about African immigrants in America. So compare yourselves with them in America. Stop talking about the poverty in Africa. Those, poverty, those Africans that are in Africa are in poverty, they're not your problem. Your problem is the black, Im, is the black immigrant, okay? You're, there's no way you're fighting with a black immigrant if you're doing better than him. People who are doing better than you don't care about you. They don't talk about you. The reason you have a whole channel discussing black immigrants is because you're probably intimidated by the black immigrants that are there kicking your butts that's, there's no way you talk about black immigrants if they don't mean if they're insignificant. If I'm rich, I'm a rich man myself. I'm a millionaire in Kenya shillings. I'm good. I don't talk about poor people down there because they're below me. The reason you talk about Africans is because African immigrants is probably because they're competing and outbeating you. If they were above them, they wouldn't be a topic. They would be a charity case to you. The reason you have a whole channel discussing black immigrants. It's because they are a threat, sir. You don't want to admit it with your light skin bitch ass, but you know they're a threat. Otherwise, you wouldn't talk about them. You would be talking about other things, like your 10 baby mamas. That's, that's all you would do. So just admit it and shut up and stop, stop talking like we don't matter. We matter. That's why you're intimidated by us. 
And that's your time, Bush baby. That's your time. Give me just a moment. Let me go ahead and reset that. Let me go ahead and reset that. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Bush baby is really on one. He admits that Kenyans are poor, but he says that he's in the 1%. He doesn't live in the shanty town. Matter of fact, he says that he's a millionaire in Kenya. Listen, Bush baby, your Kenya shilling is worth 0.0075 United States dollars. So don't get it twisted, ladies and gentlemen. When he says he's a millionaire, he makes about 7,500 a year USD. Sir, that is fucking sad. That is laughable that you think that that is a flex. And it's not that you migrants are coming over here and you're such a threat. Yes, you are a threat to our community. You're not a threat to our success. Don't get it twisted. Y'all come over here to be Uber delivery eats drivers and shit. Y'all don't got shit popping. The way that you Africans are a threat is over in Africa. You are raping, mutilating, and butchering women and children. And you're coming over here and doing the same thing, you savage ass African. Illegal African immigrants raped an unconscious 14 year old in America. This is what we're battling with. You criminal ass Africans coming over here and bringing that genocide and rape culture to America. That's what we're fighting against. And when you say that my whole channel is about black immigrants and black immigrants are kicking our butt, no, sir, you only care about black American and African relations, which is why my content I produce on that subject, the algorithm pushes towards you. I cover a wide range of topics on my channel. We cover scammers, grifters, charlatans, frauds. There's a bunch of black Americans we go at as well, but God damn it, when we talk about you Africans, because what we say is true, because we, we say has historical credence oh oh you don't want to talk about this this is what we're fighting against you illegal african migrants coming over here raping and pillaging you illegal african migrants that are not doing better than us you illegal african migrants that are holed up in basements in new york city driving unregistered illegal mopeds shoplifting and shit so that you can get some fake papers to go get you a job you guys aren't fucking uh competing with us on a success level but you are criminals that are fucking up our communities i digress now before we go ahead and give you another two minutes we got to get tuned in with the chat real quick black world forever um actually hold on we got to go a little bit higher we got to go a little bit higher um where does it start where does it start um let's see let's see here we go our poverty is much better than yours. Facts. He's the Prince of Wakanda. Yeah, y'all, he's a millionaire, right? And our homeless still live better than your kings. Facts. Um, J9 says, yes, the mixed Africans, Ethiopians, Arabs, Indians live in heavenly secured communities away from these Kenyans in their own land. Yeah, facts. Um, Nick says, of course, we are complaining about y'all illegally coming here. Exactly. And now New York City is about to start giving y'all $1,000 a month on debit cards. Yeah. Yeah. Deadpool says, we can bring up other stuff too, but it's still all shit, hence shithole countries. You're poor, you can't even flee. Come on, y'all, facts. He claims he's a millionaire, but you know he would have fled if he really had it like that. You know he would have fled. J9 says, Kenya run by Kenyans and still a shithole. Exactly. Nick says, most Americans have a problem with the migrant crisis. Yeah, he's acting like it's exclusive to black people. They are Uber drivers. This dude's a troll. These fools flee and never go back home. When they do, they separate themselves. That African prince scam. Facts. I'm intimidated by someone who is using my handouts. Nah, I don't think so. This guy is tether babbling. He's talking about us getting rich and moving up the hood, but his leaders <laughs> leave the whole continent once they get in office. God damn it. As soon as a motherfucker becomes president in Kenya, this motherfucker relocates to France. He starts shopping in Rodeo Drive. He gets a mansion in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Come on, let's talk about it, y'all. Yeah, he he's gonna he's gonna say me and my ten baby mamas. We ain't even gonna bring up the rate of single mothers in Kenya. I don't want to make him cry today, y'all. I I don't want to make him cry. And yes, he's not setting anything straight. He's literally playing into the stereotype of the angry African that's jealous of Black Americans. Come on, he he isn't even an African that fled. He's still in Africa, calling in at one in the morning to to talk some shit about Black Americans. Thirty lies in two minutes. Facts. 
He's a millionaire in Kenya shillings. One Kenya shillings is worth 0.007. Yes, guys, I was not being facetious when I said if he's a millionaire, that means he makes about 7,500 USD a year. That ain't shit. Randall says that's the white man way to argue. Can't produce facts, so they insult. Yeah, facts. I wasn't really throwing out no insults until he went there. He's eating bush meat as he's talking. Tell him to count to 100 in English. He's a Kenyan bush millionaire. Nobody's jealous of Africans go away. This can't be. Yeah, guys, this is sad. You Africans got to hold this L because this is your 1%. This is your best and your brightest. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yes, we can buy him with a dollar bill. Yes. Yes, yeah, speaking of dollars, speaking of contributions, um, Marco, thank you for the contribution, brother. I appreciate the support. Hugh Davis, thank you for the contribution. I appreciate the support. Vovo Rance, thank you for the contribution. I appreciate the support. New Era, <laughs> New Era through five on ASAP for light skin. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm just yellow. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. You know what? You know what? Um, I'm going to be an asshole, too. I'm going to be an asshole. Hey, sir, um, before you take your next two minutes, I have an offer for you. If you admit that you're just envious and jealous of black Americans and ashamed of your culture, then I will send you 10 United States dollars right now, which is 1,325 Kenya shillings. Just admit that you guys are ashamed of your culture and you're obsessed with us, and I'll give you a thousand dollars. Who wants to be a Kenyan millionaire? All right, all right, sir. Are are you ready for your next two minutes? Are you ready, dude? Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Oh, oh, I'm oh, sorry. We got some African uh, rapists on the screen. Let me go ahead and get these rapists out of here. That's the wrong tab. Hold on. How do I get the African rapists that are fleeing to our country off the screen? Uh, there we go. There we go. My bad. My bad. Um, here's the timer. Here's the timer. God damn it. Those African rapists, y'all. Um, three, two, one. Go ahead, Bush baby. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let me get some black fists in the chat. If you can hear me loud, crisp and clear. We got some people waiting patiently backstage. If anybody wants to click the link and call in, now is the time to do so. We are going to see... What this Bush baby has to say for his next two minute segment, and then we are going to end the replay and transition to live content because, God damn it, we got some things to discuss. We got some things to discuss. You Africans should never ever fix your funky mush mouth babbling asses to say anything about us black Americans because we don't do what y'all do, we don't have the sick identity crisis that you guys have. She's in a chemical bath, y'all. She's in a chemical bath at a Nigerian spa. The Nigerian spa will put you in a chemical bath, the same type that created the Joker in the Batman series, right? They'll put you in a chemical bath and start scraping the black off your skin. Oh, Lord, we got some things to discuss today. Lord, it's sickening. Lord, it's sickening. I can't even look at that video. I've got to cover half my face. I got to just look at the chat and not the media playing. I mean, that video was so sick for me to even watch, let alone to go through myself. So I can't even imagine what kind of identity crisis you Africans got. But let's listen to the next two minutes of this plebiscite babble, and then we'll go ahead and bring up some live callers. I think it, it's kind of weird that you think, okay, so if they're all Uber driving and they're all gut cleaners and all that, why do you talk about them so much? It's weird. Like, it's weird that you're doing well for yourselves and you're concerned about Africans that are coming there to, to be Uber drivers. So it's kind of weird. Like, I would ignore them. If, if I'm in your position, if since you guys are so up, since you're so rich and you're so progressive, 
I wouldn't be talking about some Uber drivers from Africa who just are just there illegally. They don't matter. They're poor, they're dirty, it doesn't matter. But you know, that's a lie. You know, Africans are there, they're kicking ass. Immigrants are there, they're kicking ass. You're the ones who are out here crying about Black Lives Matter and all that weak shit. So you're the ones, you just, so stop lying that you don't care, you care. Immigrants matter, that's why you're, that's why you're upset. Number two, when you talk about us being in third world countries, you're part of the reason we are, that these countries are third world because the white man pillages and steals and brings the proceeds to you. So you're part of the heist. So you're just like a white man yourself in black skin. So uh, you're, you're basically like the white man's concubine. You're sitting there gatekeeping his stealing and then you're trying to keep us out of it which is weird, and then you're acting like you are you know so white supremacy so much. You're basically the white man's concubine. That's what you are, and that's all you ever be. And that's my time. Well, you know what, sir? Um, you didn't really make much of a point, so I'm going to give you another two minutes. Go ahead. Get it off your chest. Mm, what, more did, what more do you want me to address? I just said, okay. I just said you're, you're trying to say that, okay, you're trying to say that we don't matter, but we obviously matter. And you're calling us third world countries, which, yeah, we are, according to the statistics. Yeah, we are. But you're part of the reason we are, because you're there with the white man. He steals, brings it to you. And now you're here holding your hands on your hips, trying to tell immigrants that they can't come here illegally. Yet you yourself, you're a second class citizen in that country. But I guess you're the white man's concubine. I guess you feel that's a good position for you so you can gatekeep the country for him, which is great if that's how you feel. But I think it's laughable for you guys to think you're short callers. Listen, you don't have a, you don't have a right to question any immigrant because you're not short callers. You're basically the slaves of the society. So trying to get us to explain to you why we are there and why we left our countries is stupid. Why do I need to talk to you? You're not the boss. You're basically the slave. I'm not talking to the slave to explain myself about why I left Kenya to come there. I'm talking to the white man who brought me there, who gave me the scholarship, the white man who builds the infrastructure in that place. It's not you. You're the clown. You're the entertainer. You're the rapper. You're the you're, you're, you're the clown of the society. I'm not talking to the, I'm not talking to the court jester. You're the court jester. I'm talking to the boss. I talk to the white people who run the society. They're the ones that give me contracts. There's never a black American who's never given me a contract anywhere. I talk to the white people. They're the ones that run things. It's not you. You're just a bitch who is there enjoying what he's built. So, and that's my time. And we don't really, we don't care about you guys. We think you're clown. All right, guys. You know, um, they don't care about us. They think we're clowns. Uh, White Zaddy is really who runs everything. And uh, let me see, time in Kenya. Um, yeah, you know, he doesn't care about us. We're just clowns. But it's past midnight, almost 1 a.m. in Kenya. You know, he has a mine or a Chinese factory to go work in early in the morning, but he's here bitching and complaining about us. Sir, you guys aren't coming over here and excelling at a goddamn thing. Like I said earlier, you guys are coming over here and becoming Uber drivers. And when you say, well, why are you guys worried about an Uber driver? It's because, goddamn it, it's only the African Uber drivers who come and pick us up and then start talking shit to us while we're on the Uber ride. Keep it up, please keep it up. I will. Good, keep Respect it up. Respect is earned and deserved. Yeah, and you haven't go given yet, none. Go, go now, go back. Go Respect on. is earned. And when are you going to give some, sir? Oh, when? I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm I've been in this car for five, for, for 15 minutes. When have you respected me as a passenger? When? I got in here, I asked you, can you turn your music sorry. down? Yeah, you turned it up even more. Like this. Nobody yeah, should have to sorry. ask you that. If you so entitled. Yes, I feel entitled because I'm a passenger. You're a passenger, but this is... And this is your car. job. It's not my job. It's your job. It's my car. Be I, I can take you out of the car anytime I want to. I, guess what? I don't work for anybody. Then you do what I'm you need to do. I don't work for anybody. Yes. I work for myself. Okay. 
Keep her. No, keep I her, can keep, keep her. her. It's my car. Okay. Please, she's no worries. Don't be quarreling with her, please. Just go. Go you like this. Black the, Americans, the next, you feel so entitled. Over what? The next right. Lazy. Oh, yes. Yeah. Go get some job. Mm -hmm. You like to live on welfare. My tax money is taking care of you equal if you don't know that. Mm -hmm. Keep it up. So, yeah, y'all, we got a uh, mush mouth, boo boo smelling African bush babies coming over here, picking us up in the Uber ride and trying to talk cash money shit. I mean, that's why we call out you Uber driving ass Africans. Good Lord, good Lord. But you know what? I've dropped the StreamYard link. Uh, we have another guest in the building. We got Uncle Ruckus in the house. Um, Uncle Ruckus, go ahead and unmute yourself and let me know what do you think about. All right, all right, all right. That's enough of the replay, guys. That's enough of the replay. We've got Uncle Ruckus live with us backstage, so we can just go ahead and hear what Uncle Ruckus has to say once we get to him. Um, we're going to bring people up in order that they appeared backstage. Let me see who was the first one. And really, I wanted to give preference to Africans. Uh, there's somebody backstage called Trilla, or at least there was somebody backstage called Trilla. I said, Trilla, in, in the private chat, I said, Trilla, are you an African? <laughs> and if he would have just said yes, I would have brought him up. I don't think Trilla's backstage anymore. I think he fled. He flee. <laughs> but Trilla responded in my private chat when I said, are you African? I, I'm not lying, guys. He said, and I quote, I'm a human being on your team. <laughs> Sir, you don't have to be ashamed to tell us you're African. I'm not going to treat you differently. If anything, I was going to bring you up first if you were an African, because I really want to hear what the Africans have to say. <laughs> Good Lord. If you ever ask a man if he's an African and he replies, I am a human being on your team, <laughs> that's an African. That's not Trilla, Trilla, if you're out there somewhere, click the link, call in. Um, God damn it. Um, who's, who's backstage right now that's African? Um, Caribbean cool says he's Caribbean and he's ready to smoke Mike. No, you're not Caribbean. You're African. 96% of the African slaves transported during the transatlantic slave trade went to South America and the Caribbean. You're African. But look at how the, the Caribbean folks want to delineate. Even they're ashamed to be African. But you know what? We can start with the Caribbean and maybe he can um, teach us what the difference is between an African and a Caribbean, because um, in our eyes, a Caribbean is just an African that's ashamed with an identity crisis. <laughs> we'll start with Caribbean cool. Um, Caribbean cool. Let us know where, where are you calling in from and what's on your mind. Hey, Mikey, you know me. You know my voice. I'm the same dude from Montreal, Canada. All right. There's a little bit of background noise. I'm going to place you on mute for just a moment so I can just clear the air, okay? 99.9% um, .9 of the time, I do not remember you guys. <laughs> and then the 1% of the time that I do remember you, for the people that aren't familiar with you, I'm still going to ask you where you're calling in from, what's on your mind. So, you know, I understand you think you're very memorable. You think I should know who you are by your voice. Sir, I speak to hundreds of people on a weekly basis. I, I don't remember you, sir. Um, you're calling in from Montreal, Canada, though. Um, are, are you born and raised in Canada? Yes, I am. And, okay. I, and I am Jamaican and, and Trinidadian background. Okay. And, and what's the, the difference between... An African and a Jamaican or a Trinidadian, don't you guys have lineage from Africa? Aren't you guys descendants of African slaves? No, but we are all melanated people. Just okay, like, sir, sir, just sir, like sir, 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 sir. Men lie. Women lie. Numbers don't. I don't Only lie. 4%. Only nope. four percent. Nope. Look, look, boy. If I mute you and you unmute yourself, then you'll just get dropped backstage. Don't unmute yourself when I mute you. It's for a reason. Come on, have some decorum. This is my show, after all. Jesus. Um, when these bush babies say they're Jamaican, they're not African. I'm so perplexed because when we say we're black Americans, we're not African Americans. The whole diaspora is is up in arms. When in actuality, only 4% of slaves transported during the transatlantic slave trade went to North America. The overwhelming percentage went to the Caribbean and went to South America. So, sir, if, if most of the slaves went 
to the Caribbean, how are you up here claiming that you have no African slave lineage? I, I just don't understand that. Okay, Mike, you see that guy in your chat room with that Jamaican flag? Get him on the mic. I want to hear what he has to say. He's going to tell you he's not an African. That Francis boy. Okay, so first of all, Francis is a woman. Francis is not a man. Um, Francis... Um, this is a first. You're being called out by a fellow Jamaican, uh, Francis. If you wanna, <laughs> if you wanna click the link and call in, Francis, let us know, Francis. Um, do you share his sentiment? Do you believe that Jamaicans are not African, are not descendants from African slaves? I mean, I'm just, I'm just so perplexed by what, by what man's saying up here. Um, while we wait to see if Francis is gonna call in, um. Try to help us understand on your own, Caribbean cool. Um, are you claiming that you're like a, a native um, Trinidadian? Uh, hold on, Mike. I, I kind of find it weird. Like, you know, you have this thing. I don't care what you find weird. I asked you a question. Now answer. Are you claiming that you're a native Caribbean? But you got a tether that's a mod in the chat room. Like, this is kind of weird. But yes, I am a native Caribbean. How are you a native Caribbean if you're born and raised in Canada? Your parents may be from Trinidad or, or Jamaica or something. But if you ask your own parents what they descend from, they'll most likely say African slaves, right? No, no. They never told me that. They told me that they are native to the Caribbean islands. There were people already on the islands when Christopher Columbus and the white man came over. They were all right. I wonder if you know that I know who's lying right now. <laughs> oh, you got the new Margellas? <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. I see you. That's your BMW? Mmm, that's nice. Mm. That's your girl? Golly. Okay, I see you. But um, I just want to know one thing. Mm. You ready? Why the fuck you lying? Listen. Get Francis on the mic, and Francis will tell you. She will tell you that Caribbean people are native to the island. She, get her up. Get my fellow Caribbean up. It's not a matter of me getting her up. I mean, if she wants to click the link and call in, then she can do that. But I wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't want to waste her Saturday talking to a J Jafakin with an identity crisis. I mean, uh, I, I don't blame her. I, I don't blame her at all. No, and yeah, Nick, I, I, I don't know why he wants to argue with me. I don't get that. Her parents, the Caribbeans, are native to the island. She okay. Don't want to admit so, it. so what's the name of your, we your are indigenous the tribe? Indigenous. What is the name of your indigenous tribe? Why do you need to know that? Because if you're native, if you're indigenous to the Caribbean, then you should know your tribe, right? I do know my tribe, but I don't. So got what's to the name of you. your tribe? I don't got to tell you because you're not a Caribbean like me. I'm oh, guys, guys, he knows the name of his tribe, but he's not going to tell me because I'm not a Caribbean like him. Bush, baby, you're a Canadian, eh? You're not. A, you're more Canadian than you are Caribbean. Stop the cap, sir. I you just enjoy you, maple just syrup, you. not oxtails. You I enjoy that good, you. that good, raw, unfiltered, natural maple syrup. My, you do not enjoy I no oxtails. Stop the cap. My background is Caribbean. What, what is that you don't understand? And what is your culture? My culture is Caribbean. Yeah, man's is up here lying. What? What? I just answered your question. My culture is Caribbean. I'm half Jamaican, half Trinidadian. So and, the you, and you history. grew up and you grew up in a Jamaican culture in Montreal, Canada. No, I grew up with my father who is Jamaican and my mother who is Trinidadian. They both met in Montreal. So I'll tell you why my Trinidadian side moved to Montreal. Because the black side was at war with the Indians there. And the blacks have lost a war to the Indians. So now the Indians have taken over the, con the country and became the president and started importing more Indians to overshadow the black population there. So this is why my mother had to leave, the not flee, leave. She it's fled. No, she, no, she no, fled no. a war. Nikki, stop. stop it. So she fled a war. The no. Indians was fucking y'all up. So y'all fled to Montreal, Canada, did you not? Well, I, I shouldn't say the word. Well, well, well. Well, no, she, well. Had to, she had to leave because number she had to flee. 
Did no, she listen, leave Mike, 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 listen, she had to leave because of warfare, number one. And number two, there's better opportunities in Canada. You know, She fled warfare. J just say it. She fled warfare and conflict. Just say it. The truth shall say yeah, it. I'll say it. I'll say it. She left warfare. She fled. No, she, didn't she just left. leave. Listen, listen, listen. Here's the difference between leaving and fleeing. When you leave, it's typically not under duress. Let me say it again for all the bush babies in the back. Um, when you leave someplace, if I leave my house and I go to the corner store, if I leave my house and go to the gym, it's not under duress. It's not under threats of violence. But God damn it, if I'm at home and I'm being threatened and I say, oh, shit, it's safer for me to run down the street to the store, I am fleeing. Good Lord, these motherfuckers have a complex over the word flee. Just admit it. Your mama fled oppression in Jamaica because the Mendians was fucking you up. And you up here with an identity crisis calling in from Montreal, Canada, claiming you're a native Jamaican, but you won't tell us the tribe, right? No, hold on, Mike. You got it wrong. My mother is from Trinidad and she left Trinidad, not Jamaica. Now, I'll tell you the Jamaican side of me. So my father left Jamaica because of all the gangs sir honestly we don't care and we don't believe anything you're saying so i'm really not going to give you any more time unless you're going to tell us what's the name of your indigenous tribe you're from why do you want to know that though you know what i mean you're not you're not a caribbean like me you know what i mean if you want to if somebody asked me what native american tribe i'm a part of i would tell them i wouldn't say oh well why do you want to know that you're not a native american like me why should i tell you you're not a native american sir the babble is to hide your insecurities over the fact that you're not a native jamaican you're an african with an identity crisis you're an african whose people had to flee jamaica because the indians ran you out Okay, Mike, listen, I came on your show a month ago and I gave you homework. You want to know what that homework was? Sir, I don't even remember you for one. Second of all, if you gave me homework, I don't like to hold things in my hand, so I would not have accepted it. I would have pulled a Tony Stark and you would have had to have handed it to my personal assistant and they would have put it in the shredder. What the fuck are you talking about? You gave me homework, Bush baby. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Mr. One says if he doesn't say Taino, he's lying. He knows he can't even reach into his ass to pull out an indigenous tribal name because he doesn't even know any. He doesn't even know what the name of a Trinidadian or Jamaican native tribe is. He's just up here lying. So listen, this is what we're going to do because I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people backstage. It's not just about you, Bush baby. We're not going to give you all damn day to project your identity crisis on us. We're gonna give you, hmm, I'll be fair, I'll be fair. We'll give them five minutes. We'll give them a good five minutes, that's all, that's all. I'm gonna go ahead and put a timer up. You're gonna have five minutes to get everything off your chest. You, you got a whole lot to get off your chest. You're calling in to the native blacks with, with a whole lot of things sizzling on your spirit and you want to get it off, I know. So I'm going to give you a solid five minutes uninterrupted to say whatever you need to say. And then we're going to continue with our regular scheduled programming because I'm not going to go around in circles with a man that has a apparent identity crisis. Here you go. Your five minutes starts now. Listen, Mike, I came on your show a month ago and I gave you homework. I told you to grow your hair so we can see what race you are, okay? Grow your hair so we can see what race you are. I have a feeling you are Arab and Indian mix. You have no black in you. You are an Arab and an Indian mix guy. That's what you are. And you're just doing all this just to grift the FBA community. You're like another Umar Johnson. God damn it, I'm going to interrupt, but I'm going to be fair. I'm going to stop the time. I'm going to stop the time. The whole premise of today's broadcast is Africans are so ashamed they're bleaching their skin to become white. Africans have an identity crisis. Am I not exposing that right before your eyes? We got a Caribbean calling in, claiming he's not African. He's Caribbean, as he calls in from Montreal, Canada, right? He claims he's a native 
Caribbean, but can't list the tribe. And when I give him five minutes to speak uninterrupted, he's just triggered and ranting about my ethnicity, about my lineage. Why are you so obsessed with this? Sir, sir I know my identity down to AB percentile. You're the one with the identity crisis. I just, this is just baffling. Uh, God damn it. Mike gives a tether five minutes to speak freely, and all the tether is going to do is gripe and bitch and <laughs> gra uh, graft up conspiracies about Mike's genetic makeup. Um, all right, sir, if that's how you want to spend your five minutes just bitching and complaining about whether Mike is a Native American or Black or am I white or am I Arab or am I Indian? Meanwhile, your people got fucked over in Jamaica by the Indians to the point where you had to flee to Canada. All right, sir. I would think you have bigger things to worry about rather than what's the Jamaica, uh, genetic makeup of Mike TV. But God damn it, sir. God damn it. Um, I'll go ahead and, and reset your time. This is just this is just sad. This is just sad. Mr. One says, uh, you got the patient of a God for your head. I'm just like, hey, I'm guys. Uh, I said I wasn't going to interrupt him, but I just it's just so much sadness. He doesn't understand that he's literally projecting the identity crisis that we're speaking about right now. But all right. Keep proving us right and keep proving that you have an identity crisis. Lord, Lord, this is just so sad. This is just so, so, so sad. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Squash that tether nincompoop for all the time. I just, mm, it just saddens me, guys. You know, I'm, I'm somebody that just works, work, work. I, I don't let things get to me. I don't let things impact me like that. But when I give him five minutes and he's just ranting about my racial identity, like, it's just so sad that these people are obsessed. So sick in the brain. I mean... Lord, these people are so obsessed, so sick in the brain. Oh, Lord, these people are so obsessed, sick in the brain. All right, sir, you've got five minutes, and I'm not even going to put any rules and parameters on you. I'm not going to say, hey, for the next five minutes, say something other than what you think my genetic makeup is. We know you're just infatuated with Mike. So so just go ahead and rant about Mike TV for five minutes straight. We, we would love to hear it, sir. You have the stage. Mike, Mike, listen. Whatever I say, it's hitting you hard, and it's the truth. You know you are Indian mixed with Arab. That's what you are. You don't have no blackness in you, okay? You are dreaming. Every time you wake up in the mirror uh, in the morning, you stare at yourself in the mirror and you wonder to yourself, oh, what race am I? Oh, uh, am I Indian? Oh, am I Arab? No, 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 no. You know what? I'm white. No, 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 no. You know what? I got black in me. No, nah, no. Nah. See, you're confused, man. You are totally confused, Mike. This is what happens when you are a mixed race. You don't know who the hell you are. So you got to pretend to be like someone else. That's what happens when you're a mixed race. Man, Mikey, 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 I, I, I just tell you, man, just, just do one simple thing for the chat. Grow your hair so that we can see what race you are. It's that simple. It's that simple. Or... Did your hairline like recede all the way down to your ass crack or something, man, to the point where you can't even grow your hair? I think that's what it is, man. It's, it's, it's either one of those two, man. Like your hairline has just receded so far back or you're just embarrassed to grow your hair because your hair is not Afro. It ain't Afro. It's straight. It's straight like an Arab. Your hair is straight like an Arab Indian. That's what it is. Prove to the people in this chat room. Forget about me. Prove to the people in this chat room. The people with the hammer, with the wrench, all the FBAs, all the tethers here. Just do it, Mikey. Do it. Do it, Mikey. Good Lord. I just, guys, I don't think I can make it through a whole nother three minutes of this creepy incel ranting about my hair and my complexion. Um, but you know what? Um, since he's going to challenge me, I will accept your challenge, sir. I will share my screen and I will show a footage. Um, excuse me, not footage. Just, I'll show a picture of Mike TV with his hair grown out. I will do that for you. I will accept your challenge 
and I will show a picture of me with my hair all grown out, the most I've ever grown my hair out to, right? I will do that if you tell us what native Caribbean tribe you're from. And wherever you go 24-7, that hat. Tell us what native Jamaican tribe you're a part of, and I'll show a picture right now of Mike's long, straight Arab hair. What tribe are you from, sir? You know what? My father's a Rastafarian. That's not a tribe, fuck nigga. That's right. some that, that's some bullshit pseudo religion that shabby ass Jamaicans that want to smoke weed and be poor all day created. Rastafarianism is not an indigenous Jamaican tribe. What the fuck are you talking about? Lord, I dangled a carrot in front of his face. I said, damn, you up here for a month now, challenging me to take my hat off and show what my hair looks like all grown out. And I say, listen, I will oblige if you tell us the native tribe. And this motherfucker said Rastafarian. What? 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 Sir, Rastafari was founded in the 1930s. How the fuck is that an ancient indigenous tribe? Oh my God, yes, smoke weed and be poor all day and have dirty ass shit locks that we never wash. That's the Rasta way. Sir, Rastafari is a religious and a political movement that's not an indigenous tribe and it started in the 1930s. Oh my God. Oh my God. We, we ain't going. And it's so sad because I got a picture queued up right now. I got a picture queued up. The last time I rocked uh, a fro was in high school, and I got a picture of Mike with a fro. But God damn it, I'm only gonna I'm only gonna show it if you tell us the the actual tribe. And Mans doesn't have a tribe. He just said Rasta. So um, we've proven you're a liar. We've proven you have an identity crisis, and we don't really need to hear from you anymore today. Good Lord, good Lord, good Lord. We've got two, four, five, six people backstage. Is anybody backstage an African? We're trying to give the Africans um, preferential treatment here. We're, we're trying to let the Africans come up first and foremost and spout whatever bullshit they're going to say. Rasta, y'all, I can't. I can't. I am a native Jamaican. I am a native Jamaican house, sir, because my dad's a Rastafarian. Sir, Rastafarianism was started in the 19th. What the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are we talking about? Oh my God. Mm -mm -mm. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let me see. Is there anybody backstage that's an okay? Damon says he's is an African. Uh, Damon, where are you calling in from and what's on your mind? All right, do you have anything to say, or are you just going to play the Black Panther clips? All right, he just wanted to play a <laughs> Guys, it's just so sad. <laughs> These weekend streams are getting sad for me to produce because it just reveals the mental illness that is apparent within these Africans, Lord. We really had a Jamaican claiming he has no African lineage. He's an indigenous Jamaican because his daddy was a Rasta, because his daddy didn't wash his hair and smoked a lot of weed at one point in time. All right, guys, all right. Um, you know what? I was about to bring up Moonlight, but Moonlight just dipped. We'll go ahead and bring up, uh, is it Sh Shapuak? How exactly Hi. do you pronounce that? Hi, Shuap. Shuap? Yes. Mm. I, I'm American. I'm American. I spoke to you before. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the name. Uh, what uh, what culture is that name synonymous with? It's no culture. I'm a black American. Okay, so, so that's just like a name that you made up one day? Um, yeah, pretty much. Oh, okay. It's my YouTube right. name. It's, my, it's a YouTube name, actually. Oh, okay. So uh -huh. you're a YouTuber, and that's the name of your YouTube channel. I got it. Well, let us know uh, where you're calling in from and what's on your mind. Yeah, I'm from the States. I'm actually from California. So um, and is that I also just where wanted you're calling to... in from, or? Yeah, yeah. I'm calling from okay. California. West Coast, gotcha. All right. Yeah, from West Coast. What's on your mind? Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to make a comment because I'm hearing like, um, a lot of what I was, um, uh, I just want to say behind most of these Africans um, that come in the country, they come in through white organizations most likely, and then the white people, the white 
whoever tells them to go into the black community. Basically, they disperse them into our community so that they don't have to be really reliable for them. So what you see is an outbreak of what's happening with these Africans is that now they're being exposed for their hatred and their uh, ignorance and um, identity crisis that, okay, you know, we look black, let's go, let's go to the black community, but we won't really, we won't really, you know, do anything. We'll just, you know, suck the resources out of them. And then eventually when we get on our, when we get on our feet, we'll, and, um, uh, you know, delineate, you know, so they just feel the shame that they're here in black and they're under, uh, you know, American uh, descendants of slaves because they could not make it back home. So they come here and they, you know, just kind of, populate our communities, but they can never bring anything of value to the communities. And that's the unfortunate part. Otherwise, why wouldn't they go to other African countries? They can, I mean, there's 53 countries they can go wherever they want to in those, in that, in those country, in those African countries, but they won't because they all hate each other. There's no way you would come all the way across seas to, uh, you know, descendants of slaves when you got all the other opportunities, you got better food, in Africa, you got all these better relationships that you could have, but um, they unfortunately they come here and they uh really, t you know, really mess up our communities and they can't give anything back to the community. So um, that is a, that's also another problem. Um, and then the well, other thing is, um, um, if I may, although I agree with what you're saying and many people in the chat agree, um, there's a tether in the private chat that says this is a very stupid argument. Uh, he's basically calling you ignorant. Um, would you like me to bring up that tether so that he can speak his, his grievance and you guys could have a little discussion? Or would you rather not have a conversation? With well, him? I mean, I don't mind having one, but I mean, we don't we there's nothing we have in common with these people. We could maybe through marriage, we have something in common, but there's not much they can really do for us because we're first world citizens, first world class of people. So what what can we do with such people that come from a different culture? We don't shower the same. We don't do anything the same. These people are like, it's like a Russian. I mean, they have the same commonality in us that a Russian have or that a, um, a, 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 a Ukrainian has. We have really nothing to do with them. Just our skin color. Why don't they go to India where they are more, actually they do more business and they have a lot of more mixture with those people. You know, when it comes to relationships and stuff, we have because nothing to do Indians with them. Treat them like dog shit because we just had a Caribbean say that the Indians ran them out of Jamaica <laughs> because Indians don't fuck with them. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> I mean, exactly. So we, we don't have anything to do with them. We don't even when they come here, even the way they eat, the way they shower, the way they dress. We have nothing to do with these people. We get no cultural influence from them and they get no cultural influence from us. Uh, besides the fact when they want to claim something from us, but they don't even they don't even give us that respect. So we don't have, we, our hair is not the same. We don't look the same. I mean, just well, you know so many like, things. You know what? We've got uh, somebody called Uncle Ruckus on the line as well. Uncle Ruckus, why don't you unmute yourself and let us know what you were saying in the private chat about her argument or? First of, first of all, her arguments are very stupid and they make no sense. So she said that black, she said that Africans are extorting resources from the black communities. Apart from HBCUs, which are set up for black people, what exactly are they taking from black Americans? What exactly? What resources are you talking about? So, I mean, affirmative action was one of them. Uh, our neighborhoods, going into our neighborhoods, uh, delineating from us, uh, anything, there's nothing what you guys bring to us that is of prosperity. Resources. Education resources, education resources. Are what, what using resources? our Alone, using the fact that our, our status of you guys saying you're you're black that gives you a lot of benefits in our, in our social, it gives you social resources to connect from right, one black person um, to another he he doesn't get it um he's uh i mean you I can't wait, just go on. into your into your He's an African born and raised in the UK. His folks fled, I think it was Ghana or something, to go to the UK. So so he don't really know what he's talking about. So let me try to bridge the it gap. It gives him social status. Yeah, here, here, here. I'll, and, I'll, protection, I'll and, and protection. And protection. And, and first I beats hit it on the head. It's called tax dollars. Every black person that's an American citizen pays taxes. 
And when you bush babies come over here and you're getting free handouts and free hotel stays, and now New York is going to give you $1,000 a month on a debit card, you are extracting our resources that are funded by our tax dollars. But maybe, uh, maybe in the UK they have taxation without representation. I'm not quite sure, but I don't think he understands how much our taxes paved the way for them bush babies to come over. But what do you have to say, Uncle Ruckus? Personally, what I have to say is, obviously, we know for the fact that white people pay more taxes than black people. So white people... Why do you think, and again, we don't know this for a fact, why do you think that white people pay more taxes than black people? What the fuck are you talking... Sir, because for, do, first, no, 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 no. Do you know... Oh, oh, hold on, sis, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Uncle Ruckus, do you know how your tax burden is disseminated do you know how you are given a tax rate or a tax break do you know what influences the amount of taxes a black or white person pays yes tax brackets which are based on income so so how are you going to say that white people pay more taxes than black people. I'm not understanding because they, the they're a bigger population per capita, and on top of that, black, white people earn more money than black people. It's a fact. Black. If you look at the, if you look at the average white family and average black family and how much they take in, you will see difference there. So realistically, okay, okay. So you're saying that since black people make up less of the population and white people make up more of the population, white people pay more in taxes that's technically true from a demographic standpoint but that does not negate the fact that our black tax dollars are being used to fund you illegal migrants so what are you talking about your argument does not negate the fact that our black tax dollars are still being used on some cowardice, mush mouth bush babies that are envious and jealous of us at the same damn time. So what are you talking about? I don't care if Asian people pay more taxes in America than black people. Our black tax dollars are still going to you illegal migrants, is it not? Are, are, are you claiming that only white tax dollars are funding you illegal Africans and black tax dollars are not funding you illegal Africans? What are you talking about? I'm saying that white people have more of the burden than black people do. Is that simple? And she says that. OK, let's play devil's advocate. White people have a bigger burden. And first of all, that's not a bigger. What the fuck are you talking about? If there's 10 white people and two black people, the 10 white people don't have a bigger burden. They're still paying their proportionate amount of taxes. There's just more of that demographic paying taxes. That's not a bigger burden. So first of all, you're fucking ignorant. Second of all, are black tax dollars funding illegal migrants? Yes or no? Yes. Then what are you talking about? What are you talking about then? And and if we play devil's advocate again and say white people pay more in taxes, the white people are saying close the border, get these Africans and these Mexicans and these Asians out of here. It's not just black folks, but again, uh, his point, uh, his point, I, I wasn't really seeing it. Um, Uncle Ruckus, I'm gonna bring you back in just a moment. We're gonna give uh, Shopak the chance to provide her closing remarks before we bring up some more people. Go ahead if you have yeah, any hi. remarks. Go for it. Yeah. So I'm just um what I'm what again what I'm seeing is that um there's nothing that that we have in common with these people and um also the fact of the matter is that um they don't they don't like us they just play the long game with us and um you know a great example of that and I think I've sp spoken on this before is uh Housewives of Potomac Wendy Osefo who uses her black card uh her skin color and uses affirmative action and her sorority then to get on the show and then delineate and disrespect them so we don't have nothing in common with these people and um is i'm happy that we're waking up and seeing our value and understanding that uh we we are not you know we 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 need to we need to be a lot more protective of who we are in our group because it's starting to come out with these people and how how racist and you know what they they would rather survive in a colonial environment amongst white people because they know that they're savages back in Africa. 53 countries and they don't want to go to any of those. They want to come to America, go to the UK where they've been colonized, disrespected because they know they're safer and they're more protected and it's more organized and 
that we've built something for, for ourselves in our community and they don't like it. And they keep comparing us to these white people, but we stand up to white people. We have no problem with telling a white person, go fuck off, which they can't do. They can never come here and tell a white person to, to whatever. So that's my, that's my thing. I, I, all these, these African immigrants, they got a lot of connections with these white people and the white people just dump them in our communities because they don't want to deal with them like that. They just want to use them and dump them. And that's what they do. They're getting used and dumped. Facts, facts. Well, hey, I'm gonna, they're, I'm gonna, um, they're, they're in and out. They're like the In and Out Burger, you know. So that's what they are. They're In and Out Burger joints. Hey, I feel you. I feel you. Hey, um, I'm gonna drop you backstage. Um, if you want to hang out backstage, I'll bring you back to you know speak with everybody. But I'm gonna give everybody like a little one on one before we bring everybody on the panel together. Um, so just hang out backstage if you want me to bring you back up in a bit. Uh, next person we have coming from the back to the front. Damn, I was going to bring up Moonlight again. Every time I'm about to bring up Moonlight, the chick drops off. Jesus Christ. Well, we'll do a little bit of housekeeping. Guys, make sure to hit the like button. Likes are free after all. If you support the mission, I am still demonetized, but you can hit the cash app, hit the PayPal, throw five on it. I appreciate you guys keeping the show going. Um, also, I've learned that most of these Africans are talking cash money shit about Black Americans on TikTok. And in order for me to start spreading my content to TikTok, I have to get a thousand followers on TikTok so I can live stream over there. So guys, go to my TikTok. The link is in the chat, MikeTV999. As soon as I hit a thousand followers on TikTok, I can start giving them Bush babies the work, y'all. They, they all hiding over there on TikTok. They ain't really on YouTube like that. Some of them kind of on Twitter, but TikTok is where they all running amok and i'm about to come through and start slicing these tethers up but i need a thousand followers to do so so follow me on tiktok if you got a tiktok uh next person we're gonna bring from the back to the front um did we already bring this person up earlier no you know what i don't think we were, i think i talked to you like the other day that that's what it is uh we've got dr r in the building dr r um you're based out in the uk right yeah of course my brother yeah, yeah, what's up, what's up? Um, hey, and actually, it's great that you showed up today because we have some more brothers from the UK who are backstage, so we'll definitely um, bring them up in just a moment so you guys can chop it up. But um, let us know, what do you think about the topic at hand? I mean, do you see a lot of Africans uh, bleaching or using, you know, chemical peels and skin lightening and stuff like that, or? Of course, of course, my brother. Like, Africans need to, what's it called, shut up here and sort out the problems in their communities. Like, I don't know why they've got so much energy for the Black American FDA folk. They focus on the continent of Africa. There's seriously a lot of problems. You've got issues with bleaching. You've got issues with um, prostitution. Like I would have basically, um, I mentioned on the private chat that I wanted to roast this Kenyan guy. This Kenyan guy, they've, if you, you should watch videos of um, Kenyan women prostituting themselves in Melindi, which is a coastal town in Kenya. Then you have the Indians. Just like in Trinidad, control Kenya's economy and they have their own affluent areas. And you've got black Kenyan women being made bitches and being made for the Indians and foreigners who are living well compared to the Kenyans. So I don't know what the fuck this guy, this Kenyan fella, is, is um, on about, rambling about black Americans. And I highly doubt it he has ever come across black Americans in this country. Well, you know what? I've got and a he question. He needs to get his priority. Um... We have someone called Uncle Ruckus who's also in the UK. And a moment ago, he was saying a whole bunch of weird stuff about um, black tax dollars aren't funding the illegal migrants because white people pay more taxes or some kind of bullshit. Um, wh what are your thoughts on that? I'm not going to say much about it, but black Americans, along with white Americans who live in that country, they obviously pay tax and is funding these illegal programs. And I'm aware of the illegal migration in New York that's going on, but I haven't been looking too much into it. But I'm aware of what's going on, just to let you know. I got you. I got you. So so we got two brothers from the UK. One called also, Dr. Um, R. Yeah, yeah. What's also, up, Dr. Mike, I, wanted to, I wanted to add something important for you, that black American sisters from New York, from California, you got to start calling out these people these these um these African immigrants who pretend to be um what's it called um what do you call it um pretend to be black American in order to get the perks and benefits that your people built up like I suggest you go on a website called 
humanphenotype.com, it will show a lot of African tribes and different phenotypes. And you can easily tell which, which of these tribes, the way they look. And, and, and you will have what's it called Black Americans, I think, on that site. You should check it out or show it. So you can like educate yourself and basically pick out these um, infiltrators. So you're saying mm-hmm. that you realize these Africans are coming to America literally trying to cosplay as us and reap the benefits. And you say yeah, that there's a website. I'll give, yeah. I'll give an example. Like, for example, as a Somali, we've got some tribes in Ethiopia that cosplay us in order to give us a. I'll give an example. Have you heard of that guy from um, in Japan, Johnny Somali, that has caused yeah. madness in Japan? That guy is driving a Somali. He's an Ethiopian. An immigrant, I think I believe he was born in Arizona. This guy is an Ethiopian, and this guy's a short guy, and he doesn't look like a Somali. And I can tell what my people look like straight away. And this guy is basically, he even said so on the, on the what's it called, um, on his stream, that I want to basically mess up the reputation of this ethnic group. So I, so my people don't, will be out of the spotlight. I believe some Africans are doing this. If they're doing, if they if they're causing this madness. Hey, 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 and brother, thank you for dropping the website. But we don't even need to go to humanphenotypes.net because we can tell an African a mile away. <laughs> we can tell the difference between an African and a Black American. But um, what I want is no, but it's um, going to show up. But what I'm trying, what I'm trying to educate you on, you have to just if you go to human phenotype. This whole BS African solidarity thing, it doesn't mean as that sister said for America, it doesn't exist in Africa. We look different. And we're not the same. Just like she said about the Russians and Ukrainians, they are similar. Does a Russian person, a Spaniard person got anything in common? Of course not. Facts. Facts. Well, hey, um, we've got Uncle Ruckus on the stage with us. Um, so Uncle Ruckus is also from the UK, but he's spouting a lot of, you know, anti-Black vitriol, claiming that we don't pay enough in taxes and we're not really being burdened by the migrants. Um, you obviously don't share that same sentiment. So Uncle Ruckus, um, what's your response to hearing another African in the UK who has a difference of opinion than you? Uh, I don't know where it's coming from. I need to speak to more to find out. So I hope I can speak to him a bit more and understand his point of view. He's he's on the stage, so if there's anything that you want to say to him, now's the chance. If he's got any points, I can, I can obviously comment on that. What was that? I said if he's got any points to make, I can comment on that. He just made his point. Were you not listening? He was talking about oh, how you can tell Africans are different to African, Black Americans or whatnot. And he was saying that obviously we're being burdened by our tax dollars going to fund illegal migration. Did you miss that? Obviously, part? somewhat. Obviously, somewhat. Black Americans are paying for it, but they're not the primary funders of what's going on. They're not because obviously when the woman was talking, she said black communities in particular. She wasn't talking about how Americans as a whole were funding it. She was talking you, about black do communities. Do you realize particular. that these immigrants are being shipped into black communities specifically? Do you not know that black communities are having their high schools shut down to become migrant detention centers? Do you not know that black kids in certain black communities can't even access their gymnasium because they turn their gymnasium into a migrant shelter? What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, black people aren't really burdened. White people pay more taxes. The migrants aren't going to white communities. They're being shipped into black communities. Did you not know that, Uncle Ruckus? You know, I said, you're really really saving these FBAs because this woman, when I asked her, she could not tell me one single thing apart from education about how Africans are stealing black American resources. But if you weren't here, they they would have no clue. They wouldn't know what to tell me. Okay, so you're just talking out of your ass now. I just made a very, a very poignant uh, point about the immigrants being shipped into our communities, not white communities. And I think that just fell on deaf ears. So um, you guys hang out backstage. We're going to bring up the next person coming from the back to the front. We've got, um, oh, she's finally here. We got Moonlight in the building. I got her before she ran off. <laughs> Moonlight, go ahead and unmute yourself. Let us know where you're calling in from and what's on your mind. Hey, hey, my TV. Good to finally um, engage with you on your live. Gosh, I've been watching you for a little bit. Um, uh, I used to come over here when you were um, really exposing Miss Pearly things. And I enjoyed that content 101%. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Absolutely did. Um, I've been, you know, engaged in other things, but I see that you're back and you're going strong. I do uh, have, um, you know, you know, when I, when I hear, you talk about this topic and I've seen a couple of your videos. I can definitely relate. Um, I'm originally from Brooklyn. I am in uh, Florida now. Um, my family is Jamaican, West Indian. I was born in Brooklyn. 
Um, my daughter and only child is from a Mauritanian. So I'm all in the mix in every which direction for you, Mike. Wait, hold on. Um, you said that your child is Mauritanian? Uh, her father is Mauritanian, yes. Oh, okay, her father's Mauritanian. Okay, I was about to say, mm -hmm. I don't know if you pulled a, a Angelina Jolie and went to Africa and started picking babies like you were shopping. Oh, at no, the they store. don't want me over there. Uh-uh, they no, don't want me over there, Mike. No, no, so, no. So um, what has your experience been with your husband? Is he one of the mm -hmm. exceptions? Um, you know, he comes from a culture that doesn't denigrate us, or have you also seen some some little quirks there as well? I've seen some quirks there, of, of course, yes. Um, not from him, per se, but, well, I would say this. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, sister, him... sister, sister, sister. Mike TV is a place of truth. Let's just be honest with one another. During sex, mm -hmm. does he call you an Akata? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> oh, Lord. Let us know uh, what kind of no. quirks have bubbled up to the surface. <laughs> I gotta come around here more often. You know what I'm saying? I tell you, I've been in, I've been involved in other issues that I'm dealing with on, you know, in my segment, Mike. So I don't get an opportunity really to hone in, but I am making an effort to do more, uh, to do that more so now, because this topic is strong, and I want to, you know, definitely talk about it too, in 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 my sector or the sector that I'm, you know, normally at. Um, I've experienced all of that, you know. I don't know whether my daughter's father knew that he was doing things um, sub subvertly in certain ways that he responded to me. What kind of things me. was he doing? Um, you know, it's Has just... he ever called you a lazy black American? No, not that. Not in <laughs> okay, any okay. derogatory way, but I'm just thinking that machoism, that masculine, like, you know, you do what I say and, you know, you uh, serve and all of this while... He's not serving. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? You know, I'm going out there and I'm working, I'm getting it done, but then there's no motivation from his part. So, yeah, that was uh, not going to um, oh, be. So, so, so we understand that Africans are very, um, I mean, there's no other word that I have for it. I know that the snowflakes mm -hmm. created the term and whatnot, but um, Africans mm -hmm. have a lot of toxic masculinity, for lack of better terminology mm -hmm. so are you saying cultural. that yeah, yeah so so you you're saying that you've experienced some of that cultural toxicity but it's also been strange because on the one hand he's the man he's the boss he's the macho you bow down and obey to him and that is technically a traditional dynamic but at the same mm -hmm. time you're out there working you know you're the bread earner and he doesn't really seem to have much motivations in that area okay Do, exactly so, exactly. so 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 how can he be so how can he be the head nigga in charge when you going out there Hello? to bring home the bacon? <laughs> Hello, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Where's the humility? Where's oh, the Lord. respect? Where's the you know re respect from you know what I'm saying? We make it now. Do your part. Let me do mine. That's where we at really. This infighting about mm. you know which um uh, master uh, gave us more bread. It's just a smoke screen. It really is. I mean, you know, when you look at what has happened to us, Mike, back in the uh, Trump administration, and I'm not talking about any one political party because I'm not for either which one. You know what I'm saying? That's just how I perceive it all. Um, but when, during his administration, it was so overt. You know, it was Africans getting the heat. It was Black Americans getting the heat. They didn't stop giving uh, Black men the heat, if you know what I mean. Uh, and say, well, where are you from? You got it. You know, you got dragged out your car. You got plummeted. You got the, um, you know, the uh, plunger, you know, the hammer, the yep. spray. You know what I'm saying, Mike? They, yeah, they no don't facts. stop you, you and ask you. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's the nerve, you know, just the audacity sometimes from, especially the African side to look down at the American, and I don't want to say African American. You got to be very careful with your designation these days. You hinted towards it. You got to be really careful, yeah. especially American natives, native Black American, native Black Americans. Got to be really careful how you fill out this form because they get you all the time. Mm -hmm. They get you all the time with that. You got to watch your designation. You could put other. You know, in any form, application, whatever you're filling out, and put 
native black American. You can do that. But you got to be very careful with Damn, that. Damn, and shout no, out to I Nick. Guess. Hey, shout out to Nick. I didn't even realize till you made that comment, Nick. I didn't even realize that African bitch put in some blue contacts as well. She bleached her skin, but oh that wasn't God. enough. She had to throw in some blue contacts. And oh, in most of her videos, God. she has on a blonde wig. Most of her videos, Eesh. she got a blonde wig and the blue contacts, y'all. The identity crisis is real. but um, It's real. It, yeah, this, yeah. Right here, this right here is just sad. It's sad because you, it, in so many ways, you know, we can see the overt self-hatred and all this and that and this and that. But this is just like, you know, telling the creator, I, I don't like what you created and I'm going to change it. Mm. You know, it's I'm so just going to take off health, my natural right? pigmentation that protects us from the sun. The blacker you are, not the more protection you have from the sun. It's, 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 it's not just the sun. Our skin is the largest organ of our body. Our skin filters oh, and protects us in so many ways. So for you to yes. bleach, chemically peel layers of your skin off Ew. so that you look closer to a white person, it's Ew, just sickening. Goodness. This is it's like, sickening. Uh, you see this? I can't. Hey, hey, I'm, like I'm not. Li li listen, guys, I'm not like, racist, but I'm not racist, but I fear ever being romantically entangled with an African woman because, God damn it, is she going to take off the panties and have a dark-ass vagina that don't match the just... complexion of the rest of her body? I mean, homegirl is scrubbing off everything but her booty and her pooty tank. So I guess the booty and the pooty oh tank going to be black, but her legs and her arms going to be white. All right. This is right. mental slavery, Mike. This is sick. This is mental slavery that you think taking off your protection, the darker you are, the more protection you have. I mean, if you really read it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it is what it is. You work with what you have and you protect yeah. your melanin. This right here to believe, you know, consciously that you're going to be better off by taking off the layer of your protection to look another way. And then you're going to come talk shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> No, I feel you. Well, hey, um, I appreciate you calling you in. Do. Thank you again for the catch Thank up you, earlier. Mike. Um, if, if you want to remain a part of the discussion, I'm gonna drop you backstage just so I can give a couple of people a one on one, and then I'm gonna bring everybody up on the panel together. You got it. I'll come back and forth. I'm enjoying this. I'll go in the All chat. right. All right. Talk to you soon. And uh, yes, for anybody in the chat that's wondering where I found that video, all you have to do on YouTube is type in African bleach bath. And this is like the first or second video that pops up. African bleach bath. She's at a Nigerian spa and the spa put her in some fucking chemical bath solution and started scrubbing off her skin. Jesus Christ. And for anybody bringing up little Kim. Little Kim is not a foundational black American. Her mommy is from Trinidad. Her daddy is from Trinidad. She's a Caribbean chick, which is why she's one of the only folks out here in America we see bleaching like that. Nicki Minaj bleaches as well. Nicki Minaj is also from where? Trinidad. Come on, y'all. Come on. East Coast tethers. New York tethers. Uh, yeah, let's speak on it. Next person we got coming from the back to the front is Trey. Trey, where are you calling in from and what's on your mind? Yeah, we talked on your last live stream. It's me from the OKC. Trey yeah, Smith. Yeah. Well, hey, I was going to ask because there's uh, hundreds of people watching. And there is another with. one that people try to, uh, well, Black American women hate themselves too. What about Rihanna? Rihanna is from Barbados. All right, and she can't fucking sing. <laughs> Is Rihanna so, ble bleaching as well, or? Yes, she was. Uh, look up her. Look up Rihanna right now. She used to have a little afro and shit. You know, she's she's one of those West Indian chicks. Hmm. Well, you Bitch, know what? Better have I my think there money. Might be some truth to it. I think there might be some truth to it. I mean, here's her before, and here's her after. I mean. She looking like she's been rubbing on an old cake soap there. Yeah, okay, oh, cake soap. And I was the one that was uh on Sammy that, Sosa. Uh, Sosa. Yes, yeah, Sammy Sosa, the original bleacher, and he's a Dominican. So again, he's if Dominican you ever time. see if you ever see an American bleaching their skin, I bet you they come from an immigrant background. Come on. I mean, the, 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 the only person I love my dark skin, brother. 
the only person who's FBA who I guess we can maybe say bleach their skin is MJ, but I don't blame yeah, him. Yeah, Vinny Lago. He hey, wasn't hey, even dark hey, skin. Well, 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 not only did he have a condition, um, I think he obviously did still bleach his skin and sharpen his nose yeah, and did. stuff. But but I don't blame him because he was um he was dealing with a lot of mental subjugation from his own father when he was a child. So I mean, god damn it, if my dad uh raised me and was talking shit about my nose and talking shit about me being black and shit, then god damn it, I'd I'd want to be other too. So the one person who we can say is an FBA who bleached their skin, not only did they have a health condition, but they also had childhood trauma. So I'll go ahead and give MJ a pass on that. Hey, but, uh, yeah, he, Trey, he was five, five years old. Yeah. He never yeah. had a childhood. And that's why I feel sorry for MJ. Rest his soul. I'm not even going to lie. I was looking at the news when he died, right? And I kind of shed a tear for him. I'm like, wow, that's fucked up, man. Hey, hey, um, I be damned if I'm doing drugs under the guidance of a doctor and I still die. <laughs> and that dude oh went God. back to the Caribbean too. That dude yeah. went back to the Caribbean. Gave him them so that they called it milk. Yep, talk about but, it. But this chick right here, she looks better as a, a brown dark skinned woman, right, right on the left that she does right here. Yeah, she's I'm looking at my screen right now. I, I have my, uh, I'm on my tablet and I'm looking at my screen right now. This shit is pathetic. But they got the nerve to say that we at the bottom. Let me uh, spit some fucking facts. Majority of the people that's on welfare, section eight and food stamps in this country are white people since they like sucking white coochie and dick all the time. And the welfare capital of the United States is Owsley County. 98% of the people in that state right there that's on all these government assistance and shit are white people. 1% of the people are black and they're doing just fine. So debunked, you can look that up too. I've already and, done my research. And you know what? I didn't even look up what vitiligo looks like until some people in the chat were talking about it. And yeah, goddamn it, if this is what vitiligo looks like, then okay, I, I don't blame well, somebody for balancing dimension. out their skin. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't blame right somebody there. for, for yep. wanting to balance it out. I mean, God damn, hey, hey, I've got some um um, I get like some sun uh, blotches on my shoulders and stuff if I'm out in the summertime, shirtless and stuff. But they, it ain't nothing like that. God damn. No, if it's I was not. looking like oh, that, yeah. then then I probably want to get even some way too. I mean, I I either got to put on some blackface or I got to do some cake soap. I mean, I got to go one way or the other. Hey, so don't use the cake soap. You already like skin, folks. <laughs> <laughs> you already like skin, folks. But. Uh, <laughs> I noticed something else with these tethers and shit. When you start debunking them, man, you go hard, man. You remind me, you go hard on these tethers like Tupac Shakur, which is my favorite rapper. You know what I'm saying? You go hard on them, and they start talking about your skin tone and everything else. Grow out and your I'm hair, like, Mike. Man, You're an Indian, Mike. <laughs> You're Indian, Mike. You're East Indian, Mike. I and mean, then you're mixed with white, and 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 you only have five percent of black. Every morning you look in the mirror and you wonder, are you black or are you? I'm like, sir, I'm 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 not confused about my identity at all, at, at all. I think like, that what the fuck? Was into that shit, man. I was like, oh my god, these these fucking oh lord, and that Kevin dude. I would like for him to come back up and explain to me how are we the bottom of American society because I don't feel that way. We spend the most money in America. Black Americans have more money in America than his whole village over there in Kenya, that little fucking shithole. Mm -hmm. Don't make no sense. Well, hey, real quick, um, I'm gonna drop you down. I got two more people I gotta have a one on one with, and then I'm gonna bring everybody up to to speak together. So, hang tight. Uh, next person we got coming from the back to the front is Millie. Millie, let the folks know where you're calling in from and what's on your mind. Yo, what's up, Mike? Uh, yeah, I'm Millie Hendricks. I'm just calling from the UK. 
Um, yeah, I just like when you start talking about Michael Jackson, I'm like, oh, you're talking about more Michael Jackson. So yeah, he had vitiligo, and he said that have the the white patches got too big that that's when he started blending himself white because before he was blending himself brown, but he said the white patches got too big, and that's the only, that's the only reason why he blended himself white. So, um, so yeah, there isn't, an, and and also because I'm a bit of a skincare fanatic, um, the uh the, with skin um with there's a difference between bleaching and lightening your skin. And a lot of times when people people call bleaching is actually lightening your skin and all lightening does is just restores your skin to its natural color and it might make a distinctive difference like um like I, i'm like i said i'm crazy about skincare for black people like i'm telling him are you using your spf 50 are you you like um and stuff like that and i think you know when people up there's like one known um lightning cream that that is quite synonymous with africans it's called bioclear and if not for the fact that it has essential oils and um and uh, what was it? Essential oils and fragrances. It would be absolutely perfect for black skin. I'd recommend it for all black people. But unfortunately, because it's got those two elements, I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it. And apparently, we use it quite a lot. Like I'm going to be honest. Like even when I went to Nigeria, in Nigeria, they just like see in the UK, if someone's using that sort of thing, they'd hide it and make sure that no one can see it. Whereas in Nigeria, they'll just have it on the table, like it's just like it's so commonplace. And I, I hate to say that I hate I hate to dig up my own people, but yeah. In Nigeria, that they just have it like on display, almost. It's not not like not not quite a flex, but it's just like they've got nothing to be ashamed of that they're using, that that, that they're using it. So no shame, yeah, I, it's, no shame. Hey, yeah. the broad on the screen right now has a whole YouTube channel where she teaches people how to bleach and pill their skin. Okay, I like, I agree with the previous brother. Like she looks so much better on the left, but you know what I told you about women's psychology. Like she's obviously has an attraction to people to, to men who prefer the one on the right than the one on the left. So just because I might say she looks she, she looks nice and nice on the left, but she's not trying to appeal to people like me. So that's just women's psychology. I mean, to us blokes, is a women are fickle, but it's just that's just the mechanism, their mechanisms of thinking. So it's um. Yeah, that's just the way it is. But yeah, that, that's all I mean. Well, hey, um, I'm I'm trying to do a thing where I bring people up one at a time, and then I, you know, bring everybody all up together. But real quick, I actually want to introduce you to another brother who's been calling in lately, called uh, Doctor R. Doctor R is also in the UK. Uh, Doctor R, this is Millie. He's also in the UK. So you guys, uh, can go ahead and introduce yourselves to one another. For for all we know, you guys both stay in the same ends. Yo, Wagwan fam. I, I live in. I, I don't live in London anymore. Um, so I don't know what part of England he's 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 based at. But yeah, um, I, I didn't really get to hear what um what 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 country he's from. Doctor so R, really... you were on the stage. So go ahead and unmute yourself and chop it up with Millie. Yeah, what's up? What's up, Millie man? What's up, man? I'm assuming you're from London, and I'm assuming you're living in the Midlands or the North UK. No, I, I live in Bristol. Uh, like eight years ago, so but yeah, I grew up um, just I grew up outside of East London in Essex. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've been to Bristol myself. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you from? I'm assuming. Mind you, that's where they threw the statue inside the water. That slave owning statue. The it's just uh, yeah. Uh, it's just one of the things that really boils my blood because they tell us, oh, he was just a man of his time. But then the brothers in, in, in the inner cities of London who are in gangs, they are also men of their time. So, but then they have such a reservation against them, um, the music that, that that they produce, the material and the music. And I think, okay, you got a problem with the music or material and music that they produce. Not not just grime artists or drill artists, all rappers. If you got such a problem with it, then you should be have a problem with the social circumstances that precipitate it. But okay, uh, I brother, saying, you're from. Bro, brother, I wanted to say uh, about the statue thing. Like, I don't want to play devil's advocate. Like, um, you, you're Nigerian, right? Yeah. Uh, what's your tribe, may I ask? You don't have to mention it. Oh, it's, it's Ibo. Ibo. Um, but don't Africans in Africa, like, um, what do you call it, have statues of their historical figures? Like, I'll give an example. Um, like, have you know the Yoruba people, they've got a woman called Madame Tinubu. And I remember I was watching a YouTube video of a guy. I don't know if you heard of him. He's called History Debunk. Have you heard of him? No. 
I've uh, heard of it. I've heard of a white man, bald head with a mustache, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's from UK. He's got books. I saw, written. Um, I saw a video he did yesterday. I watched his video on Marcus Garvey about how Marcus Garvey was a scamming ass nigga and he was not a black hero. And I was like, who is this white man from the UK to, to debunking black history? Yeah, yeah, I am. I am very familiar with him. Yep. Oh, he's yeah. But, um, my... oh, okay. Is it an Irish dude? Um, I don't know if he's Irish or not, but he's from UK and he's got a mustache. He's an old guy. Okay, I, I think I've, 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 I might have seen the, that that prick and he's. I, I just don't watch it. You know, I don't really have much time for these people. Like just here and yeah, I, I've seen his thumbnail. Yeah, that's him. That's him. That's him. That's him. I, I, I don't really have time for these people because I've, I know if I just looking at them makes my blood boil. So I know they're gonna say something stupid. So. It's just that's just my thing. Really. Actually, but, actually, I, I, actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. Surprisingly, um, he's kind of he's he's a little bit nuanced. Okay, um, he 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 debunks a lot of history across the globe, but he does speak some real shit about Black history. And actually, just to give folks a little preview into my introduction to him, um, let me go ahead and pull up the video. I saw um, a video he did on Marcus Garvey. And I said, what is this white man in the UK talking about garbage? And he, he, was, he was saying some real shit. He was saying some really real shit. And you know what? I think it's one of his most, uh, yeah, we already filtered it by popular. Where was it? Where was it? And then, of course, I did watch some of his other videos. And I was like, okay, you man's is a little bit of a wanker. But, you know, um, he, he's kind of he's kind of hit or miss. This is some things he's he's really yeah. on the mark on. And some things he's kind of like, oh, this white guy. But, you know, what? Yeah, let me type if he in. wants to debunk history, he has his home. His whole country has a whole history that he could debunk rather than. Focusing there it on is. Other yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Instead of focusing on debunking Trash European day. history, he want to focus got on, a lot. on debunking um black or African history. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. It, it, God it, damn it! I need to pay for my YouTube premium. They starting to give me ads, y'all. I gotta, I gotta make sure to re up. Jesus, I don't do no ads. But yeah, y'all, he, uh, my, hear this real quick. Um, he, here was my introduction to him. I'm gonna play it at 1.5 times speed so we can get through it quicker than later. But this was my introduction to Mandem. Hello again. Judging from some of the comments in previous posts of mine on the subject of Black History Month, there is some confusion because in the United States, this important event is celebrated in February. In Britain, though, Black History Month is October. Uh, it was originally launched in this country to coincide with the centenary of the birth of Marcus Garvey. And I appreciated watching this video because he was giving me some game. I didn't know in Britain you guys have Black History Month in October. Yeah, yeah, October, yeah. You, you yeah, really I, I, hey, and not only that, but he's going to tell us in in the UK they've got uh, Marcus Garvey nurseries and Marcus Garvey pubs and something like Marcus Garvey is really promoted out in the UK pretty heavily, huh? Yeah, he's he looked at. Oh, I know you um, you guys aren't too keen on Pan Africanism, but Pan Africanism is like the essential to us black people in the UK. Um, it, it's done a lot for like the Windrush movement and everything like that. Is it, Pan Africanism was like very essential to towards their towards their struggles, but implies like I said, it might not be like the best thing for you black Americans, but it is almost quite important to us to us UK because all, what it does is that it also it kind of lets us know about place that yes, we're we're, we're like we're minorities like you black Americans, but we also have a heritage in the caribbean africa i caribbean. understand that for africans migrating to the uk for you guys to have a sense of solidarity that's an impactful thing for you guys pan-africanism as a concept is great where us black americans are with it is once you africans start practicing it then we can pick it up and practice it again but but right now right. i mean africans by and large aren't really practicing it. question on pan-africanism well, well hold, hold on hold on real quick i want to get through a little bit of this video real quick so, so that the folks can see what i learned from this british man about marcus garvey and then we'll, we'll let you guys finish the conversation after that we got to bring up snap and then k and then we're going to bring up everybody uh, we're going on two hours of live content here. If you guys want the stream to keep on, keep it on, hit the cash app, hit the PayPal, throw five on it. But let's see what this British man taught Mike the other day. Of whom many viewers will have heard. Uh, this was in 1987. Marcus Garvey is widely respected. One might even say revered by black people in Britain and America. And many different institutions have been named after him. Where I used to live in the London district of Tottenham, there's the Marcus Garvey Library. And in another part of London, there's the Marcus Garvey Park. In Birmingham, there's the Marcus Garvey Nursery. And in Nottingham, the Marcus Garvey Centre. 
New York has a 20 acre park, the Marcus Garvey Park, which lies on the edge of Harlem, um, a black district in New York. Garvey is buried in Jamaica in the National Heroes Park, and there are a couple of statues of him on the island. So who was he? Marcus Garvey was born in 1887 and apprenticed first to a printer. He didn't really settle to his job and travelled around a bit, first to Central America and then later to Britain. He returned to Jamaica in 1914 and founded the Universal Negro Improvement Association with the avowed aim of establishing a brotherhood among the black race, promoting a spirit of race pride, reclaiming the fallen and assisting in civilising the backward tribes of Africa. There was a bit of a problem with the name because many Jamaicans found the word Negro offensive. Things didn't really work out well in Jamaica because many people thought that he was just on the make and there were many allegations that the funds he raised were being used to pay his personal expenses. So in 1916, he moved to America and went to live in Harlem. Garvey was a black separatist, which meant that he thought that black people shouldn't really mix with whites and certainly not marry them. He was very much opposed to miscegenation, to black people and white people marrying and having children. And listen, y'all, I learned from my enemy. Just because this is a British man, I didn't say, oh, fuck this white man. What's he got? I said, hold up. I want to see what he got to say about Marcus Garvey. And he actually educated me, y'all. There's some things I did not know about Marcus Garvey that I got taught by this British man. Watch this. Watch this. Okay. He was very scathing about this. And he also had some unpleasant things to say about black people whose skins were lighter than his. I didn't know Marcus Garvey was out here banging on colorism, shitting on light-skinned black Americans. I didn't know that he had an identity crisis and he had vitriol and contempt for light-skinned folks. Damn, this British man taught me that. This didn't make him popular with a lot of black people because many African Americans have a mixed ancestry with white relations, white ancestors. For the next few years, the Universal Negro Improvement Association did well, bringing in plenty of money, enough to provide Marcus Garvey with a Cadillac and a home. There were even more suggestions that the whole thing was a racket to line his own pockets. In 1920, the UNIA held a conference at which Garvey was declared provisional president of Africa and a government in exile was formed of West Indians and African Americans, none of whom had actually been to Africa. This, of course, irritated real Africans. It gave Marcus Garvey a chance to dress up in some weird uniforms which he invented. The thumbnail to this video shows him wearing one such, looking, uh, I don't really know like what, an admiral perhaps. It was the setting up of a shipping line which enabled African Americans to return to Africa, or that at least was a supposed aim, which really caused Marcus Garvey's downfall, that and endorsing a racist ideology of the Ku Klux Klan. Garvey sold shares in a boat which didn't exist and was prosecuted for this by the American authorities. At the same time... He so is this a scamming-ass tether or is this a scamming-ass tether? He's shitting on light-skinned black folks. He's friends with the Ku Klux Klan. He's telling us that, that we shouldn't try to integrate. We should be separatists. And then he starts a movement saying we should go back to Africa. Nigga, you Jamaican. Oh, but he got ran out of Jamaica, so he came to America to do his scams. When the folks say that, you know, he got indicted on mail fraud and stuff, they try to paint it like, oh, it's the man trying to take down a revolutionary. No, he was a scamming ass African. He was selling shares in a boat that did not exist. He's like Umar Johnson selling an idea of a school that does not exist. God damn it. Now we see why Marcus Garvey is a part of the FDMG Academy's name. <laughs> it was the setting up of the shipping line which enabled African-Americans to return to Africa, or that at least was a supposed aim, which really caused Marcus Garvey's downfall, that and endorsing a racist ideology of the Ku Klux Klan. Garvey sold shares in a boat which didn't exist and was prosecuted for this by the American authorities. At the same time, he met up with the Grand Wizard or head of the Ku Klux Klan and declared that the two of them had the same aim, that they got on well together because one wanted a separate white country and the other wanted a separate black nation. This shock. So just like these Africans call into Mike TV, bitching and complaining and griping about black Americans and we shouldn't get reparations and we need to do this and we need to do that. The Jamaican tether Marcus Garvey came over here and did the same shit started shitting on light-skinned folks, started meeting with the Klan, saying we shouldn't get integrated, we should get, uh, we should go back to Africa. Nigga, who is we? Are you French? You're Jamaican. Many black people have made him very unpopular, but Marcus Garvey dismissed those who objected by claiming that they were not really black people. Do you hear this? 
our black ancestors, our black American ancestors that were banging against Garvey when Garvey was in his prime, he said, oh, well, those are just some light-skinned Negroes. Them folks ain't even really black. They light-skinned. Ain't that the same shit they try to throw at Mike? Oh, Lord, you telling me if I was around in the 1930s, 1940s, and I was banging on a soapbox against Garveyism, he would have said, oh, well, that dude, Mike, he, he, he's too light-skinned at it. All right. All right. This shocked many black people and made him very unpopular. But Marcus Garvey dismissed those who objected by claiming that they were not really black people because some of them were too light skinned. At his trial for fraud, he was convicted and sentenced to two years in prison. Because the judge and district attorney were both Jewish, he described them after the trial as damn dirty Jews, saying that when they wanted to get me, they had a Jewish judge try me and a Jewish prosecutor. I would have been freed, but two Jews on the jury held out against me 10 hours. And... Come on, come on. Is it any surprise that the man's down with the Klan and he's an anti-Semite and he's causing chaos and confusion in the black American community? He did in convicting me, whereupon the Jewish judge gave me the maximum penalty. So both a friend of the Ku Klux Klan, an anti-Semite and a convicted fraudster. We see again the black hero motif at which we have looked over the last few days. There's clearly a separate idea of what constitutes a black hero, which is entirely different from what most people assume the word to mean. Garvey is buried in National Heroes Park in Jamaica, which says it all. A less heroic life would be hard to imagine. Damn. Most people have no... The British man then gave us some game, y'all. The British man then gave us some game. Well, real quick, DR and Millie, um, keep chopping it up for another minute or two, and then we got to bring up some more people. Okay, my blood is just boiling by this by, by this creature speaking uh, because, like I said, like he he should have all the time in the world to debunk his own history because his history is like nothing but pure lies. But I, I, I'm not I'm not even going to go into I'm not even going to waste my breath on 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 on, on that miscreant. I want to talk to the brother. He was talking about someone in the Yoruba Kingdom, um, Tonu something. And how, because I've heard, I think I, I kind of have an idea where he's going with it, because I've heard um, there's, this politi there's this coon politician called Kemi Badinok, who's also Yoruba as well. And she also craps on the own people talking about how they were invasive. They talk about invasive African tribes. And I, 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 I just want him to land with it. So. No, I was going to, no, I was not going to um, talk about Kemi Butcher. I was going to talk about Madame Tanubu, if you've ever heard of her. No, I think I might. No, I should. That's how I, 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 I have. From what I know is, um, he talked about how I found out about her was, and I found that out, found this information out a year ago. It was on this man's channel, History Debunk, or Simon, as they call him. He talked about um, Madame Tunubu, who was a Yoruba slave slave trader that sold her own people into slavery. And from what he said was. I need to re watch the video. Um, they got a statue of her in Yoruba land in southwest Nigeria. Okay. Uh, I don't want to like try and be be a pussy and say, oh, those are Yoruba people. They're not my people. Because it both kind of have a different history with slavery. I know. I do. Um, I do have you heard of Sorry? Have you heard of um, Robin Walker? No, I've not heard of him. Oh, hold on, guys. Oh, hold on, guys. Hold on, hold on, real quick. Uh, Dr. R, what was the name of that woman that sold her own people into slavery? It was Madam what? Madam, uh, Madam Tinubu is Tinubu is T I N U B U. Tinubu. That's the same name as the president of Nigeria, the current president of Nigeria. I know. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, I just thought I chucked that in. <laughs> it's fun interesting. fact. Interesting. You know what? I think I found. What you're referencing, um, it must be this video. Hello again. Two things disgust me about the people who are campaigning to bring down various statues, such as that of Cecil Rhodes, which stands in Oxford. One is their hypocrisy, and the other is their abysmal ignorance. These unattractive traits combine when we look at a statue in Nigeria. The thumbnail to this video shows a statue of Ifon Roy Tinubu an important figure in Nigeria in the 19th century. She was a powerful woman and known as something of a kingmaker. She's a great heroine to modern Nigerians, and the statue stands in Abiy Okuta in Nigeria. She was also a slave trader. I give a link to an article about her in the description to this video, but um, viewers shouldn't have any difficulty finding out an awful lot about her. I think. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He said he provided a link. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and check out the link and save us some time watching his video. Hold on. 
He said that y'all Nigerians got a statue of Madame Tinibu, and she was a goddamn slave trader. Let, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Mike is a speed reader. I can speed read this real quick and get you guys into the meat and potatoes. After the accidental death of Oluwol, Tinibu arranged for her brother-in-law to take the throne in Lagos. He, in turn, rewarded her with ownership of valuable stores in downtown Lagos. She made other investments in Lagos' business district and built a huge personal residence to reflect her new status. Tinibu was also rumored to own 360 personal slaves. Mm, interesting. They're saying they about her selling because the, the English. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Tinubu oh, fell from power in Lagos when she challenged British consul Benjamin Campbell, who railed against her economic hegemony and secret slave trading with European and Brazilians. So she was selling slaves to the Europeans and the Brazilians. Tinubu, in turn, publicly castigated Campbell for his infringement on royal authority and sovereignty in Lagos. Damn, she said, I'm sovereign, nigga. I can sell black people if I want to. She organized a plot to remove Consul Campbell, but before it could be implemented, Campbell confronted her with British gunboats in May of 1856 and demanded her exile from Lagos. In the face of superior British military power, Tinubu was forced back to Ab Abukuta. She nonetheless remained a major trader in the interior of Nigeria until her death in 1887. Damn, she had 360 of her own slaves, and she was doing secret slave trading with Europeans and Brazilians, and it was the British who was calling her out for it. Okay, interesting, interesting. A bit hypocritical there, but interesting nonetheless. Mm -mm. Please, can I jump in, please? <laughs> Go ahead, Millie. Go ahead. I know this makes your blood boil. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because, because, like I said, I'm not going to say, okay, these are European people, they're not my people, but at the same time, okay, so. Um, one thing uh, so I was talking about Robin Walker. Hey, Robin hey, Walker. hey, 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 Millie, if you just even Google her name, her title that pops up is Merchant and Slave Trader, <laughs> and this is her statue. Oh <laughs> All, right. Okay. All right, okay, go ahead. so to Robin, Robin Walker said, and he, he's um, he, he's from the UK, but he's of Jamaican background. He said, for every slave, every African taken out of Africa, there would have needed to be about four Africans killed. So it means that so uh, however many millions of Africans um, that were taken out of Africa, time multiply that number by five, and that's the amount of Africans that were had to be killed in order for them to be brought out. So it's not as if you know like like the way these people tell it, as if we had we had our people in shop windows and saying, hey hey, go, go, come and buy my brother, come and buy my sister, come buy my cousin. It weren't quite like that. We we did kind of put like one thing. I, us Ibos, I, like I said, I don't know about the Yoruba Yoruba to slave trade, but just with Ibos, because I'm an Ibo, we are one of the biggest antagonists to slavery. We did not like I was telling you like um like that idiot um the Nigerian perspective. Perspective. Like when I saw his last name was English, I knew that okay, he's from the coast. Meaning that they broke a deal with his his ancestors. They would have come into our, my ancestral land and kidnapped us. Because even I think if Forrest Whitaker, he traced his ancestry back to um, where I'm from. So, like I said, now the uh, interesting thing about where he's from is that. They actually conquered my people and enslaved us. So my ancestors were slaves to them. So while we did, while there was slavery in Africa, they didn't sell to Europeans. Not all Africans, African um, tri tribes sold to Europeans. But um, like I said, I I'm not going to try and talk about, you know, um, uh, talk about this. Well, I have to do some more research on her. But I'm definitely not going to get my cues from them that I'm an Englishman about telling me about my history because I can tell him a whole lot about his country's history. And I don't know, think he'd want to hey, hey, know. Hey, 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 you have a point. So as soon as the English man said, I have a link in my description, I said, forget hearing it from the white man. Let's check out the link. And the link said she had hundreds of slaves and she was slave trading to the europeans and the brazilians and and um and abo says google benjamin campbell i did google benjamin campbell and it does seem that he is a bit of a hypocrite because it says that campbell himself participated in slavery okay um it, it says when he was being investigated he said that he engaged in uh legitimate commodities such as ivory hides wax gold and coffee but um yeah he was he was also involved in the slave trade so it's interesting that he's calling out you know madame tibubu or whatever when when he was doing the same shit. but either way either way it's wild 
to us, it's wild that y'all Nigerians got a statue of someone who sold y'all to Europeans and Brazilians. All right. All right. Like I said, that's, that's the, the Europeans. Sorry. Hold on, hold on. Like, uh, what was that, Dr. R? I've got a question for the brother Hendrix I wanted to ask him. Yeah, you're far away. Um, you know your people, I did research on your people, and I'm, I know about your tribe, the, Yoruba, uh, the Igbo people who are like, what, 32, 35 million, and they live in the southwest of Nigeria. And I was the doing some research. Southeast. The southeast, yeah, yeah, the southeast of Nigeria. Um, I wanted to ask you if this is true or not. There were smaller tribes because in in the south south and the southeast of Nigeria you've got a lot of tribes, different tribes that yeah. live amongst the Igbo. Oh, <laughs> you had yeah, like yeah, groups, yeah. you had groups yeah. like the Kalabari, you had like yeah. groups like the Igbo and many other smaller tribes that yeah. were enslaving your tribe. Yeah, they were enslaving even us. Yeah. Were, even though they were in smaller numbers, was it true that they were being used by the British and yeah. they were using the mm -hmm. traditional rulers of Igbo land? Where the oracle was telling them that their ancestors committed spiritual crimes, they have to be sold into slavery. Because I got that information from Wikipedia, but I don't trust everything what Wikipedia said. Since you're an Ibo man, I'll have to ask you that question. Yeah. So basically, the super majority of Ibos that were taken as slaves were kidnapped. So it weren't a case of we had any sort of official system of selling to Europeans. Though there were once the so-called Ibos who, who even though those people to this day they don't even identify as Ibos. It's kind of a long way it went in history. So when we when we first arrived. Um, they they hated us, but they still had to rock with us because we were kind of like advanced in, in making metals and stuff like that. So they took us on. They would take on our names. They'd even take on our language. They speak the same language as us. But if you ask them, even if they have Igbo names, they'll say we're not Igbos. We, we, we don't identify with the Igbo people. That's why they were so cushy and cozy with them um, with, with going and kidnapping us and selling us. This is not even just me. Even ask the Hebrew Israelites because this is what they told me that yeah we're different from from them because they didn't because they were the ones who were washing their hair with mud and drinking, getting drunk off cow urine and stuff like that. And obviously when they saw that we weren't doing that. They saw, okay, you know what, maybe we need to follow their way. So that's when they started taking on our culture. But when the Europeans came, they're like, okay, no, those people aren't us. We're not them. So we're going to go and, and kidnap them. That's why with them, Frank Stephen, that, that idiot and Nigerian perspective, when I saw that his last name was English, I knew he was a coastie. I knew he was from the coast. Then I knew his ancestors were responsible, were part of the people that used to come in and kidnap my ancestors and, and sell them to Europeans. I could tell, just not the fact that he said some off-code stuff, but I knew that because the thing is, uh, in Ibo, we just, we just wouldn't do that because we know what our, our history is. When we look at, I mean, I know like some, some Black Americans in Havana might not see this, but when we, when we Ibos look at Black Americans, especially from the South, we're literally, it's like looking in the mirror. Like, like I know, I know Mike T is going to have a have a um, he's going to contest that, but like that's just how I feel. That even like when I was talking about the Igbo landing, like we, like our, our history with slavery, even the Basawari in Barbados, he was he he revolted against it. He was Igbo. Um, allowed it, Ekuyana. I don't well, know well, if you've well, heard well, of it. Real quick, real quick. Um, Doctor R, help me understand what was the point that you were making to Millie? Were you saying that some of his tribe were also responsible for the slave trade, or? No, I was just wanted to, because I did research on different African tribes. They did like, from what I know is they in, directly and indirectly worked with the colonialists because they didn't just kidnap the people. They worked with them. This this includes um, Muslim tribes in the Sahel and other regions of Africa as well, because they couldn't just go in there and take the people. They were already working with these people. And And in all my research, I found that to also be true. As a child, I thought that the white man just snuck over in Africa and was hiding in the bushes and kidnapping Africans. No, no, no. The Africans were selling other Africans because they were maybe a different tribe because maybe they had beef with one another, but this was legitimate business that was going on. So when I look at that, I say, hold on. Why do black folk around the world, why do, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I say, why do melanated folks around the world hold so much disdain against white people for the role that the whites played in the transatlantic slave trade when the transatlantic slave trade would have never happened. I'm not going to say not at all, but it at least wouldn't have happened in that dramatic scale without the direct involvement of Africans, right or wrong. What do you think, Millie? Oh, damn. 
cat got both the African's tongue. Damn it. As oh. soon as Mike as soon as Mike <laughs> says the slave trade <laughs> would not have happened without you Africans' involvement, them motherfuckers went radio silent. They said, Oh shit, he's on to us. Yeah. <laughs> I, I always say that, like I said, well, there's difference between slavery and the slave trade. Like, like I said, my ancestors were enslaved by the um but by by another by another another Igbo tribe. But it doesn't mean that how we were sold to, we obviously we clearly weren't sold to other people. So there's a difference between slavery and the slave trade. So as I always say, I always use the analogy. If I make rubber and then some company comes along and they use um they use that rubber to make tires for cars, does that mean that I'm part of the automobile industry? Clearly not. So it's like so to so even if Whoa, I were yeah, saying, yeah, yes, you are a part of that industry. They got the raw materials, i.e. the rubber from you. So you play a part in that industry. Yes. Yes, you do. Totally. Okay, but okay, okay. So what do you mean? So you mean making a oh, whole wait, car? Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, what's what's the 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 natural uh, material used in everybody's cell phones and shit? Is it uranium or something? Well, um, it's, I know the name of it. It's from Congo. It's used in every phone. Is it cobalt? Oh, or... Yes, cobalt, cobalt. Okay, yeah, cobalt. cobalt. Okay, okay. So it's a perfect example. Them poor Africans in the cobalt mines. They are still a part of the not just the cell phone trade, but all electronics in general. They are harvesting the natural resource that is then used for said good. So, yes, they are still part of, of, of that transaction. So so I'm not really sure where you're going with that analogy, Millie. Oh, I mean, OK, then that's I'm living, uh... they make rubber. They use the rubber to make tires for a car. And then, like to say that I'm 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 integral to the automobile industry. It's like okay, if they get the cobalt for the for for a phone, that's like a milli, a milli, a milli. If I sell an illegal firearm to Doctor R, and Doctor R shoots you, am I still responsible in some way? But that that's like a, a complete product. That's like a finished article. I'm saying I make rubber. Okay, okay, okay. If I manufacture gunpowder into bullets and i sell some bullets to dr r and dr r uh, bust some shots at you am i not part of the problem no because he if you didn't say it to him he'd have, he'd have gone he'd have found it somewhere else that's, that's that's what i'm trying to say it's like so whoa, 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 whoa. so by your own rhetoric you think the africans shouldn't be viewed at with scrutiny for selling their fellow countrymen to the europeans because well if those africans didn't sell them to the white man the white man would have went somewhere else to buy him no as an, okay so what akala said and I think a brother's heard of a caller. He said there were more slave revolts in West Africa than there were in, in the Americas. So it's like, so if there were some errant tribes that were selling to selling to, to Europeans, but the majority of Africans were vehemently against um against slavery, especially in the mainland of Africa. We 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 were vehemently against some slavery. There was only the people who broke with a deal along the coastline. They're the ones who would have sold and he would he might have sold people. So Whoa, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so we got to take your word for it that Africans on the inner side of the continent frowned upon the the slave trade that the coastal Africans were engaged in. You got to show me some receipts. I think that if anything, if those Africans located more so in Central Africa, I think if they were given that same opportunity, if they were on the coast and they had some white man willing to give them some gunpowder and some mirrors and some rum, I think they would have did the same shit. They just didn't have the opportunity. But what do you think, Millie? Well, I don't know, because like, like I said, based on what Robin Walker said, the numbers say that every African taken out of the continent for slavery would have had to result in four African or five Africans being killed. So that I said, so the total number of slaves taken out of Africa, you've got to multiply that number by five. And that tells you the amount of Africans that, that were killed in order to get them out of Africa. Who is saying that? Who, who no, said uh, that every African trafficked out of Africa four died? Who said that? Oh, no, Dr. Robin Walker. Do All right, I'm gonna look him up. Doctor Robin Walker. Yeah, he's like uh, a very well respected historian in the UK, black historian. Because those are the only ones I recognize. Can't trust okay, this. Uh, the other one. So Doctor Robin Walker, um, and and this is a theory that he's promoted. Right, he has a theory that for every uh, black slave transported off the continent, four died. 
Yeah, yeah, four, four or five died. Yeah, he he's he said that. Well, hold on, I'm gonna see if I can find any evidence to that. Um... Obviously, I'm going based on his historical research. So, yeah, yeah, no, I'm just trying to find where uh, he said that. Yeah, I can't, I can't find it real quick on the fly. But if anybody can find that, drop a link or let me know where to go. Um, interesting discussion, um, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna bring everybody up. We're gonna start doing closing remarks. Unless you guys want an encore, if you want an encore. You know what to do. Hit the cash app, hit the PayPal, throw five on it. While we wait to see if we're going to wrap up or go into an encore, there are still two, three more people backstage who have not had a chance to speak. So Millie and Dr. R, stay right where you are. We're going to bring you back in a sec. But the next person we got coming from the back to front is Snap. Snap, what's good, brother? The guy here, you tapping. I know you there. He tap, tap, tapping on something. Snap. Snap! Go ahead. My mom's the audio still not down. Can you hear me? Snap. Uh -oh. <laughs> this, this nigga lying on his belly in bed, tapping on on IG models or something. What you doing, Snap? <laughs> Hold on, baby. <laughs> snap! You live, Snap. Yeah. We can hear you. <laughs> oh shit! Snap going once. Hello. Going twice. Yes, Snap. Are you there? Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, I got a phone call. Y'all can hear me. I, I, got my, I got my headphones on this time. Nigga, I heard you click clacking and tapping on your screen. And shit. All we heard was tap, 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 <laughs> tap, tap, tap. tap. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, man. Oh, that was that because that? Smiles called me because she out doing some run errands and stuff. And she called me on the phone right before you pulled me up. <laughs> oh, damn. Well, hey, brother, let us know where you're calling in from and what's on your mind. Florida up in the house. FBA all day. And I'm going to say something like this here. I don't want to take, I'm going to take up some time when I say it. My family, nine kids, um, five boys. Yeah, four, five boys, four girls. And we we got one light, we got like light skin here, light skin there, dark skin here. And when we was growing up, you know, because you know how, you know how FBA do, we crack on each other. You know, we snap. So that hardened us up once we got to the schools. And the schools, you know, they'll crack on the light skin one. They'll crack on the dark skin one. And with my family and my best friend across the street, and they were all light skin, the whole family. It was about seven of them. Man, people got their behind work, straight right off rip. And then they left us alone picking at all skin color. I got called all kinds of darky, all that stuff. But here go the main thing, what I want to let everybody know. The way that you are born, the way that you are, that's who you are. Once you start changing stuff, you're not you no more. So you can't get mad when people point shit out and tell you you shouldn't be doing that. That don't look good because that bleaching water stuff, that is disgusting, very disgusting. And if you want to change and be light skinned, you think people are not going to be like on you and saying certain things about you. You think you dark skin i mean every everybody get it that's why you have to learn how to live with that this is life this is what life is you changing stuff not going to change nothing it's just going to be a different kind of stuff you go through i don't want to say about that and all about this um prison i mean um slavery stuff i don't know why nobody just won't admit it if the Africans wouldn't have been with that bullshit and they would have fought instead of, you know, having in their um, blood being scared and ready to flee and then selling their brothers and their sisters and their daughters to the white people, yeah, it wouldn't have happened. And all, all of the continent of Africa, they should have been fighting like crazy. No, white man, get the heck away from here. You're trying to steal our stuff. And guess what? They did it anyway because they wanted to help and make some money and get some mirrors so they can see how ugly they was. So when people get up here and won't admit the truth, then, you know, y'all just coming up with some other stuff, some lies and trying to sugarcoat it and all that. You can't tell me that. I, I, I don't go for that. I call you a lie right off the bat. I have no fear with that. I have no problem with that. And then if you want to get or go a little further, I have no problem with that either. I didn't join the army for nothing. 
I didn't fight in a war for nothing. If you think I can, and this going to a specific person, just so you know, if you want to do something, we can do that. You running your mouth, typing your fingers, and, and when I when I have your jaw while you shut, I make sure I break your damn fingers too. Hey, uh, for educational purposes only. <laughs> you know, nah, facts. but I'm 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 just tired of it. I'm tired of the bullshit. When they get up here, they talk that bullshit and be talking about go research it. Bitch, I don't need to research the truth if I already know it. Some bullshit you reading and you you go to the white supremacists and get your talking points and come over here. Oh, uh, but they say they ain't gonna pay you reparations. They say, uh, y'all niggas and, and all y'all came from Africa, and that's what they said. So the fuck what? Everybody lie. Everybody have a chance to lie, and if they will, if they can, they will lie. And a white people from back then, and especially a white supremacist, you're gonna believe they lies. You just as stupid as they is, because they look That's... at black people and think that something is wrong with us. They used to drain pools because somebody put their foot, somebody black put their foot in the pool, and then they went and drained it, thinking hey, that they hey, hey, get on hey, them. Hey, hey, if a or, black person was swimming. In the mm -hmm. white public pool, they would pour bleach in it. And guess yep. what? We said, what the fuck? And we got out the pool. Them Africans would have swam in the bleach bag. Yeah. <laughs> Them African Africans like, said, give me more, white man, man, I think the bleach. <laughs> yes, more bleach. We need more bleach. More. <laughs> more, more. Man, yes. Yes, Zaddy. Give me give me more bleach. Yeah. I want to be like and, um, and kind of on a different subject, Snap, were you yeah. present on that live stream where I pulled up the uh, Arab dude's channel and how he went to Africa and was buying a chick for some goats and playing games with her and shit? Yeah. yeah. Hey, did you know that that same Arab man right now is being held hostage? He has been held hostage going on three weeks now in Haiti. Oh. He okay. went to Haiti with that same fuck okay. shit and said, oh, I'm going to find Haitian gangsters to interview and shit. And he went to the jungles in Haiti. He went to the favelas and Mans has been missing for three weeks. He's being held for $600,000 ransom. So that Arab boy that built his whole YouTube channel going to different parts of Africa and making funny videos and shitting on Africans, he went to Haiti and he's getting a little bit of karma, if you want to call it that. Yeah. And they don't yeah. play over there when they be they be talking shit and you don't understand it and they be like this is what we want and you better make sure they get it because if you don't you go yeah that's just wild well hey snap hang out backstage we're gonna bring you up in just a second uh next person we got coming from the back to the front is k k let the folks know where you're calling in from and what's on your mind Oh hi hi Mike I called in yesterday with Trina remember I know I'm, I'm calling you know San Francisco Bay Area near Sacramento so um I was just wanted to say about that whole thing when they want to tell you that Black Americans are on the bottom um I just pulled this up on my screen D there's a documentary D W documentary I'm sorry I don't know what D W stands for but they do a lot of documentaries and they did a documentary about Black Americans and the wealth of Black Americans and they said that Black Americans in the United States of America. Black Americans are the second richest group after white American people. And this is a fact that a lot of black Americans are not, <clears throat> let's give you a fact that a lot of black Americans are not aware of. Because when we listen to all of the media, they talk about how Asians are doing well as in the Arabs and the Indians and Hispanics and, you know, Caribbeans and Africans, you know, and Africans outperform black Americans. If all these people are doing so great, then how are we the second richest group of people after white American people? And if white American people had stolen so much for us, imagine how much more wealthier we will be. But yes, black Americans are the second um, richest group of people in the United States of America. So I just wanted to say that. Yeah. No, no, I, I thank you for uh, for dropping some gems on us. You know, we got this weird superiority complex with all these immigrants uh, thinking that we're jealous of them and they're uh, outworking us and uh, reaching levels of success. No, you're Uber drivers who can barely make ends meet. That's all. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what, Kay? Um, I'll bring you back in just a second. The last person we got to get a one-on-one -on, -one on before we bring everybody up. It's New Era. New Era, let the folks know where you're calling in from and what do you think about the topic at hand? Hey, yo, that shit is disgusting trying to turn yourself white. But I'm calling in from South Carolina, way of motherfucking Brooklyn. And yeah, every time you show that video, I throw my phone down, bro, and I just be talking to the back of my phone. <laughs> uh, I thought we all, 
I was just enjoying the motherfucking conversation, but I thought hey, we agreed. Bro, with hey, bro, I'm not joking. Every time I put this video up, I put my hand up on the computer monitor to cover the video so that I don't have to see that. It's that sickening for me. Yeah, bro. I got my fucking phone to shot. Every time I see it, I just turn my phone around. I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't my imagine. And she paid for that. She went to a Nigerian spa and paid however much to have them put her in an acid bath <laughs> like the Joker. Ain't that the Joker's origin story that the nigga fell in a vat of acid? <laughs> like, what the yep. fuck are you talking about? And, and shout out, and, wait, and real quick, shout out to Serena Williams. Um, I don't think Serena Williams was actually ever skin bleaching. When I did some research into that, what I found was that Serena Williams posted one photo, and that one photo, she was looking real white, like this chick on the screen. She was looking real white, so she got a lot of backlash from Black Americans, and she deleted that photo and posted another photo and apparently the, the the new photo that she's posted shows that you know she she hasn't done any skin bleaching i think she just had like a really light foundation on that day i don't know what it was but as soon as she posted that light skin it did looking photo she got backlash she deleted it she ain't never put on no ghostly makeup like that again so so yeah i don't i don't, I don't know if she bleached or if, they, if that was just a ton of makeup but she does not look like that right now she does not look like that on the regular so i think it was a ton of makeup because bleaching is not reversible like that i don't know but I yeah. thought we agreed to say that nigga, um, Uncle Ruckus, on a fucking vacation for like two weeks, so we have to listen to that motherfucking Tyler Babble. Mm -hmm. Facts. Quick facts, quick facts. This, this nigga still in the backstage disrespect the woman and shit, talking about case smoking crack and shit. Mm -hmm. And I told that boy about disrespect the woman. Well, you know what? Let's go ahead and bring everybody up. We got K back. We got Trey in the building. We got Snap in the house. We got Millie in the building. We got Dr. R. We got Uncle Ruckus. Uncle Ruckus, what were you saying in the back chat? I said she was speaking crap. I said she was speaking crap. Speaking crap. Why do you think that K is smoking crack? I'm I'm confused. Smoking. She said black. She said black Americans are second to white Americans in terms of wealth. Which is not true. That's what you got about that bit too. That that is not that is not true whatsoever. Then then what evidence do you have to support your claim? Let me let me just let me just make something clear. Asians are above you. No, you're not going to let me just That's make an Africa, clear. Homie. You're not making anything clear by promoting your theories. The sister came up here and cited her sources, and the sources yeah, say Black Americans are the second wealthiest in America. If you're going to say she's smoking crack, what sources do you have to counter hers? Yeah, I've got, I've got sources here. So first of all, it says yeah. Asian households have a median income of 320,000 per household. Whites have 250,000. What is your yeah. source? What are you reading what from? Is your source? From, from P PEW Research Center. It's, it says million. wealth gaps across racial and ethnic groups. PEW yeah. Research Center. Dusty ass, dirty ass immigrants always do this to us. I'm not an immigrant. We help them get over here. I'm not an immigrant. You're in the UK? You immigrate nah, to the UK, shut up. You immigrate to the UK. I'm not an immigrant. So you're an Africa? No. All right then. So you're a fucking immigrant to the UK. I went legally. I went legally. I was a free. So far, your parents are immigrant, then. Your parents immigrated to the UK. British accent. He's got a British accent. Exactly. Accent. His shit is breaking up, y'all. His shit is breaking up, y'all. The other thing I want to oh, speak God. about. Is All right, everybody, hold up, hold up, hold up. We've got quite a few people on the stage. We got to try to make this a pleasant listening experience for our live audience. The only people that I'm going to have unmuted for the time being is going to be Snap, New Era, K, and Bush Baby Uncle Ruckus. So, Bush Baby Uncle Ruckus, you're saying that you found some sources that say that black people don't have the second largest spending power or what? Yes. And what is your source? Uh, PEW Research Center. Okay, and um, and I've got I've got up on here as well. Okay, hold on, hold on. And Kay, um, wait, actually, is Kay still here? Oh yeah, Kay still here. I'm here. Uh, Kay, um, when you were saying that you found something that said that we were like the second largest by wealth, yeah, because you know, I told you that. I remember I told you that I, I, you know, I, I, I heard of you through BSIA's channel. BSIA yeah. did a whole live stream about that documentary because he watched the documentary. But I remember because that same documentary kept popping up on my screen multiple times. I, I didn't 
I'm You're breaking up real bad. We're not talking about spending power. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, now we can, yeah. Um, now we can. Okay, good. I'm near the window. Okay, so um, we're not talking about spending power. We're talking about wealth. And Black Americans are the sec um, second richest group in the United States of America. You cannot compare Asians because they don't have the same numbers we have. That's one. And two, when people talk about Asians having this high income, that's a load of garbage. I am from the San Francisco Bay Area. As far as I know, this part of the country has the largest population of Asians in the United States of America. And you have plenty of Asians that are in tech or have their own businesses and they're doing well. But what people don't realize is that many Asians are simply laborers. You go all through Chinatown, they're working in the kitchens, they're working in the dry cleaners, they're working in the nail salons and just go on and on and on. That's Many of them are just simply laborers and they're not doing that well. They live in these small little one room um, apartments in San Francisco where they share with their families. I've seen this with my own eyes. I've been in these buildings and you know, people like to hype up Asian intellect. But if you take a look at China, the name, the number one reason why China is so power became powerful and wealthy has nothing to do with intellect or universities or high IQs. It's simply that they had like probably what the largest population in the world for for one country, which was what like some years or decades ago, they already had one billion. They were not I don't think there was any countries in that in the world that had one billion people. But they had one billion people, therefore they had a massive workforce that no one else had. That's how they became powerful was simply their labor pe the, the, their labor class. And nobody thinks about that. I started thinking about that when I say we always talk about Asian intellect and how smart they are. And then I, I, when I started looking around like with reality, I said, wait a minute, a whole lot of Asians are working in the Korean nail salon, the Korean beauty supply, the you buy, we fry fish places, the convenience stores. I've seen this since I was a kid. So, you know, no, they're not the, they're not the black Americans are the second. And let's keep it a bug because America. I grew up in the <laughs> suburbs and um, a lot of them Asians have single family households. A lot of them Asian men abandoned their wives and children. And oh, you got I a single, that. yeah, you hey, got yo, a single Uncle Rick, Asian that in, in the back chat like a bitch to say what's your chest. Yeah, 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 when it's your turn, you can say what your chest, Uncle Rekha. Stop with the private chat. But yeah, I've experienced a lot of Asian single mothers working in nail salons to make ends meet for their Asian babies. So yeah, yeah, I, I don't know about all these stats he's talking about. But um, hold on, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on real quick. Um, everybody go on mute. Um, Dr. R, you can take yourself off mute real quick. What were you trying to say? You know, it's even worse. Like, Rosamac Rezum does not even know that um asian asian women hate their own men that own like a hundred thousand and they're going for like white men and they've got the highest rate of marrying out and self-hatred and the cambodians the cambodians are not doing so great like and the vietnamese because when i think of cambodian and vietnamese they are working in m manual labor jobs and the cambodians are doing all the gang bangings and there's a lot of asian gangs with the monks in minnesota and all these places you need to look into these people and I believe that Razabani should look into this. Well, you know what? I don't think I don't think it's a matter of Razaman needs to look into anything. Uh, we've already spent probably a hundred hours educating him on Black American history and culture. He just has a lot of disdain for Black. That's all it is. He just has a lot of disdain when we talk about the African identity crisis. He is an African who has an identity crisis. I mean, he was on my show just the other day speaking very candidly about how he used to do exactly what this bitch is doing in the video. He used to take these bleach baths and he used to try to scrub the blackness off his skin. Ladies and gentlemen, you may not be privy to this information. You may not be that familiar with Uncle Ruckus, also known as Razaman, also known as Tether Bush, baby. But let me just catch you up to speed, okay? When this man is up on my panel talking all this contempt and vitriol against black Americans, he was like that African girl in the chemical bathtub. But don't take my word for it. Listen to his confession. I used to bleach my skin. Mm -mm -mm. So, you know, this really speaks to the work that we're doing here on Mike TV because I think we are successfully re-educating this tether known as Raza. We also nicknamed him Uncle Ruckus because he was such a good tether, right? But now the tether's confessing that he was in so deep, he was as alt-right with the tether bullshit as can be, he actually bleached his skin. Damn, 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 damn. But 
maybe there's hope for him. He says that he stopped. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's hear from Razaman and see what caused him to start bleaching his skin. Was he trying to look like white folks or was he trying to look like black Americans? Razaman, please tell us the story. Okay, well, first of all, when I was a child, I had to suffer from self-hatred. So I hated the fact that I was black and I wanted to be white. That's the truth. When we got a Bush baby up on Mike TV's panel talking about uh, fuck shit about us black Americans, listen to what he just said. When he was a kid, he was bleaching his skin because he was ashamed to be black. He wished he was white. And hey, don't forget, we think the nigga 45 acting like he 18. Come on. So when he's up here with all, all right. this vitriol, with all this xenophobic contempt for us, Really, it's going to go in one ear and out the other from now on because we don't take motherfuckers like this seriously. You was bleaching your skin. You got an identity crisis. And we supposed to take what you say with value? No, 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 no. Millie, Dr. R, y'all manned him from the UK, right? Listen to how your, your fellow brother in the UK was bleaching his skin. Yeah, y'all going to have to take this L in the UK. Fact that you were black and you wanted to be white. And do you think that the I mean, you grew up in the UK is what motivated these thoughts? <laughs> can I, so can I when just you think back to your mother who specifically went to the UK to birth you so that you can be a UK citizen, an anchor baby of a literal definition, um, when you look back on that, do you wish that you were born and raised in Africa or are you still grateful to be in the UK because of how destabilized Africa is? Yes, second option. Speak up a little bit, sir. It sounds like you're a bit far from the microphone. Second option. The second option. All right, well, sir, you have the floor. Let us know at what age did these thoughts develop? Did you deal with uh, media that you saw on TV that told you that white was the modicum of greatness and attractiveness? Did you deal with uh, bullying or racism from, from white peers? Is it something within the UK, Black African community, which is in general, you guys have this self-hatred that you have to rid yourself of? You have the floor, sir. Give us this candid confession, if you will. Uh, when I was younger, I used to watch a lot of TV shows. So you start when I was like a small child, I was like four years old and whatnot. Because I was watching TV programs, which had lots of white people. And it was not black people inside it. So I felt like I couldn't relate to it. So I always wanted to be white. For that reason. He wanted to be white. Before. Pretend that you have came to a holy temple, a church of, of black natives who welcome you and accept you with open arms if you are willing to confess your previous tether ways and atone for your tetherous sins. And now you're stepping into the confessional with Sir Reverend Pastor, the Honorable Mike TV. And I just say, tell me what's on your heart. I'm sure that this may be the first time you've ever told somebody this. I'm not sure if there's people that you can confide in. I'm not sure if you're in front of, uh, if you've ever had the chance to be in front of uh, 70 plus black folks from America who are willing to accept you if you just come clean and let us know how deep the programming was and what did it take for you to rid yourself of it. You have the floor, sir. Like I said, obviously, when I was going around the world, obviously, and obviously uh, in a black community, there was like a lot of violence and whatnot. And the way how white families are portrayed as like perfect, peaceful people and, and such. And how they portrayed in the media, obviously, I was like, I'm thinking, why can I be that? And I wanted to be that. And then when I got older, at a certain age, when I got older, uh, I suffered from eczema. So obviously, I went online and obviously I found some like uh, remedies and whatnot. And I'd overuse medication, which would end up bleaching my skin. And on top of that, I would take bleach for as well. Nigga, stop lying. I got eczema too. I ain't never been prescribed no bleach for my skin because I got asthma. Uh, they, they tell you to rub some cells some blue on that shit, not no bleach. Mm. When, I, when, I, when I got older, so when I got to like, Secondary school. So I got asthma all over my face. I ain't never picked no bleach on my shit. 14 is when uh, my mindset switched because I saw a lot of the injustice happening in Africa through the media when I was watching YouTube channels, stories from my parents and whatnot. And then it maybe changed my mind totally. I don't have like a full 360 degree. Mm, I see, I see. And sir, I've got to ask him, um, are you on speakerphone right now? Yeah. Uh, I should, I should, I should be my yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and a lot of people call in and they don't really have a lot of media training or, or know better or anything. But but yes, guys, when you call in, if you can have headphones, that would be preferential so we can hear you the best. So, sir, um, go ahead and grab some headphones real quick. When you come back. Um, can you hear me now? Yep. Um, are the headphones plugged in? Yeah, I'll switch the headphones right now. Damn, you sound the exact same. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Um, either way, you're saying that you watch a lot of media. You saw that white people's community seemed to be successful, peaceful. Um, you didn't really have that. But, um, sir, this is the first time that I've heard that you can overdose on medication to bleach your skin. I thought you have to like physically rub skin bleaching ointment on you. But yeah, you're saying I, did, you, I, did. You... I did. Okay. So, so when you say overdose, you're saying you rubbed a lot of the bleach on you. Yeah. Yeah. And what was this bleaching routine like? Did you like bleach in the morning, bleach in the afternoon? Was it multiple times per day? So I can... Oh, we're going to hear about the regimen, y'all. Let, let me go ahead and take it off 1.5 times speed. Let me put it normal speed for y'all to hear this motherfucker skin bleaching regimen. Because, God damn it, when we see this video, Ooh, we can't watch Ooh. it. 
when we can't watch the video, when we can't stomach it, when we say, damn, this bitch is in a chemical bleach bathtub, Rosamond was doing the same shit. Listen to the regimen. Which I'd use in the morning. And then I go and take a bleach bath. And then I take a normal bath. And then I put the cream on again. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is is that is that all in the morning? No, bit no. So obviously throughout the day. Obviously, I'll go to before in the morning, then I'll come back from school and have another bath. And okay, wait, wait, hold on, no, no, it's time to time. I'm, I'm I'm trying to understand um the program or the regimen, if you will. So it sounds like you said in the morning you rub the bleach on your skin, then when you come back from school, you take a bleach bath, was it? Yeah. And when you say a beach black a beach bath, are you like literally just pouring in chemical bleach into your bath? Yeah. Just pouring in chemical bleach into his bath, y'all. He had a 10-year-old little boy coming home from school taking a bleach bath because he's ashamed to be an African man. Raza man, hindsight being 2020. I would never try to use somebody's confession to shame them, but God damn it, when you speak so much vitriol against our community and we <laughs> learn that you have such an identity crisis just four short years ago, you were taking bleach baths. Raza, what do you have to say for yourself? Shame. Go shut up. Anyways, well, first of all, what I want to say is that as, as time goes on, people grow up and people mature, they, their opinions are allowed to change. If you, know what I'm you don't. Because, shut up. I'm pretty sure since you were a teenager, you've not kept the same ideals and thoughts and obviously made mistakes which you I sure don't on. but I fucking learn from elders and shit every time somebody tries to yeah, judge your dumb ass saying you don't <laughs> fucking learn I'm not, I'm not even talking to you but you're still talking anyways man but obviously I said like I said since you were a child obviously hey. you made mistakes right, hold on hold on no 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 interruptions let's hear what Raza has to say hindsight being 2020 what you gotta say Raza obviously as you grow older you realize the mistakes you've made and you're allowed to change and not to grow up and become mature so I managed to overcome that issue to become the person I'm now and obviously, you could say the same for yourself that when you were a child, Uncle Ruckus, my, I Uncle Ruckus, it. I understand where you're coming from, but this is a new level of depravity here. Uh, this isn't, oh, you were just a childish, immature person. You had a mental illness. Yes, maybe when I was younger, I did some immature shit. And when I grew up, I stopped being so immature. But none of us used to take bleach baths multiple times per day, sir. There's levels to this shit. What are you talking about? This wasn't just you being a juvenile and then you reached adulthood. This was a sick identity crisis, was it not? I'll say so. So if you had such a sick identity crisis just four short years ago, why should we take anything that you have to say about our community or our culture? Why should we put any value on that? Because I speak based on statistics and I speak based on facts. I don't speak based on emotions because obviously as of right now, the only person who gives me facts and actually statistics is you. The rest of them are just emotional and just spew bullshit about how the white man just lies. But you Wait, actually hold on, come hold, with on, facts. hold on, Uncle Ruckus. And, and thank you for acknowledging I come with facts and receipts. But but remind us, Uncle Ruckus, how old are you again? 80. So again, guys, when you hear this African up here talking cash money shit about us, he's an 80. He's a teenager. He's a fucking teenager who four short years ago was bleaching his skin. And now this teenager is calling in to us adult black Americans to try to tell us what's what. <laughs> All right, sir. All right. He has so much facts and so much knowledge. Lord, um, you know what? When I was 18, I thought I was much smarter than I was too. <laughs> but you know what? When I was 18, um, I was also a realtor handling people's largest financial transaction of their life. So I guess I was pretty smart as a teenager. But but you, Raza, I don't know. I don't know. Um, we're going to bring everybody back. I just wanted the people to get properly acquainted with you. And chat, I want you to realize when y'all hear the fuck shit that Raza Man is saying, he is a teenager that used to bleach his skin for several years. Dr. R, since you're also in the UK, what do you think about this? Is this sick or is this sick? Well, um, well, I don't know what to say, but all I'm going to say to you, my brother, I'm not taking my L. He's taking his people's tribe and country that that their L. And um, Mike, I think Rosa needs to see this. Wait, what? Wait, what? Check this. Check the link that I sent you. I think Rosa needs to see this. 
Okay, you sent me a link. Let me see if I can pull up that link you sent me. Um, give me just a moment here. So the link you well, sent me Hold on. It says the fertility clinic in Ghana urges couples to have biracial babies for the better future of Africa. Damn. Damn. So you Africans really have an identity crisis. You are, you guys are trying to promote having mixed kids for a better future. Um, Y'all shouldn't stop pooping in the streets. Y'all shouldn't stop sniffing glue. Y'all shouldn't stop genocide and genital mutilation. Y'all should have some mixed babies to fix Africa. What? Wait, thanks to modern science, one can have a half-cast or mixed-race baby without necessarily having to marry or have sexual intercourse with a person of a different race. Damn, following in the steps of artificial insemination, a venture to create a new society, a half-cast world on the African continent, is burgeoning in Ghana's capital. Damn! As ridiculous as it may seem, considering that the term half-caste denigrates one's status in society, especially in Europe and the Americas, advocates of this enterprise believe the creation of this breed of people of biracial identities positions Africa for a better future? Oh, y'all are sick in the brain. Y'all are sick in the fucking brain. The way that you fix Africa... <laughs> what? Hey, everybody can feel free to unmute themselves and uh, speak freely. I, I ain't never heard no shit like this before. Well, I would say go first. Yo, Mike, I don't support it. If they're going to fix Africa with mixed ass babies, Mike, you 25%. You should have fixed America folks in all the hoods, my nigga. That's all I want to say. If mixed baby folks supposed to fix the fucking world. No, no, no. Fuck that shit. And I ain't donating no sperm neither. So they can have no mixed ass. I'm cool. I'm good. Oh, oh, oh. Man, oh man, no sir. I could have a hundred people going over there, Mike. <laughs> I'm cool. Come on, y'all. Is there an identity crisis or is there an identity yes. crisis? Yes, yes, there is. is. Rosalind, yeah, I'm sorry, I hate him so much, but guess what? I hate him too. Fuck, boy, ass motherfucker. Damn, this is sad, <laughs> y'all. This is sad. Mm -mm -mm. That's sad. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're coming up on three hours of live content for you guys here on this fine Saturday. We're going to start doing a little round robin, providing closing remarks and winding down the show. Unless you guys want an encore, if you want an encore, you know what to do. Hit the cash app, hit the PayPal, throw five on it. These streams go as long as the audience deems. The average length of these weekend broadcasts, the average length is about eight or nine hours. Sometimes it's been as short as three hours. Sometimes it's been as long as 12 hours. So the average is about eight or nine hours. But we'll see how long we're going to go today. Um, while we wait to see if we're going to go into an encore or not, let me do a little bit of a round robin. You know, so many people speak in. Uh, so some people got bad mics and stuff. Dr. R is calling in from work. I don't know if he works in a factory or what. So let's go ahead and do it uh, one at a time. We'll start with Uncle Ruckus. Uncle Ruckus, um, what do you have to say about this global African identity crisis? Not only are they bleaching, you yourself was bleaching at one point, but now Ghana is promoting that people artificially inseminate themselves to have mixed babies to fix Africa? What well, are your first thoughts? Of, let me say it isn't necessary that identity crisis because we know who our identities are. We are Ghanaian people. We've got different tribes. We've got different cultures. We've got different languages. We've got different practices. Maybe you're, if you say you want to change our identities, that's that's a different argument altogether. And also, this is a uh, hold up. And yeah, Misha Love, talk about it. They want us to be African so badly, but they don't even like themselves. They want us to be Africans, but they trying to be white. They try to be half caste. They try to be everything but African. They're fleeing from the continent of Africa, but we are Africans and we should go back to Africa. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. And yes, a hundred years from now, apparently Africa is going to be a white continent. It's going to be just as white as Europe because the Africans think the best way to fix the future of Africa is by having light skin. How the fuck? How the fuck does having light skin fix anything in Africa? That shit is crazy. Hold up. I got to go back. As ridiculous as it may seem, considering that the term half caste denigrates one status in society, especially in Europe and the Americas, advocates of this enterprise believe the creation of this breed of people of biracial identities positions Africa for a better future. 
What? Half Caste World is founded to transform Africa into the land of riches and beauty, the land of every man's dreams. We believe life began in Africa and will end in Africa. What the fuck does that even mean? Life is going to end in Africa? What? What, the, what does that even mean? What the fuck? We're going to have a global catastrophe and all die in Africa? When it, what? The campaign is targeting both African couples and single women who want to give birth to half caste babies the opportunity of a lifetime at a relatively affordable cost. Oh, Lord. Somebody is making a bag off of your identity crisis by selling you the <laughs> the fantasy of having biracial children and they already know they don't know white people want to fuck them <laughs> so they had to make sure to throw in um this is uh following in the steps of artificial insemination white folks don't want to fuck on no africans like that so they gotta artificially inseminate themselves lord oh lord oh lord jesus 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 Mm -mm -mm. Well, Rosa Man, go ahead and finish your thoughts. What do you think as a person uh, me, who has an African identity crisis theirself? Let me just say, most Ghanaians cannot even afford that. And let me just say, this, isn't, this is not backed by the government. It's backed by a different separate organization. That I'm pretty sure there's plenty of radical organi organizations in uh, America for black people that advocate radical ideas like BLM. Which you, which I can literally pull up and show you the different things that they write there. So obviously it doesn't reflect the black communities, the black communities, the whole in Ghana. It does, the government has not said this, have they? It's an organisation. So it's not from the government. It doesn't mean all, all Ghanaians are back to that. So the fact that you're saying that all Ghanaians think like this is very stupid. I'm not saying all of you guys think like this. I just think this speaks to your psyche, the fact that this is even something that's being promoted. Like, uh, it's all not, right. It's an idea shared by a group of people. It doesn't mean it's shared by all Ghanaians as a whole. That even in God, right. even in hey, hey, hey. what do you know about Ghanaians? You're born and raised in the UK, right? <laughs> Come on now. You said you only go back to Ghana to visit for a couple of weeks once in a blue moon. All right. All right. And Robert, thank you for the PayPal. I appreciate it, Robert. If you guys want to dip into an encore, if you want at least another hour of live entertainment, then we got to get a few more people to throw five on it. We already got Robert being the catalyst. If we can get a few more people to pitch in, we'll go ahead and go into an encore. But obviously, Uncle Ruckus is in denial. He's, oh, but but that's not all gunning. That's not all. Um, Dr. Yeah. R, what are your thoughts? Can, can, I, can, I, can I say something importantly that, <laughs> that needs to be raised up importantly? Why, why is it that black American women they're very, very, very loyal, and they would not. They're more loyal than any other ethnic group in America, and that's a fact. And I did research on this, but I can't Stupid. say the same. I can't say the same with um, certain African women because I've been outside of London, and I've seen like African women. I don't want to mention their nationalities, being with white men, and you got some cultures in Africa that are open to dating white people. So you realize that the African women are a lot more swirling than Black American women, huh? No, but what I'm saying, I'll say the 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 the, the American term, um, bedwenches, like the bedwenches. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, mm -hmm. like like like, I'm not saying that's all of Africa, but I'm saying in certain parts that's heavily colonized, like even Black Black American folk being um gone through slavery for 400 years, I bet those folk. Are on fucking code and they don't fuck like that, if you know what I mean. Hey, brother, I, I know where you're coming from, and it's not even that African women want white men necessarily. Yes, that's the goal, but they want anything other than Africans. As long as you're not an African man, they want you. I mean, we already know the China man is going over there and having a whole lot of bastard children. Oh, because. Mark, let me ask a question. Yeah. 
Uh, it's not your turn. Right now we're doing a round robin because I think we are going to be wrapping up the stream here shortly. Uh, Christopher, thank you for getting... Uh, I can't talk right now. Damn. I can't talk right now because I just saw that we got the craziest tether ever backstage. We got Chuck Wu and Gigway, Bush Baby himself backstage. Oh, Lord, just as we about to wrap it up, we got Chuck Wu going in. Oh, shit. You're about to say something about Chris. It's going to get interesting. Uh, Christopher, thank you for the cash app, brother. Yeah, we need Who's a few more people. Hold on, y'all. We, we need a everybody go on mute. Everybody, and somebody got an echo too. If anybody got the YouTube video playing, matter of fact, it's Trey. Trey, you have an echo going on. So if you got the YouTube video playing, go ahead and pause that. Lord, oh Lord. Christopher, thank you again for the Give me a minute, bro. I got five for you too. Okay, okay. Uh new era is coming through with five. If we get a few people to put five on it, we're going to an encore. You know how this is. I'm your humble servant. This is a crowdfunded operation. I ain't getting no monies from YouTube. They demonetize you, boy. I be banging on them tethers too hard. So I thank y'all for supporting New Black Media. Um, let's continue with this round robin, and then we'll bring uh, Chuck Wu up. Uh, Millie, what do you think about this? Uh, what do you think about the African identity crisis? What do you think about your fellow African in the UK bleaching his skin for years? Um, ah, gosh, this is a lot, a lot to discuss. But what's your your overall sentiment? Well, I think we're all entitled to going through certain phases. Uh, I didn't like do that, but I must have done something equally crazy and erratic. And, you know, like I said, living in the country like the UK can mess with our heads. So, like, I wouldn't like condemn him. I'll just put my arm around his shoulder and say, "Look, man, it's so I at least if you're not, you stop doing it. Okay, then you know I'm happy that you stop doing it. But yeah, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't have aspersion to any black person who bleaches who who bleaches their skin because I kind of understand the origin behind it is something a lot bigger than you and I it's like the propaganda you know when we like like he's like I said he saw the tv he saw that then you know greatness was identified with him like see me I grew up in a place oh called no F no no Millie there's still levels to this shit case in point I'm born and raised in America. Hold on, y'all. I'm born and raised in America, right? I grew up middle class, slightly upper middle class, always in the burbs, right? Mostly surrounded by white people or foreigners, right? I grew up, you know, early adolescent years. You know, I was born in 94, right? For frame of reference, I'm born in 94. So I'm starting to, you know, come into adolescence in like the early 2000s. And what's popular in the early 2000s? What is the the, the ideal beauty standards? Uh, Britney Spears, uh, blonde hair, white bitches, right? So God damn it, at a certain point in time, when I was a young kid, I thought that these white Barbie doll looking females that the media promotes to us all the time, I thought that was attractive until I grew up and realized, nah, that ain't it like that. That ain't it at all. Now I can realize me being young, taking some programming and ridding myself of that programming. But God damn it, I wasn't 10 years old rubbing bleach cream in the morning, coming home from school, taking a bleach bath, then taking a normal bath. Then before I go to bed, rubbing on more bleach cream and doing that for four years. Come on. I was, it's levels to the shit, y'all. Hey, yo, Mike, I got a question for Millie after you done too, bro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Millie, I'm sorry for interrupting. Go ahead, Millie. Go ahead. It's just levels to this shit, brother. I'm sorry. It's just uh, levels. But it's kind of like, you know, I don't think he was trying to look white. I think maybe in his mind, in his own perception, it's been like Lil' Kim. She doesn't, she didn't do it to try and look white. In her mindset, her perception of beauty was, you know, she had that sort of perception of beauty. I mean, imagine having... Hold on, hold on. First of all, first of all, Trey, I gotta, I gotta warn you for one final time, Trey. You've got uh, Echo going on in the background. If you're going to be a part of the broadcast, not only do you have to stay on mute when it's not your turn to speak, but you got to get rid of that Echo. Uh, you've got the YouTube video playing somewhere. Pause the YouTube video. Uh, but Millie, why don't you go ahead and hear it straight from the horse's mouth? Uh, ask him directly. Uh, he's on the stage. Ask him. Why was he bleaching? Was he bleaching to look like a white person? Ask him. Okay, yeah. I, I, I doubt it, but okay, I'll ask him personally. Okay. Do, do he's here, ask. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's oh, here. Okay, we don't need to. We don't need to theorize it. We don't need to. You know, uh, uh, think was it this? Was it that? Ask him straight up, and let's see what his answer is. Okay. Were you bleaching your skin because you felt that was um, like that was going to make you look white? I wanted to look lighter, not necessarily look white. Yeah, that's what that's exactly what I was saying. Is that people don't bleach their skin to look white; they just want to lighten their skin because that's their perception of attractiveness. Hey, I mean to cut you off, Millie, but last time I could have sworn he said he wanted to be white when he confessed. That's exactly. I said I want. I said I, I said I wanted to marry and have kids with white women. I never said I wanted to actually be white. Try and look physically white myself. 
Hey, yes, you did, bro. You definitely said that. So I, don't I said I, I said I wanted. To, I said I wanted to lie to skin. And you then said, I said you I wanted, wanted to... to be white. You said you hated that you were African and you wanted to be white. What are you talking I, about? I said I wanted to get lighter skin, then marry a white woman, and then have black children who be practically I white. Guess you I guess don't, don't think you got that part That's of the fucking dream too, Mike. Hey, hey, hey. Um, yeah, 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 New Era. They, they think that I'm called the king of receipts for no goddamn reason, apparently. So let's go ahead and run the footage back one more time. Chat, I want you to listen closely does he say that he wanted to be white or not nah? his skin damn 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 but maybe there's hope for him he says that he stopped so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls let's hear from Razaman and see what caused him to start bleaching his skin was he trying to look like white folks or was he trying to look like black americans Razaman, please tell us the story okay well first of all when i was a child i had to suffer from self-hatred so I hated the fact that I was black and I wanted to be white. That's a Damn, we don't even got to play no more of the video. <laughs> Shit, we don't even got to play no more of the video. That's it. That's all. That, that's done. Or his opening statement is I suffered from a lot of self hatred as a child. I hated being black and I wanted to be white. God damn it. All right. I can't say fucking rim okay. shit. Okay. So, 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 Raza, why are you saying something different than what you previously said? I never said that I wanted to bleach my skin until I turned white. I said I wanted to be white. You see the difference there? Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. He didn't say that he wanted to bleach his skin to turn white. He said he wanted to be white, and him wanting to be white was a precursor for him bleaching his skin. So what the fuck are you talking about right now? What are you talking about? Oh, Lord. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to unmute everybody, and I want everybody to play along, even Trey. Trey, I don't know if your, your echo is fixed. Matter of fact, I think I still hear the echo, but even Trey can chime in. Everybody go off mute real quick. Dr. R, unmute yourself. Millie, unmute yourself. And, and let's all just, just practice the exercise real quick. Uh, Dr. R, uh, unmute yourself. Now, everybody in unison. I need everybody in unison to say shame, okay? We're going to say shame, and we're going to say it five times. Are you ready? Shame. Shame. We have properly shamed this man. Shame all the way. Shame right. on him. And Trey, hopefully you can fix that echo, boy. That, that echo is killing me, Trey. I'm just going to go ahead and kick you from the stage. Click the link and call back in again. As long as you got that echo fixed, God damn, that echo is killing me. But yes, chat, shame, 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 shame. shame. Check your cat chat too, Brody. I appreciate you, but he gives us a candid confession. He says early on, the first line he says was what? Changing his skin. Was he trying to look like white folks or was he trying to look like black Americans? Razaman, please tell us the story. Okay, well, first of all, when I was a child, I had to suffer from self hatred. So I hated the fact that I was black and I wanted to be white. As a child, I suffered from self hatred. I hated that I was black and I wanted to be white. But he wants us to believe he wasn't bleaching his skin to try to appear white. All right, all right. Raza, what do you have to say for yourself? Go ahead and unmute. First of all, that there's a clear difference in the language. But can I ask a question? Are, are you asking me if you can ask me a question? Yeah, can I, can I ask a question? I mean, before you ask me a question, I'd like to know what you got to say for yourself because you clearly stated that you wished you were white. It was a misinformation language, but obviously I didn't clarify exactly what, what, what the, it was. It no wasn't misinformation in language. Nigga, you're in the UK speaking the Queen's English. We also speak the Queen's English. We are speaking the same language. There was no break in communication. You said I suffered from self-hatred. I hate being black and I wanted to be, you know what, just, just for for receipt's sake, let's hear what he says right after that. Let's hear what he follows that up with. Razaman, please tell us the story. Okay, well, first of all, when I was a child, I had to suffer from self-hatred. So I hated the fact that I was black and I wanted to be white. That's the truth. It's simple as that. And he followed it up with, that's the truth. It's as simple as that. So God damn it, if that's the truth and it's simple as that, then why are you trying to deflect now? But let's see what else he says. You hated the fact that you were black and you wanted to be white. And do you think that the environment that you grew up in in the UK is what motivated these thoughts? Most likely. So when you think back to your mother who specifically went to the UK to birth you so that you can be a UK citizen, an anchor baby of a literal definition, um, 
when you look back on that, do you wish that you were born and raised in Africa or are you still grateful to be in the UK because of how destabilized Africa is? Yes, I can Damn. So the next statement was that he's glad he was born and raised in the UK, even though he suffered harsh oppression and mental programming that caused him to bleach his skin, he wouldn't have it any other way. As long as he ain't in Africa, y'all. As long as he ain't in Africa. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Well, you know what, guys? Um, we're going to go ahead and officially dip into an encore. Let me go ahead and acknowledge the folks that have hit the cash app, hit the PayPal, and then we're going to bring uh, Chuck Wu, Igwe, Bush Baby up. <laughs> oh, Lord. Ebo man. Who wants to be a black American so damn bad? Uh, let me see who we got throwing in on it. Uh, Francis, thank you for the contribution. And Francis, I don't know if you were present earlier when that Jafakin was trying to call you out. You Francis, click the link, Francis. Tell Mike how us Jamaicans aren't African, Francis. Yeah, I don't know if you were here for that, Francis, but that was wild. That was wild. Um, New Era, thank you for the contribution, brother. Tamika, thank you for the contribution, darling. Big Cuz, thank you for hitting that cash app, brother. Our Brand, thank you for the support. All right, and we got Chuck Wu Igwe coming from the back to the front. Chuck Wu, let the folks know where you're calling in from and what do you think about the topic at hand? The topic at hand, of course, being um, Africans are so ashamed they're bleaching their skin tone to become white. What say you? Uh, salute. Um, uh, interesting topic. Um, I have a theory. Uh, Before we get into your theory, the first question I posed is where are you calling in from? Florida. All right, Florida. And what's your theory? I think that this skin bleaching is something to do with white supremacy or sexual selection. Somehow, bleaching your skin either makes you feel more attractive to the opposite sex or helps you to blend in or something. I think it's hold just on, some on, kind on. of time a psychological time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. Um, I think you just made two two points or two theories. You said that the skin bleaching is due to, to sexual up. sexual selection and what else? I, I, this is my theory. It's either something to do with sexual selection, like... The person who's bleaching their skin, they feel like they'll be, they'll make themselves more attractive. I get that. I was asking the you, opposite. what's the second theory? The first theory was sexual selection, and what was the other one? White supremacy. So, so your theories are the skin like bleaching think, is due to white supremacy. It's a psychological and damage. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Your theories are that the skin bleaching is due to white supremacy. And it's due to sexual selection, but you as an African man, for whatever reason, refuse to acknowledge that it stems from an African identity crisis. This motherfucker said everything but, oh, Africans have an identity crisis. He said, yes, yeah, due to sexual selection, it's due to some white supremacy, but you're negating, you're refusing to acknowledge the apparent African identity crisis. Do you believe that Africans have an identity crisis? Yes or no? Well, no. Because, well, I think this is something that... Well, is well, like well, a, well, it's a yes or a no. What was no, your answer? I, I, black Americans have a bigger identity crisis than... Oh, than Lord. Here we go. Here we go. He had to shift the blame to black Americans. He couldn't help himself. We got a Nigerian bitch in a Nigerian spa chemically peeling off her skin. He says, no, Africans don't have an identity crisis, but you know what? You black Americans have a bigger one. Um, Chuck Wu, let us know how we have a bigger identity crisis when we don't bleach our skin like you Africans. Easy. Uh, black Americans will do things like tether themselves to Native Americans, uh, call, say, oh, I'm not black, I'm Indian, I'm not black, I'm this. Let's play devil's advocate. I know you refuse to acknowledge the black natives, me being one of them, I can turn on my camera and show my citizenship paperwork and everything, but that's neither here nor there. Let's play devil's advocate and let's say black people are running around pretending to be native when they're not. 
There's levels to this shit. That's still not as much as that identity crisis as sitting in a chemical bathtub, peeling or scrubbing off your black skin. Lord, oh, Lord, how are you going to compare some black folks claiming native to an African bitch in a Nigerian spa scraping the blackness off her skin? Lord, how do we have the worst identity crisis? Chuck will explain it. One is clearly worse than the other. It all has a, the same root. It's to do with um, a psychological damage brought about by white supremacy. These people are trying to blend in to either a, a, a majority white nation or to they feel more attractive. This they're trying to blend into a majority white nation when they're in Africa, a continent that is majority black. They're in countries on a black continent on a black continent, in a black country, surrounded by black people, but you think that they're bleaching their skin to fit in with whites? That don't make no sense. Well, I, I'm, I would try to broaden the scope to encompass black people in all nations, but here's... Yes, I, I know you want us to share the blame of you African identity crisis having ass motherfuckers, but we're not holding that L. We're not holding that at all. And you're no, trying but... to equate some black people claiming native lineage. You're trying to say that that's worse than a Nigerian scrubbing off her skin. That don't make no sense, Playboy. It does make sense because there's colorism in, in black America, as you well know. You being a mulatto, you should know this very well. Um, so in black... You don't even know the correct terminology. I am not a mulatto. Actually, the correct terminology on the census, I think they would have called me an octoroon, okay? I got like 20% European DNA. That's not a mulatto, playboy. Try again. Okay, you're half a white man, whatever you want to call it. 20% isn't half, 50% is half. Why are you up here projecting so damn hard, playboy? You up here projecting like a motherfucking peep game, y'all. I literally play the footage of the Africans chemically peeling their skin. He says, but wait, you black Americans have a worse identity crisis because you guys claim you're native. And, and Mike, you're half white. You're a mulatto. Sir, stop deflecting and projecting. Why do you fail to acknowledge that Africans have an obvious identity crisis? Here, here's what you're missing. Okay, so the re and you know what? It is so hard for me to listen to him spout his nonsense without interrupting. So Chuck Wu, help me help you. Give me just a moment. I'm going to pull up a timer, and I'm just going to give you five minutes to speak freely. Lord, it's so hard not to interject and correct you when you when you spout nonsense. But but I'm gonna try my hard. And actually, we'll do two minutes because five minutes is too long for you tethers. We, we try to give the Jamaican five minutes, and then that was too long for him. Will you give you two minutes? Give me just a second. Let me go ahead and get the timer pulled up. Good lord, good lord. Here we go. All right, Chuck. Will you have the floor? All right. So uh, it, it, this is the case. It appears to be the case that black males have a preference for lighter skinned women. This preference for lighter skinned women means that, you know, lighter skinned women are more likely to find a, a husband, to, to find a boyfriend, things of that nature. I think that's one of the, the pillars that's holding this behavior in place, a sexual selection. So, it seems to be the case that black women feel more feminine and more attractive to men when they lighten their skin. This is why they do this. And you, this is, hold on. We got to pause the time. Be more specific. Africans aren't black. Africans that move to the UK or to America aren't black. Black is colloquially referring to black Americans. So if you're talking about African women, Say African. Stop saying black. Stop trying to put us under some global banner of blackness that does not exist. You're talking about Africans, right? The OMB puts us together, so I'm going to use the OMB. I don't care about the OMB. You're talking about African women, right? There's black people all over the world who do this. We're talking about Africans. My title does not say blacks are so ashamed they're bleaching their skin to become white. My title says Africans are so ashamed they're bleaching their skin to become white. So when you say that black women are lightening their skin, you're talking about Africans, right? You're very narrowly focusing a global phenomenon. That's uh, This is a global phenomenon that's specific to Africa.
There's no black Americans taking bleach baths. There's no black Americans selling bleach cream. That's something specific to the Caribbean and Africans. So again, either you're going to speak about Africans and call them what they are, Africans, or you're going to leave because I ain't going to let you uh, lump us in with some fucking Africans by trying to say we're all black and you're just talking about black people. No. Well, we're talking about point, Africans. Are are you ready to my, discuss Africans and their identity crisis or not? Well, in my point of view, Black Americans are just Africans who. Don't. Are you willing to discuss the African identity crisis or not? How about this? Go fuck yourself, fucking faggot. <laughs> <laughs> the tether got put in a box and he couldn't handle it. Oh, oh, oh! No, I ain't gonna lie. That shit was funny as fuck. Here we go. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Hey, he calls in so much. I was able to put together an hour long compilation of every time he's God called to try to insert himself into our reparations and claim he's a black American because <laughs> his anchor baby mama moved him to America, born and raised in Nigeria since he was five, located to America, and now he's black and we all black. He hey, yo, Mike, check this out, though. Oh, I'm fucking on, dead. Keep game. He refused to acknowledge that Africans specifically have an identity crisis. He tried to make us share the blame. There ain't no sharing the blame, nigga. And you ain't gonna try to equate black people claiming Native American heritage. You ain't gonna make the false equivalency and compare that to Africans taking chemical bleach baths. Good lord, good lord. We triggered the tether and he oh, ran off. Shit. So guess what, guys? Guess what? He's, he's obsessed with my... He's been calling in for six months now, so he'll be back. Hey, yo, Mike, check this out. He called you a half a white man, right? Real. You better let hey, me wait, see you. I'm going to make a question real oh, quick. One mic, one mic, several people up here, one at a time. Oh, uh, yo, Mike, check this out. The nigga called you a half a white man, right? But ain't this nigga mama a half a fucking American or supposed to be? But she don't even claim to be American? He, he claims her fucking... mama is 20% FBA, but she claims to be Bahamian, but Chuck Wu thinks he should get reparations because his mama might be half black American. Yeah, I know, but I just found him funny as fuck when he was like, you a half a white man, or oh, fuck whatever you are. You you a, you a quarter white man. Like, motherfucker, you don't admit what you are. I just thought that shit was funny. Yeah. Mark, can I ask a question? Mark, can I ask a question? Um, wait, hold on, hold on. Hey, excuse um, me, I have something to say. This is hold, on, hold, on, hold on, everybody, hold, hold on, everybody. One second, one second, one second, one second, one second. What we're gonna do is, um, let's give the new person on the stage, Lord Chavo, let us know where you're calling in from, what's on your mind, and then we're gonna let Kay go. And then Uncle Ruckus has a question for Mike. But go ahead, Lord Chavo, the P, uh, where are you calling in from, and what do you think about the topic at hand? Um, my dad. As you did first, uh, you mind if I just tell you where I'm from or whatever and just let that old girl speak? And oh, I'll yeah. just come yeah. later, I guess, as the last one. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm straight out of Texas, born and raised, big FBA business. Okay, standing on lineage. I feel it, I feel it. Shout out to Texas. All right, all right. Um, and Kay, <laughs> um, what was that, Kay? Okay, what I was going to say is that when he was talking about the skin bleaching is global, um, it's global with Africans because they take it wherever they go. I'm originally, I'm out in California, like I said, but I'm originally from New York City. And several years ago, I was in New York City with my mom and we was walking down the street, um, 125th Street to Harlem, which you know is like the main street to Harlem, right? Yeah. And then I happened to look over and notice this small little shop that said, uh, uh, it was um, Macari, I think that was the name of it, something like that. And it was like a beauty brand specifically for dark skinned women. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. You know, I'm a dark skinned black American woman. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's really cool. They got, you know, specific cosmetics, you know, for women with dark skin. Because when you have dark skin, a lot of times, like say you go try on makeup. So this was, um, it's gotten better now, but this was several years ago. You know, you would have a hard time finding the same There was a proper a foundation blue. that matched your skin tone, right? right? Yeah, there you yeah. go. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, it would look like a nice bright blue, but then you put it on, it would be dull. So that's what I thought. So I walk in there. Right. And I'm kind of excited. And I'm smiling. I take a, a they had a, like a sheet of brochure. Right. And I'm, I'm looking all through the, the cases. So I know it's like almost like jars, like little containers. Right. So mm -hmm. I wasn't like cosmetics makeup. So I guess these were like, you know, um, 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 you know, routine, like, you know, stuff, moisturizers and cleansers and stuff. And then I noticed because and all the jars are white. Right. So I didn't think anything about the color, but then I read the titles on the um the labels on the jars and everything was like skin bleach, skin whitener, stuff like that, right? 
I cannot tell you my mouth dropped, my like my jaw dropped to the floor. I, I was just mm-hmm. in shock. I was like, what is this? What is this? What is this? Because, you know, I grew up with family that was like pro-black and, you know, had to learn my black American history growing up. And yeah. I would have never expected anything like that in Harlem. And do you know, and then, so when I read the brochure, I said, oh, this, this um, um, line of products was formulated by Dr. So-and-so who was an African male doctor out of Africa. And he formulated this line of products for dark skinned women. I could not believe that the whole yeah. concept of formulating a cosmetic line for dark skinned women was for you to bleach. I just, I could not believe it. And I just, I just discussed that. I, I, you know, I walked out the story. <laughs> and I can't hey, hey, um, I, I, I can't. You know, I, Cause there's a lot of Africans. I can't that even York imagine. City. So they, yeah, they, yeah, they bring I, it with them. I can't even imagine the culture shock because if we just put ourselves in your shoes, you're in New York City. You see yeah, a shop a that shop. seems to be catering. Yeah, it's catering towards dark skin black women, and you get in there thinking, oh yeah, I can finally find the right shade of foundation. Blase, blase, blase. And no, it's it's all ointments and products to bleach your skin and lighten you. It's not to compliment yeah, your black skin. It's to whiten my dark skin, but that there's something wrong with my dark skin. It was insane. Like, one of my hey, things um, exploded. I've heard a lot of the terminology they use, uh, you know, they got a sick psychosis. In Africa, they call it clearing you up. Oh, I'm. Uh, you, this will make your skin clearer, clearer, clear. They call it clearing up the skin. No, you're you're peeling off your your melanin because you want to look like a Becky. Good God, good God. But y'all, um, I gotta be doing the Lord's work because not only um, not only did we get Raza to confess to the skin bleaching, but then we got Chuck Wu to come up and just project and deflect and just basically be a, a perfect case study into how Africans have such an identity crisis. I mean, guys, I don't know what more evidence you need, but shout out to Nick. Nick sent me an email earlier. Uh, Nick wants me to play a video. Let's see how deep this identity crisis goes. Regular BSC. You know, the moms have to keep cool like the ice in the freezer. Look good. No filter. I don't want to not compare me to my favorite artist, you know. I mean, the whitest thing in Jamaica, not high water, not intense. He's bragging about being the whitest man in Jamaica. This dark-skinned Jamaican rubbed on so much bleach, and now he's bragging and flexing about being paler than Michael Jackson. Only man can compare Michael Jackson. He's not even there. So nobody not ready. Uno boy, boy, uno niggas. A them skin tone and make a girl just jump. Remember that. Moms, understand? White and the white is. School, no man. I out, we out there, no man. No cap. Damn, you on a yeah. poor ass island rubbing bleach on so you can look like the white tourists that visit. Oh my God, this identity crisis is sickening. This identity crisis is absolutely sickening. Okay, hold on, Snap. Oh, yo, Mike. This video remind me of that um nigga um that white dude who claimed he was Jamaican and shit when he got mad after that wasn't it? Oh he yeah, right there. Right. <laughs> hey, that nigga might have been that one. <laughs> snap, snap. Go ahead and jump in, brother. What's on your mind? Uh, concerning this little dude right here, trying so hard to make his accent stick and trying to make it thick. Um, look at the umbrella that they're carrying over their head. That should tell you something. You scraped off all your melanin that protects you from the sun. Now you got to walk around with an umbrella. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, that's why he got the umbrella. Damn. And I'm going to tell you why I got experience with it. You know, I got the light-skinned family members, but they don't, you know, they don't be in the sun like that. But smiles, you see how light she is? If she be in the sun for longer than three minutes, it start hurting her. Because she don't have it as dark as me, but she's still a yep. LPA. And she'd be like, nope, got to get out the sun. Because if she don't, it's going to, um, it she, she'll she get worse sunburn, but it only take like five to 10 minutes for her to get a sunburn when it take other people longer than that. So yep. that's why he had that umbrella. And the Chuck Wu, <clears throat> see how rude he get when he can't answer the question and he uh, try to, you know, project and point over here and say y'all not believing me but i'm telling you and i don't like it so i'm gonna call you names 
So f you. That's what people do. What it really was is, is, is he refused to specifically address the yeah. Africans' identity crisis. Instead, he tried to lump us in with it, claiming, well, all black people have an identity crisis. Like, no, 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 no. First of all, black people are us in America. Y'all are Africans. Y'all are Jamaicans. Y'all are Haitians. Y'all for years have been saying, you're not black. You're X, Y, Z. And now that we're delineating, go, wait, 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 I'm black, too. I'm black, too. I'm black, too. Even though they rubbing on the bleach to be anything other than black. Make it make sense. Um, real quick, I think Uncle Ruckus had a question for me. Uncle Ruckus, go ahead. Uncle Ruckus, are you there? Can I ask you a question? And you have to answer it truthfully. Why would I not answer a question truthfully? Because obviously you like reflecting when obviously that's a serious question. You can't answer it. Anyways. When have you ever asked me a serious question and I've deflected and not answered you, the question? You just put me on mute. That's that's all you, you just put me on mute. That's all you do. Anyway, let me I'll answer this one question. Oh Lord, so, here, here, here. I'll put you on mute again. <laughs> Go sit on timeout. We gonna talk to somebody else who isn't gonna be passive aggressive as they try to pose a question to me. Snap. What's up, Snap? That was rude too. Because see, some people don't understand that name that's down there that says Mike TV. This is his show. You don't get to come in here and try to dictate how this um, man that has a business, you don't dictate to him how he runs his show. If he's going to mute you, he's doing it for a reason. He done told every that, everybody that plenty of times. So if you're getting muted, just wait. He'll pull you back up. You got to stop being rude. That's the whole thing. And and he was trying to defend Chuck Wu, too, talking about you wouldn't let him talk. I just want to tell you that because he's writing it back in the chat over there. Yeah, that's why I keep it right, Shane, every time he say so. <laughs> I know. Come on. Come on. Learn some decorum. Come on. If, if for all the division y'all claim that I'm creating, I'm connecting the diaspora simultaneously. You're welcome, Uncle Ruckus. Well, when else have you been introduced to fellow black folks in the UK like this? Uh, a, a nigga like you in the UK, black people stay away from you, I'm sure. Um, but you know what? I think Dr. R was trying to unmute and say something earlier. So go ahead, Dr. <laughs> R. Yeah, what's up, Mike? Um, do, which is more important um, men find sexually attractive, light skin or the phenotype? Because I just sent you two pictures because I believe that the man is going to find the woman's phenotype, the way she looks, more attractive, whether it's dark skin or light skin. Mm, wait, wait, exactly. Wait. Repeat that, repeat that. Help me understand. So, so, so you're saying that we look at more so the phenotype and then i'm going to pull up the actual definition of phenotype but i'm pretty sure the definition of phenotype just means like uh visual characteristics right um phenotype is the set of observable characteristics of an individual resulting from the interaction of its genotype with the environment yeah you know what i think you're ask, totally ask right. Razaman, ask Razaman, show Razaman these two pictures which which of these two women does he find sexually attractive let's exclude the skin tone I mean, uh, we ain't even going go and entertain that and play a little game with Razaman. I mean, he's a, he, he, he's a, a non-starter. But, um, but I think that there is um, truth to what you're saying because perfect example, um, let me actually pull up a video of the chick. I was watching Phil Scott, African Diaspora um, News Network or whatever, and there was some chick up there, and I was like, Sure, I'm kind of crushing on her for some reason. I said, what is it about her? What is it? Hold up. Let me pull it up. African Diaspora News. Because, you know, uh, Phil Scott has a few of... Okay, there she is. There she is. There she is. So I was watching Phil Scott, African Diaspora News, and you're right. It's the phenotype. Because a lot of time when I look at women... And, I, and I'm especially attracted to certain foreign women is something about their phenotype It's something about how they look. And it makes me research. Well, what is this chick's ethnicity? Where is she from? Right. So I came across um, African diaspora news and he got this chick who be up there, this chick right there on the left, the, on the uh, thumbnail that says Uganda is not a monarchy, the chick on the left. I say, you know what? She's mad attractive to me for some reason. Yeah, she kind of got the Somali forehead going on, but but she's low-key attracted to me. What was it? And I looked up uh, where she's from, and, and I think she's Eritrean, right? 
No, Ethiopian. Ethiopian, okay, Ethiopian. So I was like, okay, okay, it's something about it. And you know what? It wasn't even this image. It wasn't even that image I seen of her. And this this speaks to um to how it's phenotype over everything else because the the image that I really seen of her. Let me see if I can find her real quick. If anybody knows her name, I think she has her own separate channel as well. You know, Phil Scott got quite a few ladies up here uh, doing the diaspora news thing. Let, let me see if I can find her name real quick, because there was actually a different image of her that I initially saw. And I was like, oh, who is this chick? Um, is it this one? No, no, no. It's a certain it's a certain style. She had her hair. She, she had kind of like this, this kind of kinky, curly, but kind of long. I, I don't know where it was where she was rocking that dude but i said mm, this is attractive well, who is this chick but yes this speaks to what you're talking about it's the phenotype it's not necessarily the skin tone it's not necessarily how light skin it did or how white they are it's just we are attracted to certain genetic phenotypes. yeah what about Afro latinas and cape verdeans so like uh, i find those women attractive and and black american women as well they've got they're attractive and just show 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 everybody two pictures that I sent, and let's decide which man would pick these women. I mean, I, I already told you we ain't gonna play the Raza Man guessing game. I mean, I mean, I ain't gonna waste no time on Raza Man like that. But I, I understand where you're coming from. Um, <laughs> Christopher says Mike was ready to beat that. No, I'm telling you, I, I, I see some video of her, and she had like her hair was kind of real kinky. Kinda... Oh, is this one? I found it, y'all. I found it. I, I seen this video of old girl. Hack anyone can do. Hold on, y'all. Blood... I, I got to re up my premium subscription. They, they Whoa, go ahead and cook, Mike. Girl. Hold on, y'all. I, I seen this video of old girl, and I said, Who is this? I said, Who is that? I said, Where's she from? I said, I like that little. Little kinky, curly, little fro thing she got going on. I said, "What? What her name is? Which is she from Ethiopia?" Okay, okay. And this also speaks to the phenotype because guess what? My son's mother is Irish, but she has that exact same hair type, that exact same hair texture. You know, she she must be mixed with some other than Irish down the line or something. Because I ain't never seen no Irish girls with hair like this. But that is a specific phenotype that Mike TV is attracted to. Whether you're an Irish woman or an Ethiopian woman, yeah. Mike likes that that curly kind of fro wavy. Yes, yeah, that hair do Mike something to a nigga. For real, did that hair do something to a nigga? For real, for real. So, yes. Hey, Mike, can I ask you a quick question? I might have a delay. I don't know. So, I'm sorry if I accidentally, you know what I'm saying, cut you off or something. No, no, no. no. And it seemed like it's long or something. Okay. uh, About the... uh, Okay, I remember what I was going to say. About the, um, you know, when you were saying she might be mixed with something else or whatever. But as far as you know, she's not, right? Yo, speaking as far as your, you said your baby mother. Wait, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not understanding exactly what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, my bad. I, let me explain better. When you were talking about, uh, you said your girlfriend or your baby mother is Irish, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My son's mom is Irish. Yeah. And as far as you know, she, uh, she full Irish, right? Yeah, I mean, I've seen her mom. Her dad's passed away, but her. Her dad looks like just a regular white European dude. Her mom looks like a regular Irish chick. So, so, so that's why I was like, maybe somewhere in her lineage. Yeah, yeah, or something. yeah, yeah be, because I never seen no Irish girl with a hairstyle like this until I met my son's mother. And I was like, oh, damn, this is unique. Well, before I get the point, because I'll be doing that shit a lot. Uh, I was bringing that up to say. A lot of the Irish people. Yeah, that nigga Uncle Ruckus is a racist. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One mic, one mic, one mic. Let's not cut each other off. Hold on, wait a minute. Mm, go ahead, Lord Chavo. No, I, I just won't do it to finish real quick if it's fast. Like if it's just a quick question or something. Yeah, it was a quick statement. Uncle yeah, Ruckus is a racist in the back chat. Go ahead, oh, that's it. Uncle Ruckus is a racist in the back chat. Talk about Mike, baby mama, and shit. I mean, if Uncle Ruckus is oh, on the dude. panel, unwilling to say what he has to say. Okay, okay, okay. Let me let me first say. If he's typing, yeah, that's real weird. He ain't giving the nigga some spotlight. And and yeah, right. and the, the, the new era. Let him say whatever he wants in the chat. I don't know why you're gonna interrupt Lord to make us aware of what dumb shit Raz is saying in the chat. I mean, the lame ass nigga typing and shit. Um. Anyways, Lord, where were you coming from? Go ahead. 
Okay, good thing I remember. Boy, I do not be remembering this long. Uh, I was going to say why I brought all that up is because a lot of the racism towards Irish people, even when they first got here, they would also call them niggers too. And it was a, it's another word. I'm forgetting it off the top of my head. Boy, white people cold with some racist words. Uh, hey, hey, it I'm was just, another word that kind of meant like black, day, like um, Hey, correct me if I'm wrong, but back in the day, they used to have signs that say uh, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish, right? No blacks, no dogs. Um, no I'm pretty sure they probably did, but the, I, the only sign I've seen that said that exact thing that you just said, you probably misconstruing it with uh, Mexicans. That's the one I've actually seen, like an actual, like this shit is real. But they did discriminate against Irish people too. That's why they got their reparations. I'm pretty sure they did have some of those signs up. But right, as far uh, as you know, like you know damn well where you can and can't go. They call me. Say it again. I'm for a reason. Here's the signs right there. <laughs> no Ooh, Irish, no blacks, no yeah, dogs. I'm like I'm pretty sure they probably did. No dogs. I'm dead, bro. Every time I see one of them signs, it got me thinking of that. How much yeah, to turn one of these? Trying to it's a nigga pie. He says some nigga pie. Oh, read that, bro. Yeah, every time I see one of them signs, bro, it got me. That's all I think about. How much to turn one of these white only pies and nigga pies? Mm -hmm. yeah, Ooh, sure. hey, Mike, my nigga, the Sambo killer. Hey, bro, you gotta. I don't even see how. Oh, I think you have voted. I think I voted before for you. Nigga, uh, or have you ever watched um, uh, where them niggas the hottest twins, the Coon twins? Yeah, yeah, I've seen them before. Why? What's up? Um, okay, if you've watched them, like not just before, I guess I should have asked that better, but I'm just asking the question, you can comprehend. Uh, back in the day, if you have ever watched them, have you seen the switch? Like, I recently seen you get on Lucas, and today I was well, last night. No, today. It was like at 2 o'clock in the morning. I was on his ass. But specifically about what you was talking about, too, with him. Because I've talked about him. Uh, I mean, I've talked about him. I've talked with him about that specific thing multiple times. And what I notice he does is he'll get, like, really defensive. Like, what we did today. The nigga, I, I talked to him. I was like, yeah, uh, about the thing what some dude know, said about you. We're, we're going to have to get a little bit more on track. I mean, I understand that I used to bang on Lucas and the Hodge twins are kind of Lucas adjacent because there's some Sambo ass black folks creating, you know, media to to basically cozy up next to white folks. We get that. We get that. We just got to get a little bit more on topic. We also got a new guest coming from the back to the front. We got Lemanuel in the building. Lemanuel, let the folks know where you're calling in from and what's on your mind. Lemanuel going once. Lemanuel going twice. All right, Lemanuel, we got some audio issues. Just go ahead and click that link and call back in. Um, let's bring everybody up. Let's go ahead. Oh, wait, and um, Lemanuel's trying to call in again, but now it says your device isn't connected. Oh, wait, there it goes. Lemanuel, are you there? Yeah, what's up with it, bro? What's up, what's up? Let the folks know what's where you're calling in from up, and what's on your mind. Yeah, I'm calling from Los Angeles, bro. Yeah, I'm just checking out this thumbnail, man. This is this is crazy. She was like she got uh uh skin cancer, bro. Like damn, this is crazy. I mean, like man, she like the uh, one of them um goddamn uh, uh, uh characters in Thriller, bro. Jesus, I bet yeah, you ain't never seen an African girl bro. take a bleach bath before, huh? Oh my god, man, this is. It. Man, she boiling her skin or something like that, or and peeling the shit off. God damn, that's how they rock down there in uh, uh, the motherland, huh? She's at a Nigerian spa. Yeah. She paid for the spa service. Oh no, no, no! We don't, we don't rock that way, bro. We not insecure our our, our, our masculinity, bro. We not insecure our melanation. We not insecure like that, bro. We don't. Hey, hey, them white uh, folks let and took they tell soul, bro. Let Chuckle tell it. We we have just as much as an identity crisis as the Africans, even though we're not taking bleach baths. 
hell we don't. The hell we don't. We we, we ain't got no identity crisis. Hey, facts, 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 facts. Yeah, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and bring yeah, everybody definitely. back. Let's bring everybody back. Let's bring everybody back. And um, since New Era wanted to highlight Uncle Ruckus's comments, go ahead, Uncle Ruckus. Let us know what you were saying in the private chat. First of all, let me read out to you word by word. Oh, God. Man, damn. Here you go. So I said you had a child of a white woman and you are trying to come for me. You literally exposed yourself. You're a coon, so now I can hold your title. Okay, explain to me how me having a child with an Irish woman makes me a coon. Explain that. Mind you, mind you, you're the one who used to take chemical baths. You're the one who's always speaking anti-black white supremacist talking points. But you're not the coon. I am. Make that make sense. She's white. And you're coming at me saying that uh, uh, you crazy to the white people. You had a child for white woman. You're... So you must be a racist then. The only thing that I can conclude is that you're a racist because the only basis that you've provided for me being a coon is me having a baby with an Irish woman. Um, sir, if you're just racist, say so. If you're just upset because no European or Irish or any type of non-black woman wants you, then just say that. You ain't got to project. Use white supremacist talking points. And first of all, I've had more white girlfriends than I've had black girlfriends. Let me just put it out there. So if you date predominantly white people and I predominantly date foreign women, most of them being melanated, but I just so happen to have a baby with an Irish woman, how am I a coon and you're not a coon when you specifically go out of your way to predominantly date white women? At that time, there was, nothing, there was, nothing, there was no black woman around me. It was just white women. There was no black woman anywhere. It was just white women. Just that was what I know that I know. I'm not gonna say virgin. Right now. <laughs> oh, you're feeling more jealous. <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. I see you. That's your BMW. Mmm, that's nice. Mm. That's your girl. Golly. Okay, I see you. But um, I just wanna know one thing. Mm. You ready? Why the fuck you lying? All right, before we let Raza continue to lie, <laughs> before we allow him to continue to lie and everybody else remain on mute, please, uh, let's go ahead and drop a bomb for Barrington Mac. Thank you for the contribution, brother. So let me get this right. Uh, Mike TV, with all of the work that I've done for my culture and community, I'm a coon and a sellout for having a baby with an Irish chick. Um, but you, who bleached your skin for several years, went out of your way to date white women and speak white supremacist talking points, you're not a coon? And and your claim, your, your defense mechanism was you couldn't find no black woman in the UK to date? You were only surrounded by white? Stop the cap, sir. Stop the cap. So please explain how I'm a coon and you're not a coon. First of all, I was the first black man that went to my school, my high school. My sister was the first black girl to go to my high school. There was no black people around, it was just white people and Pakistani people. That was it. You don't have to just date people that go to your school. I've dated women that went to different schools than I, so again, stop the cat. If you made it a point to date black, then you would have dated black. But you're the same one with the identity crisis who said you took bleach baths because you were ashamed to be black and wanted to be white. And now we're supposed to believe that you would have dated exclusively African women, but you just couldn't find none? Snap, go ahead. Oh, so Snap, you're on mute, though. You're on mute. And Lemanuel, hold on, brother. I'll let Lemanuel jump in after Snap. Go ahead, Snap. Yeah, I remember him saying that all black women give him a headache. And that's why he go after white women. So if he didn't date yes. any black women, how could you know what they do? That's what I'm saying. You keep generalizing people and it's not right. That's not right. We don't generalize you. We we specifically saying what you did was a problem. Because if you didn't like yourself and you want to change yourself, bleaching, that was dangerous and it was silly. I ain't gonna say it was stupid because you was a child when you, you said you was a child when you did it. You trying to change who you are, and then you're gonna try to tell other people their problems, and you didn't even fix yours. Did you even go to therapy? Do you want to bleach your skin still? Do you want to be a lighter shade right now? 
That's the whole problem. Well, you know what? Mm -hmm. Let's get into the rest of the remarks that he said in the private chat because so far I'm not mm -hmm. understanding the first point. I'm a coon because my son's mother is Irish, but you bleach and date white girls in the UK and you're not a coon. All right, Rosaman, why don't you just go ahead and repeat the rest of the things that you said in the chat and we'll see if we can make any sense of it. <laughs> okay. I said, uh, what a clown. You have the guts to talk about me when your child is most likely white. Look at this nonsense. You wait, wait, wait. So, so if I'm a black native and I have a baby with an Irish woman, how is my ch how is my child most likely white now? I mean, I don't know how how they do things in Africa, but we're fairly uh, patrilineal over here. I mean, for the most part, you are who your father is. We already know that uh, black genes dominate all others. So, explain to me how me having a baby with an Irish woman makes my baby mostly white. I'm, I'm confused. Because if you look at it, your ethnicity as it is, you're already 20% 20, 20 European and your Irish mother is most likely mostly white genetics. And if you look at it, you already like complexion. So if you mix those two together, it's most like, it's like going to look white. Like with those uh, NFL and basketball plays that you see. It probably looks like the melon was a flower. That's, that's some complexion. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so he's saying that my son most likely has the complexion of like the Mellow Ball family, right? Of the of the Lamello himself. Okay, like. okay, of Lamello himself. Do you know that us in America still view Lamello and all of his brothers as black people? Nobody in America is like, oh my gosh, those guys are too light skinned. Forget that their dad's black and their mom's white. Those are some white guys now. Nobody thinks like this, but this is how y'all in the UK think for some strange reason, sir. If anything, and Lemanuel, please stop taking yourself off mute. You've got background noise, static, or something. So I'll keep you on mute and, and until it's time for you to chime in, brother. But, um, you know, if anything in America, um, we were subjugated so viciously that they had a one drop rule. Where even if you were so light-skinned that you were white passing, if you had even one drop of blackness, they considered you a Negro or a colored or or a black. Uh, so why are you now trying to say that us light-skinned black people aren't black people? Uh, uh, snap. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Maybe you can make sense of this. <laughs> hey, if my son is as light as LaMelo Ball, apparently my son ain't black no more. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, let, 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 let me just let me change something. Last week you were coming out. You can tell me something after Snap jumps in. Go ahead, Snap. Hey, okay. Okay. If you was to see one of my twin sons, because I got twin boys, and one of them is like, now I'm dark. His mama was dark, because I ain't with her no more. And um, <clears throat> we had twins. But he light skinned. He light skinned. So what you gonna call him white? And then you look at his daddy and his mama and say, You still white? That don't make no sense. You don't and understand. Rosas went out of his way to say he wants to have mixed kids, but he's up here calling me a coon. And I guess he doesn't mm -hmm. feel that him himself is a coon. I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, Lemanuel, do you want to jump in, brother? Yes, sir, man. What up, Snap? What up, New Air? Hey, uh, oh. like, he don't he don't understand, man. LaMelo, daddy is black. He's from Los Angeles, man. You understand? He identified if your daddy's black, he came out his net set. He's a black man, no matter if he light skin or look like Mike. Raza man. And another thing, Raza man, hey dude, you you have some real insecurities going on with you, brother. I think that deep inside you wish you was a white boy. You wish you was a European white boy, don't you? You wish you had the privileges and and, and, and all the tangibles that go with being a white person. You wish you was in America being a white guy so you can so you can fuck over uh FBA uh, uh brothers and sisters, right? Come on, no. Rosin, man. Let's, let's bring no. out the real soul inside you. The re let's bring out the real the real deceitful soul inside you. Tell him, man. Damn. It, it ain't nothing acting but like the Acho. No, 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 Mike. He acting like Acho little nephew right now. Yep. We all know that 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 bull that BS Acho pool. You hey brother, like uh, like brother, brother, brother! It's nothing but jealousy. He's jealous that I'm light skinned He's jealous I got an Irish baby mama. He's jealous that even with me having a biracial child, even with me being light skinned I'm still up here standing on fucking lineage and roasting the hell out of these tethers while exposing the history they don't want to shed light on. It just, it, it just doesn't compute for him. It doesn't compute at all. And furthermore, what's crazy? 
is my mother is biracial, right? So technically I'm like 20, 25% European, right? Tell me why my dad is full black native and I'm the same exact skin tone as my dad, but I have 20% European and my dad doesn't. So again, us Americans know the skin tone thing is real nuanced, but um, since Raza refuses to just concisely say everything he was saying in the private chat, let me go ahead and because this is my first time seeing the private chat. Let me see. Um, let me see. He said, you exposed yourself. You're a coon. Now hold your title with pride. You're having a child with a white woman. She's probably a whale as well. What a clown. He has the guts to talk about me when his child is most likely white. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm not black no more, right? Um, Uncle, uh, he put me backstage and muted. Keep on following this grifter. Um, people hated the Irish because they were Catholic. Yeah, so he's just in the chat talking a whole bunch of weird shit. So, um, listen, Raza, although I don't let you tethers get me pressed in any way, I mean, the average black man would be like, how dare you talk about my baby mama and call me a Listen, uh, this just speaks to your own insecurities, but since you spoke so much cash money shit about me and my family, God damn it, Raza, um, this is your point of truth. This is where you either reveal yourself or you leave. Razaman, turn on your camera so we can see what you look like. Say it with your chest, what, boy. No, no, no. E either turn on your camera or leave never to return. I will ban you from the chat permanently. When you send messages, no one will see them. When you go to click the StreamYard link, it will say error. You will be banned for eternity unless you turn on your camera right now so we can at least see the face of this man that's talking so much shit, not just about me and my family and my child, but about our community and our culture by and large. Raza, are you willing to turn on your camera? Okay, before I turn on, let me just say something. No, 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 it ain't no just say something. I, I don't want no no proof, no prologue. I don't want no oh, monologue. Man. I don't want no pre- Put him in the middle. I, I, I don't want none of that shit. No soliloquy, nigga, no. none of that. Turn on your camera. Be a man. Or leave. Stop acting like a little ass boy. You, I, I don't want you to unmute yourself until your camera is on. Go ahead and turn on your camera, and then you can unmute yourself and say whatever you want. I would love to finally figure out what this man. He spoke so much shit about me, my family, our community. Let, let's see. Oh, he left. Oh, he left. <laughs> Big surprise. Oh, man. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> hey, I was going to say yeah, my bad. I want to get him started, up. but thank God that nigga finally got bad. He was supposed to be on a vacation anyway. We already know his skin tone was going to look real weird after four years of bleaching. <laughs> we already know he was probably going to look like his skin is really going to be great. <laughs> and we're going to finally figure out that he wasn't 18, that he was 45. Yeah. Hey, Nuer, that's a different. Hey, Mike, yeah, can you uh? And them, hold on, y'all. One mic, one mic, one mic. Right now, Lemanuel's going. Go ahead, Lemanuel. Yeah, that's a different. You know, you know what I'm saying, Nuer. That's a difference between FBA and them, right? If we got whatever we we, we do, bro, we gonna say it with our chest. If you got something to say to me, Nuer, or whatever, you gonna say it with your chest. You ain't gonna duck and hide or or or, or, or be behind the bush with it. You gonna say it to me? I'm gonna say it to you. These dudes are scary, bro. And then showing victory all behind it, uh, ducking behind the car with it, bro. You know, we don't respect yeah. that, bro. Not at all. I don't, I said, okay, he's he's taking it to to new levels of uh of low blows. I mean, I, I gotta at least see what you look like if you're gonna be on my stream talking so much shit about all of us. And yeah, man, did not want to turn on that camera, not at all. Hey, uh, Millie, Millie's cammed up. That's another African in the UK. He had no problem coming up with his camera turned on. But Raza, Raza said, no, I just want to talk shit to these niggas. I don't want them to actually see my face. All right. All right. Well, we finally rid ourselves of Raza. And actually, unfortunately, I can't ban him permanently until he comes back in the chat and leaves a comment. And then I can ban him. So we'll have to wait for him to pop his head like a little mole rat. And next time he pops his head, he can go ahead and get a perma ban. Good Lord, good Lord. We done spent a hundred hours, two months educating him, trying to recondition him, trying trying to get him to walk away from white supremacy and, and mental insecurities. And oh, he's a lost cause, y'all. I actually had hope for that tether. I, I had a lot of hope for that tether, but nope. I had some more hope, but that he crushed it for me. That's why I didn't give a fuck about him. That's why I wanted him dead anyway. 
Hey, hey, but but we want to keep hope alive. So, Raza, man, I know you're watching. The I just posted the stream yard link again. Maybe you just wanted to grab a hat so we can't see your tether hairline. Maybe you wanted to go, go go to the market and get some dark skin foundation so you can you know <laughs> look like you got more of an even complexion after all the years of bleaching. I don't know what it is, but Raza, man, go ahead and click the link and call in with your camera on, or else. Oh. We, I don't we, think it's so other shit. We're never gonna hear from you again, Rasa. I mean, I know you thought you were special. Mm -hmm. Lord. Yeah, Lord he, special. he did it. He did his bitch move again and shit. I don't think he's coming back. He said it in the back hey, chat Mike, like he ran. Straight ho. What's up? Is that Lord Chavo? Hey Mike. Was yeah. the yeah, my bad. I didn't want to cut bro off. I know no, no, okay, go, ahead. go ahead. Uh you brought up the uh bringing it back to the point earlier is that is exactly what i'm reading on the screen before and after african identity crisis was at the uh, base of the stream yep oh okay yeah that's for them so this the same girl <laughs> yes, that's the, same. <laughs> that's the same. She put on blue contacts and everything, uh, mm. and it, and in most of her videos, she got on a blonde weave too. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, I'll do you one better. I'll pull up her channel. She got a whole YouTube channel where she teaches girls what? how to bleach skin. Yes, she has a whole channel. And she's teaching people how to bleach. Yes, look, her channel. What name, the fuck? Her channel name is Asante Beauty. Asante Beauty. This is the bitch right here. Asante Beauty. She's an esthetician and a beautician. Lord, oh Lord. Look at her with the blonde wig mm. and the blue eyes. Wow, this and is skin. like a white woman. Skin whitening gummy. Ugly white woman. Remove dark <laughs> knuckles fast. Look like a white woman. Oh, dead play. dark knuckles. Hey, hey, hey that cat. Hey, that cat's gonna kick in at like 65. No yeah. thread lift. Look, 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 look y'all, look, y'all. She, she's advising on how to get a non surgical nose job. Really, really cute, so I'm really excited. I will... She can get rid of her nigga nose now. She said it's not enough to be white skinned. Why? Right. I gotta get rid of my nose. It looks so amazing. Oh. Really, really cute, so I'm really... She thinks that she just made her she nose. She made it look more nigga. Yeah, yeah. Hey, she looked like a ugly. Hey, it was twenty before. Now it's like flat and wide. Yeah, nigga, yeah. Look like mine. Keep it real, man. She looked like one of them tranny man. She does. She looked. She, she looked better yeah. when she look, had the dark skin. In this video, she teaches us how to light, or, or excuse me, how to whiten our skin with light therapy. She gonna put on an EDM face mask to lighten her skin, y'all. Her <laughs> <laughs> micro. <laughs> Yeah, they just put them Dollar Tree LEDs in that hook. Uh, I didn't know that was that was going on. All right, new era. Till next time, brother. Thanks for coming. All right. As always. Hopefully, y'all right, still be on. I hop back on later if y'all still on. For sure, brother. Peace. See you later. Soon. Look at this, bro. Skin whitening with light therapy. Called red light therapy. Um, it's light therapies in general because I use a couple different ones. But let's just get into this video. I'm going to show you guys a video. And look how she's tried to perfect the white accent. <laughs> Listen, this bitch don't speak in her traditional right, African like accent at all. <laughs> that I saw that kind of like really got me into what. And yes, this reminds me of Melanie King as well, Keyshawn. To use red light therapy. So and just watch this video right here and then we'll get back into it. I'm going to give you the quick version. And hi, my name is Erica. I'm an esthetician and I also manage a medical mm -hmm. office. Lord. Why are these African bitches being estheticians and mutilating their skin? What part of the game is that? Did they teach you that in esthetician school? Really good question on one of my videos. They asked because they were in the sun and they got darker because um, they, uh, you know, were exposed to sunlight. Even though they use their sunblock, it's really hard to stay completely lighter tone when you are in uh, UV. If you want to use something that When you're black, you mean. When you're black. <laughs> this bitch. <laughs> That's going to reverse what UV does uh, during the day. You're going to want to watch this. So first of all, what I've been doing like about 30 minutes before I go to bed is using red light therapy. I have this red light therapy lamp right here. I'm going to turn it on. So as you can see, it is 
omitting red light onto my skin. And some benefits of doing this um, 30 minutes every day before you go to bed are, it's used for a wide range of skincare issues. This bitch know how to whiten your skin in every way possible. She's talking about doing the red light therapy. She giving uh, bleach <laughs> cream reviews and shit. This broad is crazy, crazy, crazy. So it has blue tansy, um, and it also has retinol in it. So I love retinol for anti-aging. It makes your skin beautiful, it renews the skin, and it brings forth more beautiful skin. If you don't use retinol, start using retinol. And I love a retinol serum. Very, very good. Not too harsh on the skin. So check this out. Bitch, you already destroyed your skin. What do you mean not too harsh on the skin? What do you mean not too harsh? Here's to the skin tone. Here's a picture of what my skin used to look like. And this is what my skin looks like now. As a lot of you know, this has taken a lot of work. Um, my last video, I talked about how I had dark knuckles. I'm going to show you what a lot of bed went used to look like. Very embarrassing. I used to get made fun of all the time. It was so embarrassing having dark skin, y'all. <laughs> she used to get made fun of. Right. For being She's trying to blame it on her knuckles. <laughs> like her knuckles were unnaturally like, dark. Nigga, we just seen the old picture of you, bro. Your whole body was black as fuck. Like, <laughs> not just your... the first time. I've never seen like my skin tone previous to the skin tone. Here's a picture of what my skin used to look like. And this is what my skin looks like now. As a lot of you know, this has taken a lot of work. Um, my last video, I talked about how I had dark knuckles. I'm going to show you what those dark knuckles used to look like. Very embarrassing. I used to get made fun of all the time. So I'm glad that I took care of that. I'm going to talk. The fake, uh, hey, hey, Lemanuel, as, as a brother from Cali like me, don't that fake ass Cali accent just get on your nerves like... This is don't even really Man. talk like she's, she's trying so hard to sound like what the yeah. Cali girl sounds like. Like, bro, no. Man, hell yeah, she fat. She she something else, man. I think she one of them Doctor Frankenstein lab ass rat chicks, man, or something. I don't know what the hell going on with yeah, this. Shit. Hey, Mike, my nigga, the Sambo killer. You got a uh, thumbs down the video and report that bitch. <laughs> oh, God. I'm crazy. going right now typing in her name to go report this up. Hey. Yeah, go, go do that, that brother. Do that. And hyperpigmentation on your lips. There is a cure for that. Um, so check this out. This is called the Lip Lightning Scrub Ball. It's from Purite. And I've been using this. And let me show you my before and after. Okay. As you can see, my lips have lightened ridiculously damn she even lightening the lips y'all come on hey and a dumb tether like chuck will gonna call in and say but you black americans have an identity crisis too nah nigga we ain't doing this we ain't doing this. at all and yes moonlight she probably weaved some blonde <laughs> strands into her no-no region <laughs> she probably got that <laughs> 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 Long weave. <laughs> hey, i'm Mike. dead uh, I think they don't yeah, understand man. what the word fake means because all this shit she did that just made her fake. And also she talking mm -hmm. about people picked at her and all this kind of stuff. And then she upload all this shit on YouTube so they can see so they still gonna pick at her. It's gonna mm -hmm. be even worse. Hey, hey, snap, snap. Hey, yeah. you know what happened, bro? They uh, 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 all, uh all that uh, uh, uh picking on her shit and all that. She let that get to her, bro. Yeah. Self esteem is gone. Yeah. Self esteem is gone to the point where she basically, mili like like he said, mutilated herself, bro. Yeah. Scraped all her yeah. black skin off. And don't no white man want this. Ain't no white man seeing mm -hmm. her like, oh, she a baddie. Nah. Let me bring her home to mama. No, sis. You did all that Hell mutilation nah. to your skin, and you still ain't going to get you a Henry or a Jacob. And yeah. she looked more exotic when she was darker skinned, which is oh, crazy. She, she looked like a basic girl. tranny. Yeah. Yeah, a tranny. She, she just going to be a comfort girl for the, for the, uh, the white supremacy. And hey, she, uh, she getting kicked out the house. The African females want to bleach to look white. Uh -huh. The white girls want to use bronzer and tanning to get darker. I mean... Uh, so many identity crises going on around us. So many indeed. But yes, you know sir. what? 
We're going to go ahead and um, wrap up the stream. Let's start providing some closing remarks. We'll go ahead and start with uh, our new guest, Lord Chavo to P. Look like he's having a little disco rave over there. What's <laughs> What's going going down? <laughs> go ahead and give us right. some Right, it's remarks. LED day. Fuck it. Uh, yeah, I just want to say, uh, everybody, please keep standing on NBA business. You know what I'm saying? Every day the movement gets stronger and stronger and stronger. All we got to do is hold each other. That's it. Love each other, hold each other, respect each other, and help each other. And that's it. Thanks. Appreciate you, too, uh, Mike. What, what days do you normally go live and uh, have an open panel? This is the first so, time I catch it. So panel. I'm normally live on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But during the week, I typically cover, like, you know, trending news. I do some exposés on some frauds and some scammers and shit. But on the weekends, every Saturday and Sunday, we do these kind of FBA powwow streams for several hours. So typically starting between 11 o'clock and noon Pacific Standard Time, Saturday and Sunday is when we do these kind of discussions. But even when I do my Monday, Wednesday and Friday streams, I still got a stream link posted in the chat so people can call in. Hell yeah. Sound like a whole lot of hustling. Keep going, my nigga. Stay yeah. safe. This is my full time job, brother. We <laughs> we gotta hustle. You know how it is. We hustling out. Should, should I be streaming like 40 oh, hours? God, I be living on this bitch. For real. <laughs> like recording nigga sleeping. But I, I respect the hustle, my nigga. Keep it going. For sure. Catch y'all later, my nigga. All right. Till next time, brother. Peace. And you know what? Just as we're providing closing remarks, we got a new person calling in. We got Saint Swarthy in the building. Saints, where are you calling in from and what's on your mind? Hey, Shalom, Brother Mike TV. Uh, I'm calling from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And um, I just wanted to say concerning uh, what he said about um, how I guess he can't stand black women. My wife is an African-American black woman who respects the biological nature of a man to even have another wife. So she even respects the fact that I could take another wife if I wanted to. And this guy really doesn't understand how genealogy works. So I might have to come back on the next show because I got to run real quick. But I just wanted to say the dude really don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, no, I feel you. Well, thanks for calling in. We will be live tomorrow around the same time. So we'll talk to you then. Uh, next up, we got Lemanuel. Lemanuel, go ahead, brother. Closing remarks. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Shout out to Mike TV. Y'all tune in. And I want to shout out to the whole FBA lineage for standing on business, man, and calling out the tether on uh, 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 FS1 Sports, Acho, with his tether ass. And y'all uh, tether women, bleaching your skin is not going to cut it. That's not the game. It's not attractive. And we're going to get our clown on every time. Sorry if you take it as bullying. But you're bullying yourself every time you look in the mirror. Peace out, FBA. All right, Snap. I'll holler at y'all new air. I'll holler at y'all next weekend or tomorrow. All right, brother. We'll right. see you soon. Peace. Yeah, Snap, this was a hell of a broadcast. I mean, I wanted to really shine light on the um, African identity crisis. We brought up so many different uh, receipts and sources and videos. Um, we had some Africans call in who acknowledged that Africans do, by and large, have an identity crisis. And then we had the tethers like Chuck Wu say, but, but, but you black Americans, but, but, but black Americans. So, yeah, by and large, I think a lot of Africans um, are going to remain oblivious about, about this obvious identity crisis. I mean, I don't know how much more work I can do to expose this when we literally show a bitch in a, in a bath of chemicals in a Nigerian spa having her skin scraped off. I mean, I don't I don't know how much more I can drive my point home than <laughs> just playing this footage right here, but I can't see that video for too long. It makes my stomach upset. Um also um snap Aren't you aren't you feeling a little bit lighter, brother? Don't you feel so free now that we've rid ourselves of that tether, Raza? Raza don't understand. First and foremost, I am a content creator. I have successfully farmed you like human farm equipment for the last two months for content. We don't give a fuck if you ever show your face here again, Raza. I got videos on videos on clips on clips on clips I can produce showing how you Africans are so ass backwards and you didn't even realize the whole time while we were trying to embrace you and educate you above all else, you were being farmed and hoed out for content. Thank you for being a good hoe, Raza. You were a good hoe indeed. And God damn it, for how much people want to compare me to Tariq Nasheed, 
I never had, I never watched the Tariq stream where he had an African confessing to bleaching their skin. And motherfucker, I'd be getting, I'd be, I'm the Dr. Phil of this tether shit, okay? I'd be getting these motherfuckers feeling comfortable. I give them a wrench for a couple of days, make them feel like they got some power. <laughs> Nigga, you got played, Raza. You got played. God yeah, damn, did. you got played. But I feel so good now that we don't have him no more, y'all. It was it was so, so hard. To, honestly, I think he's a bipolar motherfucker, too. One minute, he's trying to big us up. Next minute, he's, oh, no, fuck y'all, da 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 I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I come from a lineage of pimps, if I'm going to be candid. But this is new digital pimping, okay? I ain't got to ride around in a Cadillac with no funky pussy-smelling hoes in the back. I just got to do these live streams, and I don't even have to smell the musk from you African booty scratchers because this is all virtual, and I can get to doing some virtual pimping. And I thank y'all for being some good hoes throughout. Mm -mm -mm. Keyshawn said, these bitches better have my content facts. <laughs> like, every time you go African at Raza, every time you was up here, you was working the blade, nigga. I had you on Figueroa, and you didn't even know it. <laughs> so, let's talk about it. But go ahead, Snap. What's on your mind? <laughs> yeah, uh, I think if he does come back, we can rename him. He done went past that. I want to call him Bleach Boy now. I I, I don't hey, want to call him that now. Come on. Yeah. yeah. And um, Mike, you do a real good job every time, man. You got the receipts, you got them, and I know a lot don't come no more because they see that they can't come in here with all that lying, making up shit as they go along, because we'll catch them in that corner and beat them down with the truth. And when that happens, what they do? They call your name and haul ass. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all. They ain't got a leg to stand on. I mean, these Africans is down bad. And I really want you guys, above all else, you can help me by following me on TikTok. I recently learned all them Africans are on TikTok talking a bunch of shit about us. And I have to have a thousand followers on TikTok in order for them to allow me to live stream over there. So as soon as I hit a thousand subscribers, I can start publishing some content on TikTok. And you know I'm going to have all them Africans up in arms. You already Yeah, know. that's that was another thing I was going to say. I already followed you. As soon as you said it yesterday, I went over there and I followed you. And, Appreciate um, it, brother. And I can't wait till and we can right actually now. get them where they hiding. Because that's where they hiding. They they know Mike TV don't play that junk. We, we come at them. So now they hiding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 49? Okay. But, um, oh, yeah, I got to get Smile. Oh, Smile's out still working, doing stuff. So, But I know she would say hi and be happy to be on here. You know, it, it would have been good, but I'd be trying to tell her you can't help everybody because Raza man, he is a damn trip. He's gonna flip, he'll flip flopper, he'll start talking shit, even though you told him the truth, educated him, and then he'll start talking about you. Because if you if you would have saw we had an argument in the back chat, me and him. We was going at it back there, but because I, I, I can't put up with that foolishness. I mean, he called me a lazy. Yeah, he say we lazy, but broken. And I'm like, you out your damn mind. I don't fall in the damn world. Hey, and peep game, if he's already been programmed this viciously and he's mm -hmm. truly 18 years old, imagine that fuck nigga 10 years from now, 20 yeah. years from now. Oh, my God. We are watching the makings of a tether. Yeah. Lord, oh, exactly. Lord, oh, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. But yeah. But yeah, I'm brother, it's always nice to see you. you. Yeah, All yeah, right. he's gone never to return. I mean, I gave him a fair <laughs> chance. I said, hey, look, I've let, I've let you get away with murder up here. I've let you get away with so much. Just, just go ahead and turn on your camera. Turn on your camera or leave forever. And he said, mm, I'd rather leave forever than turn on my camera. <laughs> <laughs> How fucked up is his skin? How fucked up is his skin from them years of bleaching to the point where he don't even want to turn on his camera? Oh, my God. He probably oh even got God. them little African naughty knots that they be having when they hair short and it be it just roll up real tight, be up there squeezing. Nah, he probably toe up big old giant nose. He ain't gonna turn that camera on ever. Toe up from the flow up, indeed. Mm -hmm. Well, Lord, right. oh Lord, thanks for calling <laughs> in, brother. We'll see you tomorrow. I mean, uh, hey, even though this was one of my shorter streams, it feels like we just mm -hmm. did a ten-hour one, which is how much of a headache the Africans <laughs> gave us in a short amount of time, right? <laughs> Yeah, you give them time and they, they can't come up. They can talk a little bit and then you got a lot of time left and they be like, that's my time. <laughs> fact, fact. I'll give them five minutes and after a minute, they're like, oh, I don't know what to say anymore. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> All right, brother. We'll, All right, we'll talk man. to you soon. Tell Smiles I said, hey. I will.
All right. Later. Peace. And ladies and gentlemen, I am a Libra, so let's go ahead and balance things on my Libra scale. Lord, it's 4.35 p.m. I ain't even smoked my morning joint yet, y'all. I got a, I got a raw rolled 2.5 joint with a crutch primed and ready to go. Oh, my God, I ain't even smoked yet today. Lord, oh, Lord, allow me to balance things out on my Libra scale. We've dealt with so much vitriol, contempt, so much projection and deflection and tether plebiscite babble we gotta balance it out y'all we we gotta balance it out and we gotta end on a smooth no let, let me go ahead and get some some smooth r&b for me to spark up to real quick one time y'all i thank you guys for tuning in i am your humble servant i do this for you all i could not do this without you all so thank you to everybody who hit the cash app who hit the paypal i appreciate your support Thank you to everybody that clicked the link and called in. I thank you. Thank you to everybody that's not just viewing the live stream. I I know there's 114 of you guys viewing. I appreciate y'all, but extra big shout out to the folks that are active in the chat. And of course, last but not least, we got to drop a bomb for all y'all watching in the bushes. <laughs> shout out to all the folks hiding in the bushes. Well, I will be live tomorrow uh, around noon Pacific Standard Time. Let's go ahead and end with a nice little R&B tune. Some of you old heads might think this is sacrilegious. They done resurrected Aaliyah's vocals from the grave and the weekend and made a song with her. Good Lord. I like the tune, though. I like the tune. Let's go ahead and simmer down with a little R&B melody. Because, good Lord, I need to spark up. I need to get my mind right. This was this was so much nonsensical plebiscite babbling in such a short amount of time, y'all. I, I think I'm ODing on the plebiscite babble, y'all. I'm ODing. It's too much babble. It's too much babble. Mm -mm -mm. And, yes, thank you, Nick. Nick. I appreciate the, the warm sentiment. Yes, my little man just broke his arm. Uh, what was it, a few days ago? Yeah, a few days ago now. I mean, he's tougher than me. Shit, I'm 29 and I ain't never broke a bone and Lil Man's is five and already broke his arm. But it was a clean break. Lil Man is doing well. And um, yeah, the old heads, <laughs> let me shout out to all the old heads. <laughs> I'll go ahead and see you guys tomorrow. Shout out to everybody watching the replay. If you're watching the replay, leave a comment under the video. Hashtag replay gang. I appreciate everybody watching the replay. And let me drop one more bomb because there'll be a lot of y'all who don't just watch the replay, but even though it's not live, even though you're watching a rerun, y'all still be hitting the cash app and the PayPal. So I appreciate the replay gang. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Stay blessed. Stay safe. Be easy. Black don't crack, but God damn it, them Africans will chemically peel that black away. Oh, Lord, I got to smoke some weed. I got to get out of here, y'all. I'll see you tomorrow. How can I explain myself to you? What do you lurking through my mind? Is it the love of for the time? I've given my heart, my joy, my soul to you. If it is real, I sure can't see. Gotta start looking out for me. Have in love, my heart won't stay tomorrow. I know it seems that I don't care. Sometimes my ways are less than fair. I feel it's time for me to take a friend. See you have given me no choice I feel like my sex is as my voice and taste This feeling, there's no drug that can compare You're so cold, I can see your breath, I swear They told me not to fall in love Wondering where every door went wrong You were my poison all along Big knows I lay awake in tears and pain Searching my heart for what went wrong Asking myself what's going on I could not be seen to see things eye to eye Somehow I didn't feel the danger And 
I was sleeping with a stranger. I see all these years we flushed on down the train. Now it's too late for both of us. I regret for what we lost and what we shared. Maybe tomorrow we'll love again. But until then, we'll stay as friends all our day. This feeling, there's no drug that can compare. You're so cold, I can see your breath, I swear. They told me not to fall in love, wondering where it all went wrong. You were my poison all along. Nah, that ain't enough for me, y'all. That that ain't enough for me. That that ain't do the trick, y'all. I gotta run that back. I gotta run it back one last time for the one time, y'all. And shout out to the Freedmen's Network. Brother showed up late. It's all good. Normally these streams go for several more hours, so it's all good. But Freedmen's Network. I will be live tomorrow um, between 11 a.m. and noon Pacific Standard Time. So we'll definitely catch you tomorrow. And I'm sure you got the audio issue sorted out. So look forward to speaking to you then, brother. But I got to run it back, y'all. I got to run it back. Them tethers and gave me such a headache, y'all. They, they gave me such a headache that the song ain't long enough, y'all. Like I got to hit the replay button. Come on. How can I explain myself to you? What do you think lurking through my mind? Is it the love of for the time? I've given my heart, my joy, my soul to you. If it is real, I sure can't see. Gotta start looking out for me. Have in mind, my heart won't take no more. I know it seems that I don't care Sometimes my ways are less than fair I feel it's time for me to take a friend See you have given me no choice I feel I must exercise my voice and taste This feeling, there's no drug that can compare You're so cold, I can see your breath, I swear they told me not to fall in love, wondering where it all went wrong. You were my poison all along. Big nights, I lay awake in tears and pain. Searching my heart for what went wrong. Asking myself what's going on. I could not be seen to see things I eye. Somehow I didn't feel a danger. And I was sleeping with a stranger. I see all these years we flushed on down the train. Now it's too late for both of us. I regret for what we lost and what we shared. Maybe tomorrow we'll love again. But until then, we'll stay as friends all our day. This feeling, there's no drug that can compare. You're so cold, I can see your breath, I swear. They told me not to fall in love. Wondering where it all went wrong. You were my poison all along. Boys